Today I begin the Retro Glory Hunter challenge against my dad, using the Mad Scientist 0708 Retro Database. With the added ability that real players come in through as new gens year by year at their starting clubs. The challenge of Glory Hunter is the first to win the league and cup in the five European leagues as well as the Champions League and UEFA Cup. And to switch it up a bit, we've also decided to add Portugal into the five playable leagues. Which is where we decided to both start this Glory Hunter challenge. And so the race to complete Glory Hunter begins. Dad, we're back with Glory Hunter. Yeah, looking forward to this. Absolutely. In uh, a retro database. Have I learned well. enough to take you on properly this one? Well, there we go. We think we <laughs> fixed the problem that we had last time. Uh, we have made Dad's age a lot less. He is 31, he wishes. Uh, and you've also decided to go with Benfica. Yeah. Well, they're my favourite Portuguese side of it. Yeah. So it was a no brainer for me, seeing we were both going to start in, in uh, Portugal. Yeah. So we made that decision quite as soon as we decided to put Portugal in there instead of the French league because we personally feel like the Portuguese league is stronger. We were both like, let's both manage in the Portuguese league yeah. to begin with. Let's start the rivalry immediately against each other and try and. That's uh, what you guys like. Yeah, exactly. And see, see what happens. So dad is, of course, with Benfica. I am with Sporting. Now, the players that you will see, of course, from the 2000. Uh, and seven database from the mad scientist is just beautiful to see if you have ever played the old retro versions of this before and, and pl remember playing like fm08 for example uh so we have made some signings dad you had quite a lot of money actually i was i was fortunate i, I had 12 million because we started what in august so yeah i had 12 million to spend so it really helped me because i did have a few weaknesses in the team you did yeah, yeah. uh i didn't have that i had about three or four million but i still managed to spend some money now i sold a couple of players as well and i have brought in tiago silva it's great signing when we see this it's great to see him out here just starting his career and it really yeah. uh, and we know what he's like at his present moment so well, he's, he's good been signing. around at this point for well yeah yeah definitely like five yeah. years yeah. whatever it is so yeah and he's 22 and this is before he actually moved to portugal and he's good there as well yeah so so already a fantastic signing. He goes straight into my starting eleven as one of my best centre backs, and for just two point one million pounds, good signing. Good signing. A fantastic signing, absolutely. Uh, I then was quite quite weak in the right back position, so I brought in Francois Clerc from the French division. He has fantastic crossing ability. That pace and acceleration is unbelievable. He's very good for the price of just two point one million. And finally. I had a couple of players, including the Edson, who you'd seen earlier, who was complaining about squad depth on the left-hand side. So I longed in the Sampdoria player in Bellucci, who is quite good and can play in loads of different positions. Very good with both feet too. So I'm happy with that. My starting 11 tactics looks like this. It looks very top-heavy. I originally went for a, a position like this. However, I have a lot of really good strikers. Now, if I went best 11, you can see this. It goes like uh, in, into a three up front. But however, but I have also got Purovic, who can play up front and is a really good target forward. So he can fit in there as much as what he needs to play. Um, there are some familiar names. Rui Patricio is my reserve goalkeeper at 19, who's actually obviously yeah. the Wolves goalkeeper now, which is quite funny. And then you can see a couple of players that you might recognize in the midfield. Miguel Veloso being one of them, who was a bit of a wonder kid on Football Manager. And of course, Jean Moutinho, who's had an excellent career uh, at Monaco yeah. and then Wolves as well. So some great players that I've got in my side. I think out of the three big Portuguese teams, I do have the worst of the three. Porto are very good on this. Yeah, they've they got are. Raul Morales. We'll look at Porto first. They've got Raul Morales. They've got Lucho Gonzalez. If you remember how fantastic he was as a midfielder, uh, they have got some unbelievable players. So their midfield is is unbelievable. Raul Morales, of course, was a was a cracking player too. Um, and they've even got an ex Spurs <laughs> manager in goal in Espirito Santo. But let's have a look at Dad's Benfica side because you've brought in some players as well. Uh, and you have, of course, had £12 million to spend straight away. Uh, and you even sold a player, Petit, for £4.6 million. Yeah, I was pleased with this, selling, selling this guy. Yeah, so uh, that's were coming just at the right time when I needed to buy someone Fiorentina, else. Fiorentina, actually. Oh, was it Florentia? Sorry, yeah. yeah. And, uh, yeah, they're coming just a bit more money than I thought I was going to get. So, yeah. Which helped me out big stuff for one position I was I mean, really... very good. I was surprised that you didn't want to let him go when he had 20 aggression. Yeah. 
But there we go. He's he wasn't starting in my starting eleven though. Best no. eleven, so fair enough. Uh, but the players that you've brought in, some iconic names in the world of football manager, I think. So Tay Tay, we I always remember trying to sign him at left back. Yeah. This so is one of the positions cheap. I was weak. At. So yeah, I feel like he would just come into the, the squad and just make everybody happy. Yeah, he did. That yeah. Smile. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, hey, Tay Tay, like, oh, come on, mate. I fucking love that guy. <laughs> Uh, so 2.1 million pound he's already got a goal and an assist from you from left back yeah, so brilliant. he started off unbelievably yeah. well uh, then I'm going to go to Varela because I'm going to leave Pazzini last yeah. so Varela is the right sided midfielder yeah. again fantastic Uruguayan 29 year old from Schalke 3 million pound bit of a steal 2 goals 3 assists great average rating as well you also stole their right back yep and this one's even better, of course. Yeah. Uh, what you actually spent the most money on as well. Yeah, this, this is my last signing. This is the one I got run on the transfer day line because um, I sold that other player and I was struggling to get a right back in a good one. Yeah. Oh, this one. I just couldn't, couldn't believe my mustard. luck. I got him as well. Yeah. He so, is absolute mustard. The Brazilian yeah. Rafinha. This is before he went to Barcelona and played alongside the likes of Lionel Messi. And so as you can see, he hasn't, he hasn't played a game for me yet because I've only just got him. Just so. got him in yeah. on deadline day, the first of the ninth. And then finally, Giampaolo Pazzini, one yeah. of my favourite Italian players of this era, uh, coming through. 23 years of age. Look how good he is. I just couldn't believe how much I paid for this guy. Got him in as well. I was so jealous that you had money. Yeah. Because the team that you can then bring in for the price that you've paid is, is unbelievable. Four. Seven in four. <laughs> With three assists. And I think his average rating. Yeah, oh, it's, it's ridiculous. This guy's this guy's gone and he's I'm like, already how there. How did he only get one player of the match? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, it's absolutely mental. So, Six and a half million for this guy. I've got cracking player. Yeah. The only downside, I would say, is that first touch anticipation and composure. 14 is quite good, to be fair. Yeah. But that first touch and anticipation. Other than that, I think he's phenomenal. And yeah. he's really good in the air, too. Yeah. Like Jump and reach and strength's high. Head and ability's good. What a cracking sign that is, Dad. Yeah. Must admit. Uh, very jealous of that. I'm really pleased with the team I've got now. Yeah. So, I mean, there are familiar names in Dad's team too, including one of my all-time favourite players. Uh, not from this era, though. This is at the end of his career, and he doesn't actually go into your starting eleven, but he does make your bench, and he yeah. is your captain. Yeah. It's Rui Costa. Mm. An iconic player for me, because I, I just absolutely loved the bloke from when he was at Fiorentina, uh, and, of course, AC Milan as well, during that era as well, when you know they had, like, Kaká and stuff. Um, so, great players. Is Di Maria, few, I'm so not a fan of. Uh, no, I mean, we, uh, but there we go. He's a great player. There's a, there's a few players that are just starting their careers, and he's obviously just one of them. Yeah. And, and then the centre back is another one. David Luiz. Yeah. I mean, everybody loves David Luiz, yeah. don't they? Yeah. <laughs> but he's in the lineup too, and he's yeah. very good on this game at the start of his career, just 20 years of age, and his first season. Uh, at Benfica so some fantastic players Oscar Cardoza is another one I oh. absolutely loved him in yeah. Football Manager he's only 24 years of age which is unbelievable so this is what the retro database does and the best thing about it of course which I've already mentioned in the intro is we've got all of the real life new gens so yeah. we know we're going to end up going close to 20 years yeah which has gone past where we are in present day that's brilliant. So at some point, the likes of Harry Kane's going to come through, Kylian Mbappe. We may even see a Jude Bellingham yeah. knocking around at the start of his career at Birmingham and see where he ends up going instead of going to Dortmund and then Real Madrid, Erling Haaland. All of these iconic players right now. There's so much fun going to happen, isn't it? They're, they're just being born. Yeah. Well, they're, they're a little bit older than that. They're a little bit older than that. But we're going to see them at some point. So I'm really excited. Let's have a look at the schedule so far. Dad, you've won all four games. Yeah. 5 0, 9 1, only just. Uh, 6 1 and Braga, which was kind of a difficult one for you. 5 3 at their iconic stadium that we both love. Um, we are also both in the Champions League. I had to qualify, which we'll see in a sec. Uh, but it's the old style groups. Now, I haven't seen what it's like in the future, but hopefully the Mad Scientist database, the retro database, which again, I'll leave the links at the, in the description. They're amazing. They have, he is the best retro database guy. I mean, Mr. Tiny is very good as well, but it's so good. They're so detailed. I'm hoping it stays like the group stage because then the Europa League might be a little bit easier than what yeah. we struggled with previously. Yeah. We could do, we could do winning that one really early, couldn't we? Yeah. So Benfica, Celtic, Lazio, and this team from Albania, who I've never heard of. So that's a nice little group for you. I'm, I'm, I'm 
positive on this one. I think I'll go through on that you one. You should do, yeah. yeah. I mean, Celtic are quite good because it's 2008, so they've got, well, 2007, 2008. So, yeah, they've got some good players in there. Um, let's have a look at how I did in my starting fixtures. So, I've also won every single game so far and with a lot of goals as well. Uh, as I said, I had to qualify in the Champions League. I beat SV Reed and then Marseille. So, I think it was a good decision for us to bump out France for Portugal uh, we just felt like we wanted a bit more um, well we wanted to add the Portuguese league in anyway because yeah. we both love it yeah. uh, and France was the one to unfortunately drop out in that uh, but I beat them 3-0 and 2-1 uh, we've also got a 3-1 win here 4-0 against the team you beat 9-1 and then Avez 5-0 away from home so it was a good start I've played one less game than you uh, but I do have the Super Cup against Porto coming up very soon oh, this so. is a good thing as well we have a Porto which are, are a very good side in our league as well like when we were always playing the, the, the uh, Portuguese league they're, they they just cause us yeah. problems all the time, don't yeah. they? So that's going to be more fun for us as well because they famously cause us a lot of yeah. trouble in the in the rebuilds we've yeah, done do. in Portugal, which has been uh, a lot of fun. So so far, Dad, in the in the in the Portuguese first division, we're all at a hundred percent. But I've played three games. You play four. Portugal play five. Neither of us have yet to play Porto or anybody kind of tricky I mean, I guess Marseille was a bit of a test to me to get into the Champions yeah. League uh, but you have scored 20 well you got play 20 plus goal 20 difference, goal yeah. difference so yeah you're looking on fire right now uh, and it's going to be very very interesting to see what happens in this first season our aims of course is the Taca or Tassa de Portugal placard which is the FA Cup version this is basically the League Cup version and doesn't count so we've got three competitions to go for in season number one of Glory Hunter, let's see what happens in this season. Well, we had to wait till December before our first match against each other and football manager Wonderkid icon Freddie Adu opened the scoring for Dad. But in the second half, my team, playing away from home, showed great character and pulled it back level. However, on this day, it was Dad who had the last laugh and his Benfica side pinched the victory. I wasn't playing badly though, and quite the opposite in fact. Dad had given me my only domestic loss of the season so far, and I was right behind him in the league table by just two points in second place. Dad had two not-so-secret weapons in Pazzini and Cardoso, though, who just both scored a boatload of goals between them. And in January, we both had extra money to spend, as well as Chelsea activating a £41 million release clause for my player Joe Veloso. One of, if not, the best player in my sport inside. Although Dad had £10 million to spend too in January, he wanted more so started to sell some of his squad players from his team. Meanwhile, I had my eye set on some incredible players such as Mario Gomez for just over £6 million, As well as one of the best young goalkeepers in the world in Manuel Neuer from Schalke. I played Porto back to back in January and defeated them in the first fixture at home 2-0 with the second coming from Jaume Tinho very late on. But I could only rescue a point in the second game in Porto through an 84th minute equaliser. But that does put me top of the league. However, Dad has a game in hand to change that. I was attempting more transfers such as Luka Modric, who was still at Dinamo Zagreb in Croatia and looked fantastic. But he rejected me and went to Liverpool instead. Deadline day was full of surprises though, including Cristiano Ronaldo moving from Manchester United to AC Milan. And despite losing Veloso and not getting Luka Modric, I still felt my sporting side was better at the end of the transfer window thanks to some incredible signings that I have made. But the same could be said about Dad's Benfica side after he brought in three Brazilian stars to bolster his defence. And that only increased the drama at this very early stage of Glory Hunter as the match we had against each other could have been the deciding factor. After giving Dad's Benfica side a 6-4 Tonkin, that seen me open up a six-point gap in the league with just three games remaining. Well, Dad, I overtook you halfway through the season. Yeah. And I held on. You beat me quite easy, eight points as well. Yeah. Lost one game across yeah. the whole season. Oh, and that was me as well, so I'm glad I did beat you then, really. Yeah. Uh, you only lost three. Yeah. I, I mean, drew four, though, as well. Hold on. Pat Cini, 64 goals. Oh my god. That was a good buy, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, let's have a like, deeper dive a look then. One loss, as we mentioned, which was against you. Uh, I only conceded 24 goals. Yeah. You conceded 70. I mean, I've scored 171, so I scored like 60 goals more than you, but I conceded 50 odd more goals. Yeah. Than you. And that just, that's what's cost me. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the profile. Oh my god, you're the two top scorers 45 and 44. Where's my players? <laughs> 
<laughs> and Lee Edson's there. But other than that, I mean, Neuer almost won the most clean sheets in the season. He only joined in January. Yeah, I think that was the difference. When we come back from January, we both bought keepers to me. And I couldn't get as good a keeper as I really wanted to. I got one that was good, but you got the better one. And, and there was a couple that I tried to get. They just wouldn't come to me, would they? Yeah, so, Lehman turned you down, didn't he? Yeah. He went somewhere else. Um, but yeah, fair enough. So that, the- that could be the signing that won you. Possibly. Won you the league, really, yeah, I think. Yeah, held out. Manuel yeah. Neuer was absolutely incredible for me. Assist-wise, you had all the top three assisters yeah. in the league there. I mean, so I can't knock going forward, and it, it shows that in the goals that I scored, doesn't it? Yeah, you just conceded too many. Yeah. And that's cost you. Uh, so, Benfica, did you manage to win any cup competitions instead? No. Okay, quarter-final of the Champions yeah, League, Valencia. Yeah, I was Valencia. disappointed with that one. I, got, I played them at home, um, and, and I, drew th- I played them away, and I drew three each, and I lost to them at home 2-0. And I was so disappointed with that because I thought I'd, I thought I got that game. They got a good team though. Yeah, I know. They got one of my all-time yeah. favourite strikers, David Villa, uh, who's in his prime. Let's yeah. just say that because <laughs> that's disgusting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah, they're very good. They're really, really good. Fourth round in the Tassa de Portugal yeah. by Porto as well. An early exit. I was hoping you were going to come against them because obviously so, whoever comes against them is, is going to cause you problems, isn't it? And, yeah. And unfortunately, it did cost me problems. So. Yeah, you met them really early. You, you know, you could go on and win that, and they could still lose against someone else, couldn't they? Really? Yeah. You know? So yeah, it I've gives got you a, at some point. It gives you a good chance. So it gives you a 50-50 chance now. Yeah. So. Uh, Runners up in this Portuguese League Cup, of course, it's not part of Glory Hunter. However, I please, I got to the final. Yeah, it like goes say, on however. the resume. Uh, however, I can't against you, don't I? Yeah, you did. Two 0 in the final. Yeah. Uh, and if we take a look, it's two players that I actually bought throughout the season, uh, which actually ended up giving me the win. Bellucci, which was the lonely left winger, and Maldonado, because I lost Miguel Veloso in January. Yeah, my, you did. My best player uh, went to Chelsea. They, they activated a release clause, 40 odd million pound. So I had to bring in other players, and Claudio Maldonado was the man I brought in. So 7.5. He's solid. Really, really good player. So that was a good buy for me because that ended up, you know, winning me the uh, the cup, essentially. Yeah. So, yeah, absolutely fantastic so there. What, what was my strikers? The two strikers. How many goals they score in total? In total, well, on your squad, let's have a look. Uh, at the top, there we go. 64 in 46 <laughs> and 62 in 40. 126 goals in two players. And you didn't win a trophy. <laughs> That is hilarious, isn't it? Yeah. Di Maria, 25 and 34. Varela even got 19 assists, 29 assists from good old Rui Costa. I mean, the, what good, a player. the good thing, if I stay, I just know I've got to strengthen my defence up. Gotcha, yeah. I don't need to touch my forward line, do I? Uh, and so. you have 33 million, which mm. we've already established is quite a lot of money in this yeah, database. Yeah, I can do quite a bit with that because I can sell probably a couple of players as well because I have got a big squad. Yeah. And I've got a hell of a lot of so loanees so coming back. So many loanees. Both yeah. of us have got so many loan players. Like all the all the players in, in I mean, purple. I might not even have to do that loan. even. There might be a few loanees coming back. Yeah, good, yeah. So. Uh, we haven't actually mentioned yet. You've also got Freddie Adu who's yeah. been knocking around and getting better and better. 18 People are just trying age. to buy him left, right and send him money off me. Yeah. But I'm not selling him so I'll keep him in the no. squad. Okay. On to sporting then. What did I manage to do? I already won the Portuguese league. That's one trophy ticked off my cabinet, but there's two other competitions I was involved in, and I won the other one. The Tassa de Portugal. That's Portugal ticked off. Bang. Done in one season. What is it with you with the first season? You just does it bang, see you later. <laughs> also, I won a domestic treble and the Super Cup. Yeah. So, I mean, I was unplayable. 4-0 against Porto in the Super Cup. Fair enough. In the final, 4-0 again. 4-0 in the Portuguese FA Cup. The Tassa of Portugal. The only thing it's doing me in really is that I've got to play against your team that's absolutely brilliant now and you're not even going to be there. So they're going to cause me problems and you're not even there. I mean, (laughs) I signed Mario Gomez was an unbelievable signing to get in uh, in the January window. He turned down buy Munich to join me which is tell you what mate why don't you do me a big favour why What's don't you that, go to Dad? another team and buy half of your players oh, I'm, fucking, I'm, <laughs> I'm tempted I am tempted Clerk as well is another signing that's uh, done quite well for me Kleber Thiago Silva was phenomenal Scolacci was a, a midfielder I brought in there was a lot of money I managed to bring in the back off that Miguel Veloso transfer yeah. that has really helped my, carry on the rest of my season uh, I mentioned about oh my I, didn't, I, don't, I lost one game from December where you beat me yeah and that was in the Champions League against Toulouse which is actually a really bad loss considering I was 3-0 up yeah 
Christ, yeah. It's a bad result. I mean, I was, I was annoyed with my losing against Valencia, but you'd be even more annoyed with yeah. me, wouldn't you? 6 2 away from home after being 3 0 up. up. It's a, such a bad. I mean, look at the. I wasn't even conceding goals around now. No. In February, I conceded one. In March, just the six from that one game just, there. Just the six. Just the six. <laughs> Incredible, really. So, the Champions League, we were both knocked out in the same... Oh, no, you went through no, I went that through. I was you in the quarter final. You were in the quarter final where yeah. you were knocked out. Uh, the final is to be played between Valencia and Chelsea. So, I was that close, really. The team that Who did Valencia you out? play in the semi-final, then? Because if I'd beat them, I'd have played... They beat oh, Real Madrid. Real Madrid. Wow. Well, they deserve to be where they are. They, yeah. they beat Real Madrid as well, I think. Chelsea have placed Fenerbahce, who managed to get to the final. Congratulations to them. Uh, so Miguel Veloso might win Champions League. Yeah. Uh, speaking of the Premier League, Chelsea finishing fourth. Manchester United went invincible. Oh, Arsenal Ooh. fans, how do you feel about that? <laughs> uh, the top three scorers, though, Eduardo, Dean Ashton and John Carew. What a time in the Premier League Mate, that was, wasn't just it? Just have another look at that league and have a proper look at Top five. Arsenal, Liverpool, Chelsea, Reading. <laughs> Always do really well. They, well done, Reading. Yeah. Uh, so I've done test runs on this database. Reading are very good on this. Are they? Reading are very, very good. Edwin van der Sar had the most clean sheets. Wayne Rooney had the most player of the matches. Ronaldo, as we established already, is no longer in the league. He's at AC Milan alongside, which I found this hilarious, uh, Ronaldo. Yeah. So, if I can get the AC Milan job at some point and have Ronaldo, Ronaldo and Kaká, I am going to be so happy with my oh, life. Shit. I mean, what a team that is, by yeah. the way. Absolutely disgusting. Uh, who only finished in second place because Jose Mourinho's Inter Milan won the league by three points. Zlatan Ibrahimovic. Oh, what a legend. Oh, we love God. that guy, don't we? Look at him. Uh, so, Inter Milan have won the Italian Serie A. We've got Juve and Roma finishing third and fourth place. In the other leagues, then, in the French League, of course, we're not going for Glory Hunter, but I still opened up to have a look at it, and Lyon have run away with that one. Uh, but in the Bundesliga, we can see that Bayern Munich have won it quite comfortably. Yep. Miroslav closer with the most goals in that one, another player that I very much admire from uh, watching afar. Raphael van der Vaart, very good player indeed. Mario Gomez, There's no surprise in that league, really, is there? No. Uh, they've got Luca Toni as well. I forgot that they had Luca Toni and Miroslav closer. Uh, so no, no big surprises in the in the Bundesliga right now. What about the Spanish league? The final league, Spanish league, was won by Barcelona with Valencia finishing second. Barcelona didn't lose a game though. And Real Madrid finishing in fourth place. Ruvan Nistelrooy is still at the club. Could that be a job? Possibly that I end up going for. Could be interesting stuff. Uh, so the likes of David Villa was the top scorer in that league. Lionel Messi with the highest average rating and the most assists. Just 20 million. years of age. 41 million, mate. Mm -hmm. He could be on the move. Who knows? Ronaldinho is still in the league as well. Just 28 in his prime of his career. Both of them are injured, though, which is quite interesting. And David Silva before he went, he went to Manchester City as well. There's some bargains there. There's there? some unbelievable talents, honestly. If you find a bit of money in this game, you're going to be laughing. Uh, so, speaking of the jobs, I guess I'm done in Portugal in well, season yeah, you're number not going to hang around here just to take me on, are you? Yeah. Well, I could do. I might attempt in there. <laughs> so, is there any jobs? There is. There is a few jobs indeed. Even at Tottenham. <laughs> Atletico Madrid, Tottenham. I mean, Atletico Madrid, maybe. they got £23 million. They've got a young Sergio, Sergio Aguero, which is quite interesting. And he's so, good as well, even though he's, he's young. Very good at 19 years of age. They've got that one correct, haven't they? Yeah. Uh, I mean, the rest of their team is still decent. Luis Garcia's there, Thiago Mota, Raul Garcia. Uh, I think they got a bit of a weak defence. But you the could, team you looks could quite good. That up, can you? Yeah, absolutely. Hertha Berlin finishing 14th place. Probably not a candidate. And Spurs, I don't think, are going to be good enough right now. Their best player is Dimitar Berbatov. Do you know, he was one of those players I'd love watching him, but he always, what was his speed like? Acceleration 14, 14, 14. He always seemed to be very slow, but he, he was, was very calm, he was like a, wasn't yeah, he? Like a Teddy Sheringham. Yeah, yeah. Uh, First touch, they've underrated that, haven't they? 18. Oh, I should be 20. Yeah, definitely, yeah. And his technique's only 18 as well. I should be 22. So, some options then. But yeah. maybe I'll sit back and wait. 
That's because I'm, I'm unsure. Maybe that Black and Madrid could be a way to go. But yeah, I don't know what you guys think. I think, you know, that, that could be something I'd go for. <laughs> as, a, as, a, as another sort of like teaser, Atletico Madrid, where did, you said sixth in the league. Is that a sixth in the league? A, is that a, a Europa that is a League spot? Europa League spot or a UEFA Cup spot? as it was called back then. Yeah. So that is a very interesting concept. I go into the UEFA Cup uh, and potentially put myself in the hat to, to be one of the best teams in that competition. Definitely. So I've got a feeling they actually won that competition around this time too. Yeah. So there we go. But yeah, make sure you are subscribed. You do not want to miss this retro no. Glory Hunter series. It's already kicked off with a bang. Speaking of which, let's add some trophies into a Glory Hunter cabinet. The Retro Glory Hunter certainly started with a bang as I picked up two trophies in the first season, much to my dad's dismay, giving me an early start to filling up my Retro Glory Hunter trophy cabinet. Immediately after the season had finished, I resigned from my role at Sporting. But dad had a trick up his sleeve. He decided to try and sign Sergio Aguero before I had a chance to move to Atletico Madrid to become the manager of one of the best attackers in the world. And to be honest, game recognises game, fair play. I still decided to apply for the Atletico Madrid job anyway though. But even before any traction with the application happened, dad secured the signing of Sergio Aguero to Benfica. And soon after, the Porto manager parted ways with their club too. Spe sent me an email asking if I'd like to come in for an interview for their manager vacancy. However, I laughed at them after looking at their squad and how good Manchester United is and decided to decline despite seeing the young Gareth Bale. Atletico eventually got back to me about my application and an interview was held. But some breaking news shocked the world of football. Sir Alex Ferguson stepped down as manager of Manchester United, so I immediately threw my hat into the ring. Louis van Gaal then left Werder Bremen to take over my old job at Sporting, so I applied there too. However, Atletico Madrid came calling to offer me a role and I just had to delay the offer just to see how it all played out. And I finally decided to take over Werder Bremen in the Bundesliga instead. While Jose Mourinho actually moved to Manchester United to fill the massive shoes of Sir Alex. I was ready to take Werder Bremen to the next level, however, because I just had a bid accepted for Robin Van Persie, an absolute elite striker to add to my team and we got a contract agreed between both parties. Getting the deal over the line, ready for the start of the new season. Straight away, Dad, we've had a very, very busy and entertaining <laughs> summer. It has been entertaining, yeah. I've already enjoyed just sitting myself watching and watching you get this. Yeah. It's quite good. I mean, I dodged a bullet with the Athletic and Madrid job after you <laughs> signed their best player. <laughs> I had to get in quick man. before you got there. <laughs> yeah, so straight away, let's have a look at Dad's transfers because he brought in Sergio Aguero. Yeah. 20 years of age for a bargain I mean, you're price. going to look at me and say, why is he signing us forwards when uh, with the, what, the, yeah. the way I've scored all those goals? goals each. But I didn't really want to play two wingers in, in my first first season, but I had to because of the wingers I had in there. Yeah. And um, I always wanted to play a shadow striker. This guy here is a shadow striker. This is the guy I want to be in that position. He is a I don't want I don't want to mess about with the two up front. No. So I'm hoping, I've bought, I've bought him in, I'm hoping that he automatically goes into that shadow striker and I haven't got to lock him in. Yeah. But yeah, it's a good signing, and then it actually altered my path in Glory Hunter. Yeah, it did, yeah. Because that was, I was kind of in my head thinking, you know, got a Guerrero, you got a Forlan, there's a good team around it. I must admit, I was worried that that was a really good team. Yeah. And as soon as I said Guerrero, I thought, man, he's playing for Athletic Madrid. That was the best one to get out quickly, mm. so I got him out of there quickly. So I passed it up. Uh, a few other jobs come up. Manchester United job came up when Fergie stepped down. Jose Mourinho, of course, took over that. I didn't think I would get it. So that's the reason why yeah. I took the Werder Bremen job. We couldn't believe it when Fergie stepped down, did we? Because no. um, we, 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 we honestly felt that he'd go on a few more years and it wouldn't be worth sort of... Well, you said to me, I'm not even going to look at the Premier League because Fergie's there. Man, you know that it could be they're so good. They're untouchable. Yeah. yeah, they're unbeaten last season, yeah. of course. Uh, so let's have a look at Dad's other transfers before we get going then. So on the 1st of July, you had three players come in. Of course, one of them was Sergio Aguero. I could be your best signing yeah. uh, of the, the summer. Sebastian Saja from yeah. I did San mention Lorenzo. that I didn't think I've got a good enough keeper, didn't I? I'm, no, so um, true, yeah. I've gone out and got another keeper. So, yeah. And I'm pleased with this one. This, this is the one I think that could do the job for me. Yeah, left-footed goalkeeper, which I find like. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Quite strange. Uh, Lorik Kana, I remember this guy very well, from Olympic Marseille, 25-year-old yeah. Albanian CDM. I just wanted to make up 
I felt that I could see quite a few goals last season, mainly because my midfield wasn't strong enough. Yeah, I mean he's a hell of a good ball winning midfielder. Yeah, you know the, the tackling and marking alone is is exceptional. But when you got mental attributes like that, yeah, definitely. with work rate of nineteen, yeah. teamwork of eighteen, positioning defensively of seventeen, you're like, Whoa, okay, yeah, he's got the strength and stamina to back it up as well. So. Yeah, uh, that's a, an unbelievable uh, uh, pick up there for, again, a good price of just £18 yeah. million pound from Marseille. Then we go to Derek Boateng, £6 million, pound, who's more of an advanced midfielder, an advanced and playmaker. So making my, my midfield stronger, but this guy's going to be open the forward line as well. Yeah, and he's very good on the ball. Yeah. Great passing, first touch, composure, anticipation, agility to, to bounce around that midfield. Uh, very good signing again. And finally, a backup right back. Yeah. For a good price too. I sold my, I sold my backup right back. So my, the right back I've got as the first team player, he's brilliant. So this guy was just the one just to drop in behind him. Yeah, Rafinha is a world-class right back. Yeah. So you didn't really need to do that. You had £15 million on the outs in total. Uh, Varela, which was a winger. Christian Rodriguez, which was a winger. So you can kind of see what Dad's uh, route was. Uh, Contrao, again, another winger. So a lot of wingers left the club, which meant that you changed your tactic to... This, yeah, so now, still, you still, still have kept one of the wingers, yeah. yeah. Uh, but with Sergio Guerrero coming on the inside, you've got advanced playmaker in there and a ball winner. This is just the last lineup that you use. If you went best 11, Boa Tangles in there instead of yeah. Rui Costa, but that's the only change, yeah. Uh, of course, Naldo you bought in the January, he slips him alongside Luis Sal there. Uh, Tewu again, uh, cracking player, so and I've got two good wingers lineup. as well because, um. De Maria is there as well. De Maria, yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. So you've got some good signings. You've got about yeah. four goalies still. So uh, you've got a big squad, which yeah. is obviously going to help you throughout the season. Because again, like England, Portugal have two cups. Yeah. And if you're in Europe, plus two cups, plus the league, you're going to be playing a lot above of games. 60 games. Yeah. Uh, especially because you want to win those cups. Oh, definitely. Yeah. One of the best teams in the league. Yeah. Uh, and now that I have left, of course, at Sporting, uh, they have replaced me with. Louis Van Gaal. That's a big signing, isn't it? That's, yeah, a, that's yeah. a, I mean, especially that was before he kind of tarnished his reputation at Manchester United for a yeah. bit. Uh, he was a very good it's manager. It's going to make it hard for me because obviously that's a good squad they've got there. Yeah. Well, so. And look where he came from. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Louis Van Gaal. We basically traded places. An unbelievable uh, manager and hopefully he can do a cracking job in Portugal. But also the Porto manager left. He stepped down after a bad season in Porto. And in came Gus Hiddink. The Dutch are taking over yeah. in Portugal. Gus Hiddink has joined from the Russian national job. Uh, again, a quality manager for you to go up against, Dad. So you got your work out for you, unfortunately. Yeah, I have, yeah. Uh, let's have a look, though, at how you have done so far in your schedule. So, Herevien was a Champions League. You can't avoid the Dutch at all. You're nope. getting some more time. <laughs> yeah. uh, you beat them 9-0, though, so you definitely avoid that one. Uh, in the second leg that was really good and you then defeated Celtic across two legs after a home draw to begin with beating them away from home yeah, uh, with Oscar that. Cardozo goal uh, in the league you have dropped points so yeah. Liaria one all silly point but you had a player sent off very early on yeah so it's you know you look at it it could be a point game rather than two points lost there absolutely yeah you got a, you got a penalty there from Costa which made it 1-1 uh, but to show your dominance in the other games 3-0 4-0 and 4-0, which means you're not conceding as many goals as what you was last that's, season. That's what I had to do, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, your Champions League group stage then. There's some familiar names in there. We've got Maccabi Tel Aviv, Dinamo Zagreb, of course, Luka Modric's old club, and Chelsea, who have Avron Grant still at the helm. Uh, so their key player is actually Joe Cole still, which I find quite funny, to be fair, but he's in his prime. So yeah. prime Joe Cole was nothing to be... Uh, uh, be, be ashamed of and you've got John Terry and Frank Lampard again in their primes so it's going to be difficult group I'd like stage to feel that I'd go through it, with, with Chelsea through. Yeah. 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 yeah absolutely okay over to my new club Third of Bremen let's have a look at the players that I've brought in and then look at the squad that I've got around them uh, so there are a few players that I actually sold myself but there was a couple that Lou Van Hal actually sold However, he also saw, signed Gorilich, who is a backup right back. He already had a deal coming in for this man, Jaime Gavilan, and I could have stopped it. However, the formation I wanted to use has a left midfielder. He doesn't start, but there's a familiar name who does, but I decided to let that transfer go through. I then pulled apart uh, Porto even more by buying their right back. Um, the, I'll show you the reason why in a second. Uh, Gael Jive. 
Centre back, you can also play left back. I think my only weakness in my team was the centre back uh, because I've got Per Mertesacker, who's good, but the one next to him wasn't so good. Pineda, 4.5 million pound on a Mexican left back. Again, there is a reason, and it's got something to do with their weak foots, which is probably give it away. And then, I'll leave that one to last. Edinho, <laughs> backup CDM. I've got Torsten Frings. I've got another cracking CDM. This one's a very good backup if I yeah, haven't got either yeah. of them. And then Robin Van Persie for £36 million. Pound. I've got him from Arsenal somehow. 25 years of age. The Dutch. This is a Louis Van Gaal signing right there. Uh, so brought him in. He could play signing, across yeah. the front three and up front. Yeah. yeah, it's a cracking signing. But I've already got two really good strikers as well. Uh, so let's have a look at the team around him. Now, I'm going for a 4-4-2 wide diamond with defensive wingers and inverted wingbacks. That's the reason why I bought these. They've both got strong or fairly strong left and right foot their weak foots uh, and they're quite good going forward so the idea of this tactic is you open the gaps there for them to go through the, the wingers that i've got the reason why i've got them and if i did best 11 i have thomas hitzelsberger on the left of course formerly of aston villa he has a great crossing ability not so much pace and that's the reason why i'm using him in that role same as torsten frings a bit more of a center midfielder however he has good crossing ability and to be honest, you can get up and down the pitch. And I kind of like that on that right-hand side. Uh, I've got Edinho in there, but I do have other players. I think it's Frank Bauman who plays CDM. Again, he's a cracking player, so I've got options in there. Uh, and yeah, that's the idea. You, you've got these players coming through here. My star man is Diego, the Brazilian 23-year-old center attacking midfielder. He has announced that he wants to leave. And I've got a bit of an injury problem at the minute. Uh, he is out for three to five weeks. He's been out for a while at the start of the season. Um, I've also lost uh, a couple of other players, including my other striker. I think he was out for a while. I can't remember where he's gone now. Oh, Rosenborg, there he is. He was out for a while, uh, but he is a very good striker as well. So him, Robin Van Persie, and then I've got a good backup in Hugo Almeida, who, to be honest, before I got Van Persie, I was really happy with Almeida because he's 6'3", got great strength, good jumping ability, composure, anticipation, head and ability. He's got a lot there to, uh, to, to, to manage to cause a lot of trouble. And he scored 14 goals last season. So you got a good side there, mate. Yeah, I'm, I mean, I don't think I've got the best in the league. Mertesacker is a great defender. For some reason, he's got 15 pace and 16 acceleration. I don't remember him having that, but nope. when he was at <laughs> Arsenal. Uh, and Tim Weiss is a good goalkeeper too, so I didn't have to worry about those positions. My schedule. Let's have a look at it. It's been a little bit ropey, if I'm honest, but I think it's everybody getting used to what my style of play, I guess. 9-0 in the DFB Pokal first round, my favourite looking trophy. Hanover, 2-0, and it was rescued by 97th minute winner after they thought they scored a 96th minute winner yeah. which i always love doing that's i mean it's obviously not great that you've lot, not won the game but i always think that's quite funny because you just know 96th minute they're all celebrating yeah. then you go banging an equalizer away from home uh torsten has got a penalty against Schalke, who've got a very good team in this kevin karan you got sent off which did definitely helped uh but then i lost to leverkusen yeah stephen kieschling who i remember being very good um german striker so I'm on a bit like that at the minute. I don't know. I, how I think you're probably go. you're probably building. Yeah, that's for the next true. season probably. Yeah, I'm not expecting to do a one and no. done here. No way. Bayern Munich's team is just absolutely. I don't think you mental. could do that in Germany again. Surely. No. <laughs> I mean, they still got Oliver Kahn there. Yeah, uh, he's not as good anymore because he is 39, but he is still there. They've got Daniel van Boyten. They've got Miroslav Klose up front. Luka Tony. They've got some cracking players in there. Uh, Sveinsteiger is in his prime. They've got Van Bommel, Frank Ribery. He's only 25 years of age. It's an unbelievable side that they've got. Lucio again as a world-class centre-back. Feels like I'm in my 20s watching this. <laughs> yeah, it's brilliant. In your 20s, in your 40s. <laughs> They got some amazing players. It's going to be very difficult. I mean, they've even got Luka, Lukas Podolski, uh, uh, who's on the bench there. So to overthrow Bayern Munich is going to take me at least two or three seasons before I can get close to them, I think, for this uh, Bundesliga win. But I'm here to do the time for it. I'm, I'm, I'm okay with doing that. I'm in the UEFA Cup, and I've got Salzburg, Atletico Madrid. <laughs> that would be funny. And Krasnodar Bazuric. <laughs> uh, so Atletico Madrid's job was taken over by Marcelino, uh, who left from Racing or Racing. Uh, so he actually turns out to be an unbelievable manager in real life, didn't he? he had a, he's got a, he's had a good career so far. So yeah, the manager Mary Grand, I didn't expect to be this good in the retro no. database. 
but my god has it been entertaining chucked, so far chucked up a few good ones in it for us it has indeed uh, so season number two is well underway dad's got a bit of catching up to do whether you're the favorite in portugal or not i'm not quite sure i mean that's quite an interesting thing to look at really the season preview does say that you are the favorites at seven to four with porto and sporting but that sporting team that I left behind yeah. is very good. And Louis Van Howe is a cracking manager. Uh, can this man cause you a few troubles? There's only one way to find out. Let's yeah. see what happens across this second season. At times, Dad's Benfica side was unplayable. But a small little slip up before facing Sporting could cost him. And my old side made him pay for Dad's bad form as they visited Benfica Stadium and absolutely pulled them apart, winning the fixture 3-1. And after Freddie Adu gave Dad a little bit of hope, pulling the goal back, they scored the last goal. By January, Sporting were still unbeaten and five points ahead of Dad in third place. Meanwhile, I was doing all right, nothing too special, and my Werder Bremen side sat in sixth place in the league, just outside the top four. And I was also still in both cup competitions and even topped my UEFA Cup group. In January, Dad decided it was time to improve his centre midfield. But he had a lot of competition for Jonathan de Guzman in particular and had to up the wages. Eventually succeeding in bringing in two midfielders that go straight into the Benfica starting 11 ahead of a big run of fixtures coming up for Dad in the title race and cups. I didn't make any signings in the window though because I had no money and instead I just picked up a good run of form. Especially in the DFB per Cow. However, Bayern Munich stood in my way of the final. In Portugal though, Dad's cup run was also strong, beating Porto and then winning in the semi-final 4-0 to face Sporting in the final. The same Sporting team who have only conceded 8 goals and lost 0 matches this season so far. But Dad's Benfica side is still only a win away from snatching that top spot. But Dad went into that cup final with great confidence and almost a fully strength side. But it only took 17 minutes before Sporting broke down the defence of Benfica and Kleber opened the scoring on the cup final day. But once again, Oscar Cardoso has been on fire this season and there was no way he was staying quiet on the most important day of their year. Taking the game to penalties where João Moutinho's penalty was beautifully saved by Saja in goal for Benfica, whose own penalties were spot on getting the job done all the way until the sporting captain Polga stepped up and once again the goalkeeper was the hero. Dad by the skin of your teeth and penalties get to him. You've got the first trophy to add to the glory hunter cabinet. Pleased with that because Sporting was such a good team still. Uh, yeah. Struggling in, you know, playing against them. So they were the only team I struggled against to be yeah. honest with you. So Front I was pleased with that. Yeah. Uh, one on penalties, 2-4 by the looks of it. So you didn't actually miss a penalty. They missed two, Jean Moutinho and Anderson Polga uh, with their two misses there. So unfortunate. I mean, yeah, as I said, they, I, I built a great team there, yeah. especially defensively. Manuel Neuer, Kurt Squilacci, Thiago Silva and Kleber is a brand new defence for them. Mm. Uh, so they got some unbelievable players. And it looks like they've actually strengthened as well. They've got Alexander Hlebs come in. So yeah. some good additional players to add to the team I'd already built with... Louis van Gaal as their manager has yeah. caused you a lot of trouble because they did win the league. Yeah, three points. Only losing one game. You were yeah. on their ass quite a lot. They, they did lose that game and I think I had them probably about two games after that as well and I thought yeah. this could be my chance. I only had to beat them then and I knew I would go above them but no. Nope. Yeah, I mean I Porto them. got their one victory over Sporting. It looks like it might be the, the only game Sporting didn't score a goal in yeah. to be honest. Uh, what is impressive though is, of course, you managed to stick within just three points from them. But Oscar Cardozo got 51 yeah. league goals. Just, just in the league. That's in 34 games, 51. Just, just to sort of point it out there as well, people are going to look at it and say, I lost three games. I think I lost two against Sporting and one against Porto. Yeah. Yeah, it was the three I lost. Yeah. Yeah. Two so, of them are home games as well. That's really disappointing. Yeah, and obviously the two draws we've seen earlier, uh, Bo Vista. And the yeah. era. There. I mean, they drew four, so you're going to expect to draw the games. Yeah, and they're the two teams underneath Port. Yeah, it's it's the it's when you come up against the big teams. I mean, that's what's won sport in the league. They yeah. beat me twice. Yeah, yeah. Because if you think it in that way, you beat sixth to eighteenth in both games. Yeah. So yeah, it's, it's right, yeah. quite impressive. Yeah. It's just down to luck, then, really. Yeah, definitely. I mean, yeah. You score your goal difference was plus one hundred and fifteen. Yeah. Well, you just um, you just picked that up on the, my goal scorers, didn't you? Yeah, you wanted to tighten the defence, and you did. Twenty-seven goals, but unfortunately, Sporting's defence only conceded ten. Yeah, 
and that's going to be your your hardest thing to do because Manuel Neuer got 21 clean sheets yeah. last season. You had 16, which is impressive. But Manuel Neuer, 21 in 34 I'm just, games. I'm just going to go in and buy their defenders now. <laughs> <laughs> if they come to you. Uh, Freddy Adu's turned into the star that we all thought he would become. Uh, being a very good player for the U, for the UDAV with 14 assists. Rui yeah. Costa still getting 12, despite obviously it being one of his, yes, his final year yeah, he's retiring. retiring. Yeah. So uh, what a player, what yeah. a career he had as well. Um, so yeah, great season, winning the cup. Yeah. Unfortunately, just within punching distance of the title, but you couldn't quite get it this season. So what did my striker score then in, in the end? Well, that's, this was what I was going to say. So 62 for Cardozo, 39 for P uh, Pazzini, and Aguero got 31 and 16. What's your plans? Do you think you're going to stick around and stay? I've got to stick around. I've got such a good team here. I've just got to. I just need that little bit of luck. Yeah. I've got the cup in the bag, and like we always say, the cups the artist because you, can, the you can't afford to lose one game yeah. in the league. It goes to show you can afford to lose two, I reckon. Yeah. And get away with it, providing you beat those top teams. But is this another like you when you're in your French league and it's PSG? Yeah, because I know. It's then it's easier to win cups than it is yeah. for PSG to lose more than one game. I just, sport, that sporting team I just, under Lou Van Aal. I just think I've just built such a good squad here. Am I being silly by leaving? Yeah, you absolutely. Know? That's well, the I've got thing so, you've got to contemplate. I, I don't know what my budget's going to be. Um, let's have a look. So 27, 27 million. I might be able to sell about two or three players, so I might get up to 40, 50, 40 million. Yeah. yeah, And I could buy just two really good players. In, yeah. Not sure what positions yet, just to tighten it up a little bit more. Okay. That's, you know, I think that's what's the difference between this team being second and being first. Yeah. But there is like a little factor that might change Dad's mind and might even change my mind, but we'll get to that in a minute. First off, let's see how I did at the end of the season at my first season in Germany at Werder Bremen because I had an okay year. Not quite as good a year as what I would hope, I guess, because I finished in fifth place, which is another UEFA Cup run for me next year, which is obviously fantastic. I'm, I'm, I'm actually pleased I didn't finish in the Champions League because yeah. I haven't got a Champions League team. But of another season in UEFA Cup, and that might be quite good for and me. And we know actually. how hard that cup is to win. Uh, absolutely, yeah. yeah. Uh, so 64 points in total. I was just two points off of Schalke. Uh, Bayern Munich ran away with it a little bit. They lost seven. They lost a lot of games, and they yeah. lost to me as well. Uh, but, I mean, I say run away with it. They only won it by two points. I was just nowhere near them. So yeah. I, I'm like a step behind like Hamburg at the minute and, yeah. and, and Stuttgart in, in, some way, uh, in some ways. But, I mean, they got Miroslav close to score, banging in 35 Bundesliga goals with the highest average rate and I had Diego in there so that's not too bad uh, but yeah I mean my, my team needs a bit of a revamp I think if I want to get anywhere close to that Wolfsburg who did have a job come up last year yeah they got relegated which is quite surprising because um, I actually think if we're going by this database I've got a feeling Wolfsburg win the league either this year or next year yeah because they won the 2010 Bundesliga right yeah so that's quite weird that they got relegated yeah, now that's right, yeah. uh, how, they, how these things change because this is obviously the 0708 database I mean look at the clean sheets as well we know Oliver Kahn is, is quite old now don't we yeah is he retiring he isn't at 39 so, he's not that good really no, they've got to be looking to buy a new keeper as well yeah. then, you know so could be mm. a potential thing for yeah. happen. So you can understand why they're losing games, because we. I, I'm, I'm a firm believer in that. Your keeper for me is the most important position. Yeah, you start that's, off with that's a world. Why class you buy keeper. about eleven of them? Yeah, I know. Yeah, but I, I always say you buy a world class keeper. You start from the back and work forward. Yeah. Cup competitions then. How did I get on in the DFB Pokal or the UEFA Cup? Not very well. Well, semi-final by Bayern Munich, but they absolutely tonked me in that semi-final 4-0. Like, I didn't really stand much of a chance, and they went on and done the domestic double, beating Hertha Berlin 3-2 in the final. Uh, but in the UEFA Cup, knocked out in the round of 16 by Reading. Now, you might laugh at that, but Reading are overpowered in this. Yeah. Because their team is just full of very fast players. I mean, their key players, Curtis Davies, He's a defender with the best physicals in the game, uh, so he's already like lightning fast. Their strike force is Kevin Doyle, rapid, and Shane Long, rapid, and Leroy Leah, rapid. They just score so many goals, as you can see there. Yeah. Uh, they've only finished 12th in the Premier League, but in the tests that I have done on this database from the Mad Scientist, Reading sometimes finished second in like the second year. Yeah. I'm like, what? How did that happen? So it's mental. I mean, if, you can, if, you, if people that can remember that far back, Stevie Copper was a good manager. And they had a good team. Yeah. Nicky Shorey, he had some uh, 
call-ups to England, if you remember yeah. right. Liam Rosini is really good on this as yeah. well, so they've got some cracking players there. Uh, so I don't feel too hard done by being knocked out 6-4 on aggregate uh, to being being 5-2 at the Medeski. Is it Medeski back then? I can't remember whether it was. Right, it was. Well, yeah. Stevie Cobble went to Crystal Palace and took him to a cup final. Yeah. So Ian Wright was in the cup final, but I think he made him a sub and come on himself. Yeah, yeah. I don't remember right, but yeah, he's a good manager, so. So that was the round of 16, the knockout playoff round I wasn't in, and that is because in the group stage, uh, I finished top, beating Atletico Madrid, well unbeaten in the league. Uh, they lost to me, 3-2, uh, uh, and I drew against them in the away leg, 2 all. So that's not bad at all. Speaking of Atletico Madrid, obviously I have an invested interest to see what would have happened. They finished in seventh place. Uh, Barcelona won the title again with 89. Is Lionel Messi still there? Well, Ronaldinho is still there. Uh, is Messi? I can't. I don't know whether I have seen him move, but I don't see his name. Oh, there no, he is. He no. is there. But he has been injured by the looks of I, it for a little bit. I did inquiry. Did you? Yeah, I did make an inquiry to try and buy him. And, and I could afford him at the time. He, he, was a lot, he was a lot It was a lot cheaper than like, at the beginning of the season, but yeah. he just bluntly turned around and said I would not come to you <laughs> <laughs> so they got a good side there under Frank Rijkaard they're, they're winning league titles at the minute Real Madrid are in second place four points behind them there so uh, but there are some jobs that have popped up how did I get on in Europe you were eliminated quite early on by, oh, yeah, by Liverpool, Liverpool in yeah. a round of 16 uh, in your group stage let's have a look second which is what I predicted Chelsea. really wasn't it yeah, not that well. They beat me they twice, like so. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, before Dad really interrupts me, the staff <laughs> job centre. Two jobs have come up, and one of them is the best team in the league that we were just alluding to by Munich. What happens there? Uh, because Hitzfeld has left his managerial role to take over Valencia for some reason. I mean, up to you, mate. I guess. Yeah. Uh, so they are currently managerless. I've got to go for that. Mm -hmm. I just have to go for that. Uh, because I would be silly to try and overthrow Bayern Munich when the Bayern Munich job has come up. Yeah. Which is why I'm quite surprised that you're letting it pass. And you're like, no, I'm going to stick by my guns and stay at Benfica. But it's whether they decide to take me on. Because obviously very early on in our managerial careers here in Glory Hunter, uh, I don't think I would have the reputation or history to get a job like Bayern Munich. Which is the reason why I didn't go for the Manchester United job last year. So, I don't know. And to be honest with you, I don't think they would offer me the job, neither. Yeah. Because I've only, only two won seasons in and I've won one trophy. Yeah. So, I'm, I'm, no, I'm determined to stay where I am. I've got a good squad and I want to finish the job in, in uh, Portugal. Okay. Uh, Jose Mourinho won the Premier League with Manchester United. They lost only three games, so not quite as good as Alex Ferguson's last year there. Uh, the Serie A was won by AC Milan and not Inter Milan this year. Inter Milan still have Zlatan, though, but AC Milan, we know, have Cristiano Ronaldo and Kaká, so <laughs> that's just really ridiculous, to be honest. Uh, and then in the other league that we have loaded, the French league, which of course is not part of Glory Hunter, but we still got it loaded, is Lyon winning the league by a country mile again, uh, ahead of Marseille. PSG is starting to come place. through now. I think they were in six there then. Yeah, I mean, they wouldn't have the money, because no. obviously that's later on in the future, but there we go. So that's what the leagues look like. Uh, my budget, if I decide to stay with Werder Bremen, is 58 million. It's a big budget. They have given you a good budget there, if, really, I've when been you think backed, of it. Yeah, because if you go to Bayern Munich, I mean, it's quite interesting to see what their budget is. 128, that might be the deciding factor whether I decide to go or not. <laughs> so what's going to happen? Who knows? We'll have to find out next season. But first off, there is a trophy to add to Dad's Glory Hunter Retro. Glory Hunter Cabinet. Yes, congratulations to Dad for getting his first trophy in Season 2, the Tassa de Portugal. Adding his first trophy to his retro Glory Hunter Cabinet. And on to Season number 3. Dad might be staying put, but I sure ain't. So I'm applying for the Bayern Munich job. The Champions League was won by Barcelona, which capped off a remarkable treble. While I was waiting to hear from Bayern Munich, though, I set out trying to strengthen my strike force just in case I stay, and I was getting offers for Diego. And I eventually accepted one from Portsmouth for £52 million. But he decided to reject them and stay put. However, soon after, Liverpool came in with an offer, and I negotiated higher to get £55 million up front. And just like that, we say goodbye to Diego. I finally heard back from Bayern Munich though, and it wasn't good news. Dab was quietly going on about his business though. 
signing one of the best defenders in the world, Rafael Marquez from Barcelona for just short of £40 million. With me staying at Werder Bremen, I decided to go back to my old club and pick up their best player, Moutinho. Well, Dad, we had a very busy window between the both of us. Yeah, definitely, uh, yeah. Kind of overhauls of squads. Yeah. Obviously got rejected from Bayern Munich. They wanted somebody else. That's fine. So I bought one of their players and Lucas Podolski straight away. I thought, yeah. right, okay, I have my eye on him. Uh, and I was waiting for that deal to go through. If I, if I went to Bayern Munich, obviously I would have kept him there. But as soon as that they rejected me, I was like, okay, he was transfer listed, made the move. Uh, the biggest out for me was Diego yeah. leaving to Liverpool. And that has led to a formation change. He kicked off a bit when I rejected an offer. He also had an offer from Portsmouth, then rejected it. Ended up going to Liverpool. Uh, I also sold my right back on deadline day because I had one coming in. And they just never got back to me in time. And the chance window closed. So I now have sold my right back and I don't have one. So I'm trying to get a Bue who was the guy who didn't do it in time to join in January. Which is very frustrating. Uh, he's a good player. But what were you waiting for, mate? Like everybody's chance window closed. So I don't understand what you was waiting for. But there we go. Other players. Let's talk about that. So I sold Marcus Rosenborg out. There was another uh, striker that uh, that uh, obviously left. There was a couple of other players. There's another centre back there. So I had a bit of an overhaul. I brought in Lucas Podolski as a striker. Very fast. But he only makes the bench. Which yeah. makes it quite funny. Uh, he could also play on the left-hand side as well, which is handy. Stefan Kieschling is going to be a main striker, though. He likes to beat the offside track. He's German. He's very quick. And he's strong tall powerful good in the air and then i also found rodrigo palacio another striker who is amazing and yeah. very fast great with both feet what a player he is so there's a few players in there jean mutinho i made sporting worse reluctantly yeah. thank you yeah <laughs> uh, i hope they spent it well but i needed a midfielder i needed somebody who knew the system that i wanted to run and Jao Moutinho is I the guy. Trying to get you to buy the other players as well. Wasn't it? Yeah, you kept recommending. <laughs> Why don't you get that one? Oh, yeah, the sporting player. Funny that. Uh, a goalkeeper, Salcedo, who is better than the goalkeeper I had. So he came in. Jolian Lescott, left centre back. Again, strengthens that defence a little bit more than what we had. And Marek Hamšík, uh, very early on in his career, hasn't quite made it to a full potential yet, but he plays naturally as a CDM, which is the backup that I needed and can play quite well centre mid. So if I do uh, need him to come off the bench, he can do that. And he's quite, he was happy to be a squad player anyway. So tactically then, I've set up very similar, not identical to what I had at Sporting. Uh, and I've changed a couple of player roles to suit the players that I had mainly. But this is the lineup how it looks in a best 11. So Pineda is still going to be an inverted wing back. I think that's going to help out quite a lot. Uh, Jean Moutinho, in fact, I'm actually going to move him just like that. So Pineda has a little bit more room to go. Uh, Jive, it says, now goes to the right-hand side. Not the end of the world. He is left-footed, however, so that's not great. But he does have a very strong or fairly strong right foot. So up until January, I'll just have to deal with the fact that I don't have a right back. Okay, never mind. Uh, but I have some good options. Van Persie slips over to the left-hand side. There was a couple of bids for Van Persie. Yeah. But he never kicked off about it. Uh, Palacio, Kieschling and Almeida goes up front. And, of course, Podolski on the bench. And I've got a couple of others that can also play there. Dad, what have you been up to, though? Let's find out. You sold £29 million pounds worth of players there. Did you sell anybody on that side? I can't remember if you did. Crank it, maybe? No. Uh, so, obviously, the last signing that you made previously was Jonathan de Guzman in the January window. You yeah. spent £61 million. Pounds. Your big summer signing was the centre-back. Yeah. I just wanted to just strengthen up a bit more. I, I conceded... I didn't concede a lot of goals, but I conceded more than I wanted to, really, because... Sporting when he conceded was it nine goals, yeah. ten goals? So ridiculous. I had to get as, as tight as what they were really. Yeah. So I mean, no, my, my my attack force was really good. So this is what I've gone for. He's a, he's a good player. So yeah, I mean, there's a lot of in. Mexicans in our team yeah. now. Uh, from Barcelona, of course, thirty nine million pound. It's a good signing. Yeah, it is a very good signing. Uh, goalkeeper, one point nine million pound. That's a steal. My two reserve keepers wanted to leave. Yeah. So I think one point two 
1.9 million was a uh, like you say is a steal and he actually went in to be my first yeah then as well so. they rate him very highly yeah so i was pleased with that really okay and good then bargain, we got eh? luigi bruins who we both almost signed really yeah I, I mean he's a good squad player as well yeah but um it just he just improved the player that i had in that position anyway yeah so that's what i went for him for so it made it a little bit stronger in the midfield yeah and then finally it was a backup center back because yeah. your players we're yeah, arguing kicked off, yeah. <laughs> that you didn't have enough squad depth for the centre back. <laughs> so you signed the Ukrainian yeah. in Vashchuk, and that's the only reason. Uh, tactically, you've also changed it. You've gone narrow, so it's almost like a diamond, but with one player pushed yeah. up, really, uh, uh, with that strike force. I just felt that my, rather than having a winger there, he was stronger. If I brought him in into the in attacking midfield, it made me stronger there. Yeah. And then Aguero dropped into that position. So that made it even better for me because he, he plays that natural position as well. Yeah. With the, uh, the, the shadow striker. Yeah. yeah. There's the other one. Then it, so I just think it just, they all just went up in a position, made it even stronger. So yeah. I've just got to hope really that my defence now is a little bit better because obviously I've brought in the um, the centre mid, the centre back, the back and I've improved the goalkeeper. So yeah. It's I'm hoping how sport is like that. Really, yeah. yeah. I'm hoping it's like this now, really. Well, let's have a look at your schedule then. What have you been up to so far? You've had some Champions League games. You have yeah. progressed through that Champions League despite losing the last leg there. You'd already won 5 1. So yeah. that's absolutely fine. Uh, you have dropped points in the league. Yeah. But it's against Sport. It's against Porto, sorry, not Sporting, away from home. So that's not too bad, really. No. I was a bit disappointed that they could, they, I conceded two goals in three minutes, but. I got a draw out of it against yeah. them, so I'm happy at the moment. Pass off to Ferreira was a 6 0 win. Uh, Nacional was a 2 0 win. You got Sporting up next in the Super Cup yeah. and Bayern Munich in your Champions League yeah. group, which is quite funny, with Marseille and Rangers as well. Uh, so that's the, what you've got to go for. Bayern Munich, by the way, they took on Victor Fran Fernandez, sorry, of uh, Zaragoza. So, I mean, he was picked ahead of me. Yeah. Never mind. Well, we. we it's only two seasons in, so we haven't got enough experience yet to get That's the big right. jobs, have we? Yeah, so. and they still got £103 million in the bank. They didn't yeah. really spend much money. Uh, speaking of, Louis van Gaal, what's he been up to? I'm interested with that. So he spent £12 million there. Nobody really coming in of no other than Valencia, Antonio Valencia, who was at Villarreal there. Uh, of course, I bought one of their players. They're £39 million on the outs, and they didn't buy anybody by the looks of it. No. Yeah, so hasn't really... Oh... Virgil van Dijk, new gen. Yeah. So, I mean, That's he is already amazing. Yeah. That's quite interesting, actually. At 18 years of age, Virgil van Dijk is, is already fantastic uh, in, at 18 years of age. Okay. That's one for us to keep an eye on. Yeah, definitely. definitely. Yeah. But how have they been doing? They are first in the league. They've won four out of four. And they've got a goal difference of plus 13 so far. Uh, he's conceded one goal. One in Go. four already. Oh. Whether that's going to be enough for you to catch up eventually. Uh, let's have a look to see what I've been doing. I've had a good, good start other than one bad result against Bochum 2-0. And the fans come out and was complaining about the tactical change. Yeah, they did, they? And then I went and won 5-1 and 5-0 against Kaiserslautern and Mainz. And then nobody said anything about how much of my tactical genius. Uh, so I don't get that. Both of us have our hardest games in the next game. Yeah. So I've got Bayern Munich at home in the next game. So it'd be interesting to see how I get on against them. And whether or not Dad can catch up in terms of trophies, you've just got to win that Portuguese yeah. league and you can then call it a day in Portugal, should you wish. It's brought to carry on like they are. I might have to just jump out for a little while and come back. Yeah. I mean, I've got UEFA Cup to look forward to as well. Sam Dior, Young Boys and Gronagon. I've got a fairly easy group. I should progress. So it's all about what I can do in those final stages. Is this tactic too attacking for cup football? Well, I guess we're going to have to find out. Well, it certainly wasn't too attacking for the group stage of UEFA Cup because my Werder Bremen side absolutely dominated Group A, scoring 16 goals, but only conceding three in the meantime. Topping the group on goal difference to Sampdoria. Dad's Benfica team had a great run of wins and the season was going well until a random loss to Maritimo at home, with Sporting up next in their first league encounter. Who once again have not lost a match, but Oscar Cardozo has 19 goals this season, so could he cause Sporting a massive threat? Unfortunately, no. He sustained a major injury which has put him out for up to eight months. And Sporting took the game to Benfica early and broke the deadlock. 
but Daz Benfica team didn't want to be beat, and the new man Sergio Aguero bagged the equaliser. Not the result Dad craved, but he's still just a point behind Van Hal's team. In January, both Dad and I signed world-class strikers, as I picked up the signature of class Jan Huntelaar for next season when his contract expires. Daz was a little more for the here and now, though, as he brings in Cesar Delgado for an unbelievably cheap price. I did manage to strengthen my side slightly in January as Abue, of course, finally joined the club. Dad also brought in a second player in Alexis, who can fill in both at centre-back and right-back. But Benfica's Champions League run looked over as he took a 3-0 away loss to Inter Milan in the quarter-final. Only to pull off the most miraculous result ever in the second leg, as Benfica scored two first-half goals, and as we got to the final stage of the match, Freddie Adu stuck in an equaliser tie in the leg until Naldo smashed in a winner to send Benfica through to the semi-final. But there was way more to this season for the both of us. Oh, I mean, I was second, but nowhere near them. No, it's a good season, mind you. Yeah. Uh, so that's that's exactly what I was kind of hoping for in my head. I wanted to get into the Champions League spots, close the gap on Bayern. I don't think I closed the gap on them, but best of the rest. 100% is uh, is best I guess yeah. I can I can I mean, ask right, for. Andover you beat by a point but the other ones you're five points in front yeah so that's good yeah good not season. a bad season yeah. not a bad season whatsoever I had uh, seven losses in total only well, I lost to buy 4-0 so I got battered once there uh, with five draws again drawing to them so I didn't actually beat them they only lost three games two against Schalke it was obviously their bogey team cool. and, uh, and Hamburg who finished in fifth place so yeah, they had a cracking season. If you take a look at the player statistics as well, closer once again with the most goals in the competition. Bit disappointed that I didn't have anybody in there considering I played so attacking. Yeah. It's unbelievable. Because uh, I've got the goalkeeper who's getting clean sheets, which is great, and Palacio who had the second highest amount of man of matches. But yeah, I wish there was something that was a little bit more substantial in these, these top areas here. But okay... How do I get on in other competitions? Oh. <laughs> yeah. I didn't need that. Get in! <laughs> oh, I didn't need that. The only thing I can see is good there is in Europa League. You've lost that, so. Oh, and you're, and you're not in the Europa League next season. Yeah. But Let's look a, at that first. That's a big kick for me, that is. 6 3, I lost to Everton in the quarter final. Round of 16, I'm not that Chelsea. Good result, yeah. Yeah, that is good. Who's, it's still Aaron Grant. they got a great team as well, and I knocked them out. That was that was good. Uh, wasn't in that bit. That was because I was in the. I topped the group again. Only lost one against Sampdoria, but so did Sampdoria. They only lost to me. Yeah. And I just had a far superior goal difference, which I would expect with my formation. But the DFB Bacal, did I beat Bayern in the final? No. Ooh, Nuremberg. Who beat Bayern? 1 0. Semi final? I did. Oh, 4 3. There you go then. Deserve to win it. Yeah. So I've won my favourite trophy, the DFB Pokal. What a what a semi-final that is as well. That was a back and forth one. Uh, they scored an own goal to win it, <laughs> and then tried tracing back with a Landon Donovan goal. Didn't quite get it, but there we go. Won the DFB Pokal. Lovely stuff. Uh, let's just check. Twenty goals, nineteen seventeen. I'm disappointed with that. And sixteen for Stefan Kiesling is really bad. I'm gonna have to have a look at that. I'm gonna have to. I mean, the good thing now, you, the all you've got to concentrate on now is, is catching Bayern in the league now. Isn't it? Yeah, you can, you can get the cup in that that league now. Oh, I don't believe you won a cup again. Tactic was all right. I think I need to solidify something up here because they're not. None of them. I'm really gelling that well. To well, the way you play though, that's that's like your cup winning tactic. And then when you go for the league, you makes it more, a bit more yeah. harder to beat, don't you? So. Uh, only £29 million to spend Ooh. as well next season. But I do have another striker coming in, and he is exceptionally good. Yeah. Uh, Class Jan Huntela has agreed to join me next season. So you could afford to sell a couple of strikers if you were changing your formation, really, couldn't you? Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, so we'll see how that goes. All right, Dad, without further ado, how have you done? It's a Champions League final. I can't believe it. So in the league, yeah, you lost finished a point. a point behind. I lost a silly game. Near the and end you of the beat them. Yeah. In one of the final games of the season, in the run, you had a number. Well, you conceded a goal up there. You beat yeah. them two nil. What was the second game that I, the second game I lost? It you lost to Maritimo at the, uh, around Christmas, yeah. and then Rio Ave that was later the game on. That cost me. Yeah. Yeah. That was a silly game. They were in length at the time as well. So. You sorted out your defence. Yeah. Only conceded 14. That was what you said you were set out to do. <sighs> but it's just the luck of the games then, unfortunately. And yeah. Mario Gomez and Vucevic both had the top scores of the league. Yeah, I, I mean, 
Michael, Michael scored over 19. He got injured in December, so yeah. he didn't play for the rest of the season. He's still out for another yeah. six weeks to three months with damaged cruciate ligaments. So I've done well, considering I didn't have him, yeah. even though I, my striker I brought in, in in January was really good. Yeah, he's class. Delgado, yeah. wasn't he? He's, he's uh, fantastic. So, other competitions. Did you win the cup? You did. You won both. Both cups. <laughs> a point away from the league. And, and a Champions, Champions League, League final. But remember, who are you with? Benfica. And what happens to Benfica in cup finals? They can't win cup finals. The they? Bella Gutmann curse. Yeah, this, so this is a big, 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 big moment. Moment for me. If for I the can history win this. of I've, Benfica. How many times have I tried to win a European Cup for, for Benfica? It's got at least be, twice. It's, it's, yeah, it's got to be at least twice now, isn't it? Yeah. So I'm, I'm lads, I'm, I'm really up for this one. Honestly, I'm playing my best team. Got to do it for you, lads. Right. Well, speaking of that team, this is the lineup. Uh, We've got a few injuries, obviously, know, that's dropped out. Lorik Chana is actually suspended for the final as well, which is a bit. I mean, harsh. to be honest with you, that that probably is near enough my strongest squad, strongest Outside of starting Carl eleven. Johnson. Yeah. So I'm quite happy with it. All right. So I'm got. Yep. Yeah. I can't do no more. I, the strong. All my players are there that, that, that I can be there probably. Yeah. So I'm. I'm I'm nervous, man. <laughs> well, I wish you the worst of luck. Yeah, I know you would. Yeah. Real Madrid in Come on, the let's final. Get rid of this curse. Speaking of, let's get rid Bernd of this curse. Schuster Who is the, the manager. Is Iron Robin is their key player. Oh, yeah. How are you going to stop that man from cutting inside on that left foot Raul there and as well. smashing one in? One of my all-time yeah. favourite players, Raúl. I had a lot of his shirts. Is still there. 32 years of age. They what's, tend what's, to play a 4-4-2. What's been my run to the cup final then? Oh yeah, Can we need to have a look at that. They've yeah. still got Van Nistelrooy and oh. they've got Berbatov. They've got a very Manchester United looking forward. They've got Cannavaro and Pepe at centre-back still. Badiso, who you tried to sign, rejected you and went there. They've got Marcelo as well. And they've got uh, Schneider, who's in the side and looking really good. <laughs> Only got the likes of Higuain on the bench. Just players Pepe's, like that, you know. Pepe's there as well, look. Yeah, so there's some fantastic players. Iron Robin's actually injured. Will he be playing in the final? Okay. I mean, they, you look at their squad and you think, oh, I got absolutely no chance, don't you? Yeah. So in your group, you finished top against Bayern Munich. Yeah. You only lost to Rangers. Yeah. You beat you beat Bayern Munich in that uh, group stage. The round of 16, you knocked out Schalke, another German side. Quarter final into Milan. <gasps> You're 3-0 down the first leg. God, that's a good result then. Mm. Coming back and winning 4 0 in that second leg. Semi final was a 3 2 first leg win Ajax. against Ajax 0 0 in the second leg to take you into the final. And they, that was an El Clasico in the semi final as well. So that was very much overshadowing your yeah, match, I would imagine. Definitely, yeah. Into the final, then, Dad's picked this lineup. What happened? So somehow my dad managed to get Benfica into the Champions League final before even winning the league. Very impressive, but of course, the curse of Benfica in the European Cup final still runs through to this day. But it didn't take long before Dab was up out of his seat celebrating as the Guzman stuck Benfica in front 15 minutes in. Just before half time, though, Real Madrid pegged them back. Dad held on to injury time with his players carrying knocks, and the game was about to go into extra time, but the last thing he needed was somebody to be stupid. Q Rafinha getting a straight red card for this horrific tackle. But in extra time, a moment of brilliance from Sergio Aguero, who finds the bottom corner. Dad then claimed for a penalty, and it went to VAR and was given in his favour. Luigi Bruin stepped up for Benfica and struck the post and miss. Benfica was doing so well, though, to run the clock down, keeping the ball away from Real Madrid to stop any counters and even getting another huge chance to kill the game off. But they finally did enough, and the whistle went, meaning Omega Dad is the man to break the curse of Benfica in European Cup finals, as somehow his side lift the Champions League trophy aloft, really taking a huge step in Glory Hunter. <sighs> the curse has been lifted. Oh, you little beauty. <laughs> oh, Fair play. Fair play. You did a hell of a while there. I'm the Cup King. <laughs> Three yeah. cups in one season. <laughs> I only really, needed one of them, but... <laughs> I really thought me winning the DFP for car, I'm like, oh, yes, the so pressure's on now. So did I, I must admit. I mean, that was a hell of a surprise for me to get into the final, but did I play them or what? Yeah. I was all over them. Even with nine men, they didn't come near me. No. Ten, ten men, sorry. Yeah, I mean, you had injuries. Yeah. You had a red card. 
and you still come away with a and win. And I missed a penalty. And you missed a penalty. <laughs> oh. Everything was against you in that match yeah. for the curse to carry on and oh. Aguero popped up with a winner. What a goey. Oh, was your mate shouting? Aguero! Oh, yeah. Good, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. What a oh, goal that was. Stuff. Oh, that is disgusting. Done it for you, lads. Done it. We got that curse gone off. I mean, that. fair play. My only saving grace is that you probably still have to stay in, in the Portuguese oh, league. To be honest with you, mate, I've got out of a team right now. Yeah. I, I don't know what my budget was now. I can't remember. 23, was it? Yeah, 44. 44. So I can prove that to him a little bit. Not a lot. But I don't know where I'm going to prove It's just what you do against oh, Sporting. No. That's the trouble. I've really got just a, so good. I've really got to hope that Sporting have a bad season. And yeah. I just been. I might go looking at their players and see if I can just buy one of their <laughs> players. <laughs> I know there's a two seasons in a row I've said that, but no, I'm not going to go anywhere. I've got to try and win that league. And that's my that's my only thing because you can win the Champions League as we've seen in any league. Yeah. So it's not like I'm like, oh, okay, I need to go to there to do yeah. that. What you've just done, you need to still get out of this place. Yeah, and that's, that's right, my yeah. only saving grace. But there we go. All right. You always need one of the top teams to win the Champions League, don't you? Yeah. Very funny. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, starting off with my Retro Glory Hunter cabinet. Thankfully, I'm not too sad because I have got my favourite trophy to add to it. But there's an even bigger one going in Dad's Retro Glory Hunter cabinet. Let's have a look. Despite Dad doing what he's just done, I am chuffed to bits. Winning the DFB Pokal in Season 2 in Germany. And next step, it's the Bundesliga. But Dad winning the European trophy this soon on into Glory Hunter is a massive achievement. And having to stay in Portugal for the lead title, I think that still keeps the advantage fully on my side though, into season number four. After Dad lifted the biggest trophy of them all, season four needed to be a good one for me. So I went on the hunt to improve my Werder Bremen side with some top talent. And that's because job-wise, there was nowhere really interesting enough to leave Bremen. And Dad ain't going anywhere because he still needs to finish Portugal. However, bringing in a player with the caliber of Raphael van der Vaart might increase his chances of doing just that, and on a free transfer too. As well as Carlinhos, who could be picked up for such a cheap cost and instantly give him elite levels of squad depth. Not to mention where he was getting him from. An interesting job did appear though, my old club sporting as Louis van Howard decided to leave the role to fill the vacant Netherlands job. But just like that, disaster struck, as Sergio Aguero had his release clause activated by Liverpool and refused to talk to Dad about signing a new contract. With a double whammy of it also happening for Dad through Jonathan de Guzman, his European champions are being stripped apart. Just as his rival welcome legendary manager Scolari to the club. Meanwhile, during Dad's crisis, I was playing Bayern Munich in the Super Cup and closer put them ahead. I received a bid from Bayern Munich from all three of my strikers and Van Persie this preseason. Funny enough, but it was Stefan Kiesling who brought me level. It was also Kiesling who missed the first penalty in the penalty shootout as well as Palacio, one of the other strikers who missed the decider. Before Dad's two-star attackers left though, he played Scolari Sporting in his own Super Cup, which only got entertaining on the 89th minute, but Dad ultimately lost. It was a different story in the UEFA Super Cup against Lazio, despite Lazio taking the early lead. New signing Van der Vaart stuck Benfica back on level terms, but the game went to extra time where, returning from injury, Oscar Cardozo banged in the winner for Dad. But Omega Dad had a plan for his transfer crisis, and it involved contacting an old friend of mine who hadn't been enjoying himself much at Liverpool since leaving my Bremen side, Diego. Dad, you lost two massive players oh, after no. winning the Champions League. I was looking at that and thinking, I've done so well, what a great season I've had. Everybody's going to want to stay for me being world, you know, Champions League winners and all that. And I'm thinking, right, just build on that. What do you think have I got? Probably just a centre-back. All I need is one centre-back. was all I really think I need, needed, really, and a couple of squad players, possibly. And i got a team that could do this. And then, bang, this happened to me. I just couldn't believe that this guy left me yeah. after being a Champions League winner. I mean, £53 million was his release clause. That's nothing, neither, is it? No, he's had a couple of good seasons for you as well, as yeah. well including scoring the winner in the Champions League. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but he wasn't the only one who had his release clause activated because no. Jonathan de Guzman left very quickly after yeah. as well. Same scenario, £54 million release clause. Well, I just got the player in to take over. Van der Vaart. Yeah, take over from um, Aguero. And then, bang, this happened to me as well. So I was thinking, no! Yeah. <laughs> so I had well, to go hunting for had, another player then, didn't I? You had Van der Vaart already lined up. Yeah. He came in on a free transfer. That was just to give you 
more backups, to yeah. be honest, just to build on the team that you already had to obviously go for uh, the, the Portuguese league because that's the only thing that's keeping you in Portugal right now is to beat Sporting. Yeah. Speaking of Sporting, I new bit, manager. I had a bit of luck there, didn't I? I was going to say, out of everything that happened, them losing Louis van Gaal might be the best thing for you. 100%. 100%. I mean, I looked at buying a couple of their de their defenders that I try yeah. and weaken them, but I just couldn't afford them, could I? No, they were asking for double the price well, because it was you. Yeah. So um, I thought, right, I've got to try and get better than them. But then this happened to, to them and I thought, that's even better for me now. Yeah. Losing man in uh, Van der Gaal. So, so I, mean, I was pleased with as this. Well, he, he actually had like, was it nearly two years unbeaten? Yeah. Yeah. Because he was unbeaten the first season, <laughs> yeah. barely conceded any goals, uh, and you were struggling to keep up with him. Now Scalari comes in. I mean, Scalari's no mug. Oh, he's a good manager as well. Phenomenal, but, legendary yeah. manager. Uh, been around the block, of course. I've just got all really that um, he left because there's, something, there's a bit of he, No, he unhappy. went to the Netherlands. Oh, did he? He went to the Netherlands job. You know, to be a squad like that, you think, oh, there must be something going on in there. So I'll just open, really, that's what it was. But yeah. that's why he's gone to be there. So that's fair enough. I mean, in the two years, he won two leagues and two cups. Yeah. So there we go. That's, didn't uh, win the Champions League, the boy, did he? No, he didn't. All right. But we're very early on in glory. I don't know if you to start being a bit big headed about it. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, I'm the villain in this channel, all right? <laughs> Don't start turning people against you. Yeah, I'll, I'll get, I'll all get, of a sudden, I'll become the underdog that everybody's rooting yeah. for on the baby face. I had to get past you and the curse. And I've done it. Yeah. Well, yeah, fair play. So, with Sporting uh, changing manager and you losing a couple of players, you brought in Raphael van der Vaart. You had a lot of money to replace them, as well as bring in a couple of squad players and brought in of course the left-sided centre-back Felipe yeah uh, which definitely strengthens your defence I mean he's fantastic yeah I mean I, I had a, a, a centre-back there but he wasn't naturally left for it yeah. so I, I, I just knew how to get one in that makes it even stronger then yeah so yeah definitely 28 million pound as well seems worth it uh, Yusuf comes in for £5 million. Now, yeah. he is a very good CDM, but only going to be a backup because he doesn't actually start in nope. the lineup when you. Uh, I mean, he was quite cheap team. as well. I just couldn't afford to let that go for that. You know, a good player for that price, you just got yeah. to get him in when you can, haven't you? Uh, Carlinhos came in, £3.5 million pound no, left back. Yeah, spare left back, £3.5 million. Yeah. Bargain, isn't it? Then Michael Balak came yeah. in. This was my replacement for my midfielder. Yeah. It was a good price for you. I know he's 33, but I need to, I'm only after a job being done this season. Yeah, that's this, it. This guy comes in. We know he's good, so oh, yeah, he comes in and fills is. that space for me. Yeah, legendary midfielder Michael Barak in from Chelsea, yeah. which is funny, right? Because your two players went to Chelsea and Liverpool, and you bought the two players to replace them from Chelsea and Liverpool. Well, here we go. So you basically just did a swap deal. Yeah. £15 million pound there from Michael Barak, plus money from Jonathan Du Guzman. Yeah. Uh, but then you also signed Diego from Liverpool for £67 million yeah, after we... they bought Aguero for 53 yeah. So where do we know this guy from? Well, my old player yeah. at Werder Bremen. Yeah. I sold him for £65 million. Pound. You bought him for 67 two seasons later. He had a good season last year. Yeah. He only started 21 games, but he got 13 goals and 5 assists in the Premier League. Very good. He played well for you as well. So yeah, he did. It, it was a no-brainer when I got him for that money. So I thought, well, he fills in that space as well. Yeah. He's a shadow striker. We know he's good. We know he's good. We knew he'll score goals. I think I've done, I've done well. Yeah. Uh, you changed the tactics slightly, despite yeah. winning the Champions League. Yeah. But I just you didn't really change what it does. It, no, I you basically I, just flipped it. Yeah. I, I, I wanted my shadow striker to be central. Yeah. That was the only reason I went for it. So I just bought him in and, and put the the shadow the the well, the player that was positioned yeah. there, yeah. which was Aguero at the time. Yeah. I wanted Aguero in there in that position. Yeah. And um, so I bought him into that position, put the shadow striker to the to the right rather than it was Aguero to the left. Yeah. So that's that was that was my thinking. I lost Aguero, but I just kept the same win because Van der Vaart is just as good, I think. Yeah. And well, he's not, actually he's not footed. as good as Aguero, no. but he is good still. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so Rafinha sitting in the team, Kana, Felipe Marquez is your new two back, uh, well, back line, your centre backs. Yeah. Uh, Taiwu is there as well, Taiwu. I think I think now I've got a really strong defence. So now I think I've got a team to do it. Cardozo doesn't even make your team. No. Obviously returned, scored in his returning match as well. Yeah. Um, I mean, I player. was surprised with that, but what a player to have as a reserve case. Yeah. I do get an injury. Let's have a look then at your schedule because you lost in the Super Cup. 
um, which was when you still had Aguero and yeah. Jonathan de Guzman. Night, well, it didn't kick off until the 89th minute by the looks of it. Then it was the 90th and the 92nd, and you lost it. You think you won one up? Yeah, oh, unbelievable. And you were down to 10 men as yeah. well. Uh, Boa Vista, though, a good start in the league campaign because this is all you really care about is that league yeah, campaign. 6 yeah. 0. Uh, the UEFA Super Cup, that's always a nice one to win, I guess. Yeah, it was good in, win that. Played in Serbia as well. You, yeah. beat, you beat Lazio 2 1 after extra time. Uh, you beat Naval 6 1 or Naval. Aves 3 0. Another 3 0 against Rio Ave. And then what happened here? 6 0 against Porto. Yeah. So now I know I've got a, a team to do it now. Yeah. I've already conceded one goal in the league. It's still Gus Hudding. Um, yeah. You absolutely tonked them. I'd be surprised if Gus Hudding is still at the end of the season yeah. at Porto after that. Because yeah. that is disgraceful. Uh, let's have a look at your Champions League group. We've got Chelsea, <laughs> Juventus and Basel. That's a difficult group. Considering you just won the Champions yeah. League, you've been given a difficult one. It is, yeah. I mean... Um, I'd still like to think I'm going to go for it. Yeah. I mean, I, I am the champions of, the, of Europe at the moment, so I'll be disappointed if I don't go for it. Okay. Uh, let's have a look to see what I've been up to. I had a bit uh, bit of a quieter window, but I still spent £24 million, including bringing in Klaas Jan Huntelaar on a free transfer. That's a good song. Uh, yeah, that's a really good one. He's five-star according to my team. But I did sell a couple of players. Hugo Almeida went to Sporting. I thought, make them a little bit better, won't you? Real Sociedad bought Thomas Hitzelsberger off me because I didn't really play him too much. There's a couple of players who left. Uh, as well on freeze but I also brought in Leonardo Ponzio from River Plate as a good backup option for that centre midfield but he's actually really good to be fair uh, as well as Juan Manuel Torres from San Lorenzo who my players and my uh, my scouts rated as one of the best players in the world when I bought him but there are a few weaknesses obviously technically he's, he's not amazing he just does the centre midfield job uh, that you want him to do but for six million pound I don't really care to be fair and then finally Felipe we both bought a Felipe yeah mine plays in goal uh, and he's got 20 reflexes so Brilliant. I lost my backup goalkeeper and I brought this guy in for 5.5 million pound I don't think what I have done is strength for my first team outside of bringing in Huntelaar but I needed good backup options that was my my biggest problem I think uh, with with my tactic I was sticking with roughly the same. I had a uh, centre forward on support there. I've made a DLF on support there instead and made two advanced forwards. And I've changed this role to a deep line playmaker on defend to give me a little bit more support in the middle there. Uh, my best 11 now looks like this. So Kiesling and Palacio are the two up front, but they both like to break the offside trap, whereas Huntelaar doesn't. And he's not exactly quick, so he is better in that DLF role dropping back a little bit got good passing and vision ability so maybe you can get a couple of assists instead of goals uh, Van Persie still on the left Jaumutinho still in the middle with Ponzio actually going in there let's got Mertesaka at the back Abue of course on the right I did try and go for a better left back failed in that but what I did manage to succeed in is keep all of my players because I had so many offers from Stuttgart oh, Arsenal they were all coming in weren't they uh, yeah, I mean, Bayern Munich tried every single one of my strikers. <laughs> Did you? They went every single one and Van Persie. The only one they didn't try was Huntelaar and Podolski. So they tried every single one. Uh, but I, I stayed strong and none of my players wanted to leave. And that's been good because I'm currently top of the Bundesliga. Despite losing to Bayern Munich in the Super Cup on penalties, as you've already seen, I then went and won 10-0 in the Cup with a rotated team. Uh, Greuther Firth. I went. To, uh, they came to my, my my stadium and I stuffed them 6-3. Cologne was a 6-1 away win, which is great. And Dortmund, don't think, oh my gosh, you beat Dortmund 4-0. They are trash on this. Yeah. They are absolutely terrible. And I beat them 4-0. So I am currently top of the Bundesliga, but I am still nowhere near Bayern Munich in terms of uh, how we are rated in the game and in, in terms of who should be favourites to win the league. So... I've got one task, and that is to win the Bundesliga. You've got one task, and that is to win the Portuguese yep. league. And then that's when we start scrambling for the next big role yeah. in Europe that pops up. And maybe create ourselves a manager merry-go-round. 
So let's see what happens. My Werder Bremen side was easily the best of the rest in the Bundesliga. There wasn't many teams who could give us a hard game, and we started really well. The problem is that Bayern Munich are just better than us. With Louis van Gaal leaving Sporting, Dad's European champions looked comfortable, winning 16 out of 16 with Sporting to play next. That is unfortunately where Dad's winning streak ended, however, as he drew against the Portuguese champions 2-2 away from home. A small reinforcement was brought in through Brazilian midfielder Dudu for £6 million. But that wasn't enough to stop a loss eventually coming from Porto. And my Werder Bremen side were so bad in Europe that we actually dropped down into the UEFA Cup. That could be an advantage though. While Dab was piecing together another incredible run in the Champions League, even beating Manchester United 4-0 at home. But my failure to catch Bayern Munich in the Bundesliga did leave us with another German Cup run though. And back-to-back -back finals as we looked to retain our trophy. But Dad's win against Manchester United that I mentioned was in the semi-final and means it's back-to-back -back Champions League finals for Dad. But what about our league form though? Can we finally win our domestic leagues? Okay, I finished in second place in the Bundesliga. Closer. I, I was close at times, but nine points off the top. I mean, I only lost one more. It's just the draw. I mean, when you look at your year, year thing, you were there all season. Yeah, I dropped down to third a couple of times, yeah. but other than that... You were just chasing the whole season, were you? Yeah, really, you? Uh, Palacio with 31 goals. It's quite impressive. Uh, let's have a look, dive a little bit deeper into it. They only conceded 21 goals, but I scored 14 more, but conceded 10 less. So my actual goal difference is higher, but again, it's one of those things of game management, isn't it? Yeah. Whereas their goal difference is less, and obviously they conceded less, but scored a lot less. They only managed to lose three games and draw two of them. One of them was against me. They managed to get over the line more. Yeah. Uh, whereas I failed to do that four times compared to them. Uh, and that's what's really cost me there. I mean, I could have done with beating them, ideally. But going away to Bayern Munich and uh, getting getting a 2-1 loss and then actually drawing at home, that's my next step, I guess. That's what I need to do uh, coming up in, instead. What I did notice is mines were relegated, Dad. And that meant that I think Jurgen Klopp was sacked. We left the managerial role throughout the season. Right. So, Jurgen Klopp is now at Torino age 43 and this of course is before he ever went to Borussia Dortmund yeah so his path has changed at Mines, uh, and surprisingly they didn't bring in Thomas Tuchel no. <laughs> so I don't know what's going on there but they are now in the second division so Frankfurt are in third place that warms my heart a little bit but Dortmund are down in ninth there uh, let's have a look at the season profile Kieschling got 23 goals that's good but Miroslav Klose is again just a league above everybody else on 29. Palacio and Podolski with the two highest average ratings, though. And Palacio and Podolski also have the two highest assists. So Palacio is a phenomenal season for me, really. I mean, he's very good uh, across the pitch. But up front, he's been doing great stuff for me. 18 goals and 18 assists in just 27 games is remarkable, really. I need to keep him. I need to keep him next season. Uh, he is wanted by Chelsea and Real Madrid. So that's going to be easier said than done. Yeah, definitely. He is also 29. So that's going to be the highest value that he is going to be worth. But how, of course, do I do in the DFP Pokal and the Champions League? Knowing that I dropped into UEFA Cup. Yeah. Because that could be the business end of the season This is the me. one I really don't need you to win. Yes. So, did I manage to win it? Oof. No. Round of 16 by Valencia, which is a, is a bit of a sad thing, really, because when I looked at who was left in the UEFA Cup, I actually found some my chances. Yeah, I think Valencia, yeah. AC Milan, uh, and Ajax maybe were the difficult clubs in there. Um, I think everybody else I, I, I stood a chance of beating, really. But you come up against a Valencia team when they've got this man playing up front, and already you're on the back foot. Yeah. Uh, so, and they got Otmar Hitzfeld in there, who at the time is one of the best managers in the world. Of course, he was at Bayern Munich for a while, dominating the Bundesliga. So that's always going to be very difficult to do. I did, though, win the DFB Pokal for the second season in a row, beating Frankfurt in the final. So you beat your, you, you, you beat your favourite German team and you won your favourite cup. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did. Uh, so that's two years in a row, um, but that means nothing. 
there we go. Uh, dropped into UEFA Cup because I actually did terrible in my group stage, which we didn't have a look at, but I faced Arsenal, Feyenoord and Lons in there, so not great at all. Lost two games there to Feyenoord and Arsenal away from home. Not fantastic. Goals-wise, I'm a little bit disappointed here with Huntelaar. Only 16 yeah. goals and 9 assists. But he, he still did have a good average rating. Still played 44 games as well. So Yeah. I wonder if he got injured or nothing, was it? No. He had a good average rating and he is wanted. He's roughly about £40 million. Pound. I don't know whether to cash in on somebody like that right now. Because uh, all our strikers are in their mid to late 20s. So I'm not like in a hurry to sell any of them. I don't no. feel like I need to. Well, to be fair, the age of my players are quite good to carry on this almost like rebuild. Yeah. To, in my quest to win the Bundesliga, I guess. I think I'd be silly if I decided to leave unless it was for Bayern Munich. I mean, we'll have to see whether there is any jobs coming up in a minute. But Dad, how did you do? One, the Portuguese league. Didn't Bayern move Bayern. from the top position. That nope. The whole Get season, in. you were top. Only lost one game against Porto. You finished in second place. The good thing is that I didn't lose against Sporting. Yeah. He but, didn't. We drew but against I didn't him both beat times. <laughs> <laughs> drew against him both times. So uh, yeah, Del Bosque's done you there, hasn't he? Or Scolari. So the only two, Bosque. the only points that I dropped a game was against the top two teams. Yeah, yeah. So you beat every I was consistent one again one for team. another season, but this time I, this time I, I beat. Well, I didn't lose against them. So no, uh, 146 goals only conceding 20. Uh, as Porto's manager is still good, I think, so he's managed to stay in the job despite getting absolutely spanked by you at the start. Uh, you didn't even have a top scorer. No. Where's well, your top scorer has gone? To be honest with you, I'm quite pleased with that because that means... I've Everybody contributed. Yeah. I mean, Delgado's down there with 13. He was joint 13th. Oscar Cardozo uh, was 11th with 16. Balak's even up there. Diego, Van der Vaart and Pazzini is in fourth. So, yeah, they, they, you dominated the other player statistics, but goals-wise, it was so spread out that yeah. like, you didn't need to win it. So that's you done, Dad, yes. in Portugal. Business done. Yeah. Did you leave an iconic season behind, though? Maybe a couple of cup wins as well. Champions League. Back to back <laughs> Champions Leagues. And the Cup as well. And the Cac Tacker Treble. Portugal. Done the treble at Benfica. Unbelievable. Got rid of that curse and won it again. Yeah. Fair enough. 2 1 against Arsenal in the final. Isn't it lovely to see Benfica's name there as two pass back winners? To back. Get in. Yes. Lovely. Now you've got to leave them. So. <laughs> There we go. Uh, let's have a look at group stage. You topped the group stage. You only lost one game to Chelsea away from home. So that's decent. Round of 16, you knocked out Udinese. You stole that defender, so no wonder yeah, why they conceded to Definitely, seven. yeah. Uh, after that, you went into the quarterfinal and beat Lyon 8-3 on aggregate, who are pretty much winning and dominating the French league yeah. right now. Uh, Semi-final, you knocked out Manchester United as Arsenal knocked out Barcelona in Indeed. that final uh, to go to the final to beat to meet you. In Beat there. the Arsenal as well. Yeah. Get in. Delgado Even better. And Rafael van der Vaart with the two goals after you were 1-0 down as well. But he definitely deserved it. He dominated the game by chances. Yeah. Uh, and XG especially. So, fair play. Well done. Uh, in the other cup final, which you, again, already won. Sporting Oh, I finally beat them. And you finally beat them. 2-0. So... What a way to leave, eh? It is by a winning great the Champions season League against for Arsenal. you. <laughs> My only saving grace now is that you've got to find a job. Yes, it's you true. Gotta, yeah, you got to do what I did. Yeah. Like restart almost in a way. Um, See, I don't know what I don't know what to do. Really, I don't ever just resign and hopefully start a merry go round. Or just sit and wait. Yeah, I don't know. No, sit and wait is dangerous. It's dangerous. Yeah, it I know. is dangerous. So let's have a look at the job centre because there are a few big clubs available, including. See, Stoker. I know Stoker are in the Europa League. Yes. They finish in fifth place. Jurgen Klingsmann is actually favourite for the job right now. Uh, I actually think Roma's in the UA, UA for League. Yeah, they are. UA for Cup. So Roma's there as well. I mean, Roma still have Totti. Still have De Rossi. I mean, De Rossi is one of the best midfielders in the world. And he's 27 years old. And Totti is 34. With a great natural fitness. I mean, he's not got the pace anymore. But in that shallow striker role... He is quite good still. 18. His first touch is 20. Yeah, he's just not got the physical anymore. Passes 18. Oh. So they do have a good team. Um, they've got some cracking players like Mancini, who is there, who I remember quite fondly. Their, their defence is Mexes. Uh, he scored that world-class overhead kick. Juan is there as well. He's fast. Abadal 
is there. He's 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 a great left back. Look at that, 19 acceleration. So what's the budget some players? Them? They've the got some there? players there. Uh, the budget is 26 million pound, which Never is going to be a lot there, though, is it? It's <clears> good still. It's good. So still. they're 11 points off Juventus in the yeah. league. Uh, so that's 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 an option for you, as well as, of course, as you mentioned, the Schalke, well, Stuttgart job and the Schalke job, who are both uh, in the UEFA Cup positions yeah. too. Could you come over to me and cause a little bit of havoc? Mm. Uh, Stuttgart budget is £51 million. The Schalke one is £49 million. There's always money in the Bundesliga. They're capped in, where's a cap? <laughs> So there we go. Those are the options that you've got, Dad. But before you make that decision, you've got to add something to your trophy cabinet. And that's the Portuguese League. That's right. Fair play to Dad for getting yet another Champions League trophy. But the main job for Glory Hunter was securing the Portuguese League, and he can finally leave Portugal. But where does he go next? Dad's time in Portugal is done, so he retires as the back-to-back -back European champions winner. And he's wasting no time applying for the vacant job in Rome. I had decided to switch things up tactically and solidify my midfield some more, as well as lining up an unbelievable wonder kid in goal. From Belgium, the 19-year-old goalkeeping sensation that is Thibaut Courtois. Not sure if any of you guys have heard of him, but he's a pretty big deal, and we met his £4.9 million release clause. But he wasn't the only young wonder kid I had lined up. Because then I went for sporting centre-back sensation from the Netherlands, Virgil van Dijk. Again, this youngster is kind of unheard of in and around Europe, but my god, he looks exceptional. I also had too many strikers, so I decided to try and sell Klaas Jan Huntelaar after he underperformed last season following his free transfer. More manager movements as Ralf Ranić leaves Hoffenheim for Wolfsburg. Finally though, Dad is brought in for an interview at Roma. Although they did also approach me for an interview, but I politely declined. And that led to Dad being approached by Roma as their new manager, for which he accepted and got straight over to Rome to take charge. But his first job was cancelling transfers that he didn't want to happen immediately. Although, if I know Dad, let's see how long it lasts before he sells them himself. Straight away though, Dad was bringing in a no goal scorer from Benfica up top for £60 million. And right after that, he then spotted a young Romelu Lukaku and immediately was desperate to bring him in. But he rejected Dad and went to Chelsea instead. But that's when this summer took a complete turn. Because Rafa Benitez had taken Dad's job, leaving Liverpool. And Victor Fernandez filled his role in Merseyside and look who he left to go for them the German champions by Munich and the butterfly effect commences so after assessing their squad compared to the very good Werder Bremen team I built I applied and you could say the rest is history as I become the new by Munich manager dad I've ended up at by Munich at my rivals yeah. the ones I was trying to take down well they were the one team that were going to stop you from winning the league anyway mate, yeah so if you're going to move, you're going to move to the better team in you. So, I mean, I was the best of the rest last season, but I was still nowhere near Bayern Munich. I couldn't beat them. Somehow their job came about because yeah. of a little bit of a man manager merry-go-round, and here I am now as their manager. I felt you were building a better team. I know. So there was two things that almost kept me there uh, at, at Werder Bremen, and that is basically the signings that I had just made that season, which you would have yeah. obviously seen. I mean, Ronald <laughs> Koeman is now in there, uh, but bringing in Tipo Courtois for like £4.9 million, and he's already amazing. Uh, Biglia was another one that I've just brought in. Like, he is fantastic. Again, quite a cheap price. Zerkov, uh, a left midfielder to, to rival Robin Van Persie. And then your best one. And Virgil van Dijk. I mean, look how good he is at age 20. Yeah. And I was like, oh, I really don't know. However, the team that I have still got at Bayern Munich is still great. And you've got a budget to go with it. And I had a big budget, yeah. I mean, I've only got £3 million left because I did spend quite a lot of it. But I think I spent it quite well. Uh, they actually have brought in Ilkay Gundogan, which is quite interesting. Uh, he is still a youngster, only 20 years of age. He's actually picked up a bit of a bad injury as well. So I haven't been able to use him yet. But as a good youngster to have in the team, if I am here for a while... 
I won't be. Uh, <laughs> Francois Clerc is my first sign in at AC, well, from AC Milan. He is fantastic at right back. I, I looked at it really. Their right back was okay. He was nowhere near as good as Francois Clerc. So I've brought him in 28 year old Frenchman. So that's fantastic. Thomas Bermarlin has a bit of a backup left sided centre back. Again, another injury though. I'll keep picking up injuries. He's not amazing. He won't be a starting player. It's just some backup options. But he, yeah, he, he could walk into most clubs in the league. Look at this. Yaya Torre from Barcelona. You beat me too, didn't you? Yeah, everybody has been telling us <laughs> you need to get Yaya Torre in this database because he's basically Frank Kessie before yeah. Frank Kessie appears. I couldn't, I couldn't afford him when I was at Benfica. And when I came to um, where, I, where I've moved to, I was looking for him, but you got him before me. Yeah, £54 million is a lot of money, though, uh, but he is world class. Alessandro Nesta, speaking of world class, he's coming to the end of his career, 35 years of age, but he can definitely still do me a job for just £4.5 million. Uh, what a career he's had, and he's going to end it at Bayern Munich, hopefully. Anyway, so some cracking signings that we've got there. Uh, the likes of Mats Hummels is uh, around still, 22 years of age. I've just loaned him out. They've got some recognisable faces, and I'm going for this. Now, originally I had it down here, but there's two strikers that I really want to use. Miroslav Klose, who we've seen has been dominating the league since I've been in the Bundesliga, scoring so many goals. Again, he's injured. And Luca Toni. And I loved Luca Toni uh, growing up, so I want to start using Luca Toni. Off the ball of 19. All right, his pace is not amazing, but he's six foot four with 18 strength, 16 heading, 19 finishing. Look at that. I mean, you're two strikers, 18 and 19 efficient. Finishing. finishing. Unbelievable. Yeah, we've even got Wagner Love on the bench. Who remembers Wagner Love? He likes to beat the offside trap. He's quick. He's got 17 finishing himself, and he can barely get into the team. Uh, so I think going this route is is definitely the way for it. Uh, Jose Antonio Reyes can play left-sided or up front as well. So I've got lots of options there, although he is requesting to leave. Bastian Schweinsteiger, before he adopted more of a deep-line playmaker role, he was kind of a winger, he so that's like interesting. Model, he? He's, like he's, he's, he's fantastic. Seven, he? I love how on social media he's always posting about how much he loves Man United. It's like he played <laughs> like two years. Yeah. Uh, Frank Ribery as well in his prime. Plays centre mid somehow. I didn't realise that, but plays left mid or right mid. Absolutely incredible player. Uh, yeah, got some unbelievable players. Lucio's in the in the team. I think really the only weakness is the goalkeeper, uh, but I don't think he's going to have to be doing much. No. <laughs> if I'm honest. So this is a cracking team. Uh, Gail Clichy at left back as well. Uh, let's have a look at the schedule so far with this Bayern Munich team. It's not gone great. Uh, I lost to my <laughs> my old team, which was my first game, on penalties. Brilliant. Robin Van Persie you scored. Win it, could you? No, uh, I mean I lost against them last season. On, I lost against Bayern Munich last season yeah, on did, penalties. Yeah. For the same scoreline. Uh, I went through the next round three 0 I was finding my feet with a tactic. Got four two win there. Lost to Hertha Berlin. That's when I went to up top. And then the, the last game was a 3-0 victory there with Luca Toni bagging a goal. But I've had a lot of injuries so far. Now, my Champions League group, I'm in a Champions League with Real Madrid, Copenhagen, Dinamo Kiev. So I should definitely go through it. Just yeah. a battle of who who tops the group, really. Real Madrid have got a great team. They've got Bern Schuster as their, uh, as their manager. Iron Robin is actually still there. Now, round about now is when he actually moved to Bayern Munich. Yeah. Uh, but I don't think I have 200 odd million to manage to do that. But I'm not the only one who's moved clubs this summer. No. You moved a little earlier than me, but it, within 10. I had no intention of leaving until Bayern Munich job came up. You went to Roma, Dad, straight away. You knew that obviously that was a destination which appeased to you because of the UEFA Cup. Yeah, so I'm straight into the UEFA Cup um uh, league so that made it even better and yep. they're not a bad side no absolutely not uh, and you spent 80 million pound uh, you also sold a few of their players which you, you know yeah. what dad's like big clear out as soon as he gets in half of you over there half of you over there you're all leaving by the way <laughs> anybody, like, over, anybody over 27 go that side yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> So straight away you come in and, and cause a little bit of trouble. But you spent £80 million. Now this Jeffrey Brummer deal was already a deal that was done before you got there. Yeah. From Cesar Delgado down. And if you remember who that is, it's that striker at yeah. Benfica. He didn't let me down then and he's not no. going to let me down now. Now, of course, this is Italy. And they have rules such as the non-EU rule. I told Dad, be careful of the non-EU rule. Don't go signing any players because we don't understand it. <laughs> What does he do? Signs a non-EU player. <laughs> Luckily, he could register him. Then he signs Felipe, non-EU player. What does he do after that? 
David Braz. Non-EU player, can't register him. <laughs> three South Americans. The only three signings he made. Yeah. Oh, I can't say nothing against that, can I? No. No, you can't. <laughs> you can't defend yourself. Because that was a terrible decision. I was sat here going, I just, I, just, I just told you not to do that. But, hey, it's Dad's journey and I'll let him make his own I've mistakes. Got him, I've got him all set up for next season now. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> David, I want there. you to sit on the bench yeah. for a whole year. <laughs> Get Actually, get you can't even, you're not even allowed to sit on the bench. Uh, you <laughs> just sit there in the stands. You have to buy your own ticket too. Um, all right, tactics, Apart Dad. From that was too good, so Yeah, very similar to my tactic, although you did actually make yours first, but you've gone for a deep line forward on that right-hand side. Now, your team, your midfield is absolutely disgusting. Yeah. Uh, you've got Aquilani and Daniele De Rossi, who's actually Roma manager in mm. real life right yeah. now. Uh, he is phenomenal. Like one of the best midfielders in the world right now, uh, and he, I think I mean, he to be honest, was. I think I built the tactic around these two, having them in midfield, yeah. and then just fitted everybody else in around really. Yeah, Aquilani a lot better than the Aquilani that we've seen play for Liverpool. Uh, he is fantastic as well. Uh, we've got Mancini on that left hand side, very fast, good crosser of the ball, great dribbler of the ball. Uh, we've also got today who I mean, is two good wingers. Phenomenal, really. yeah. I don't play wingers very often, no. do I? So I no. fit him in. Uh, your striker is Vucinic who uh, has been there for a while. Last season got 15 goals, so that's good. Obviously, with Delgado up there too. Yeah. Max says, loves an overhead kick, and it's in there as well, yeah. as, well as we can see. 29-year-old Frenchman. Uh, we've got Juan. They've got a lot of non-EU players. <laughs> oh, no, yeah. uh, another Brazilian there. Uh, Abadal. Very good left back. Oh, yeah. Absolutely incredible. Very same as Cicin in the team already. Yeah, so, same two, as Cicinho and Doni two too. Two fullbacks really are ideal. you got a lot of Brazilians in this. Francesco Totti is still around. He's 34, though, and he can barely run. But do you know, I just couldn't bring myself to sell him or even try no. selling him. Yeah, you don't want to, do you? you know, oh, I just thought, no, he's, he's worth keeping in the team, really. Absolutely. He's uh, a legend over there. A lot of um, recognisable faces dotted around your bench as well. So let's have a look at your schedule. Uh, it's been a better start for you since you've only played three games, haven't conceded a goal yet. Mm -hmm. And the, the least amount of goals was a 3-0. But we got Genoa 5 now. You think, that's great. Inter Milan. Pretty sure Inter Milan were either winning the league this season or last. 6-0. Hell of a start. 6-0. Unbelievable. Uh, they won it two seasons ago. They were runner-up last year. Yep. So, 6-0. Fair play. Feeling great a start of the season. Now, I? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, very cocky, considering he can't register one of his players. <laughs> UEFA Cup. You've got Dundee United, Carabag, and Red Star in there, so you should dominate that. I've got to be the favourite to win that. Yeah, what, the whole thing? Yes. I mean, let's have a look I've at the other teams that are in there. Strong side in Sporting's there. in there. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I've got to have the odd one or two, but I feel that I've got to be, with the, the team that I've got, I feel that I've got to be one of the favourites. Yeah, Ajax, uh, Leverkusen. I don't think Leverkusen's that good at the minute. Atletico Madrid. Uh, Porto again, Man City, but they haven't got the money. But no. they still have built a good team, we've seen, haven't we? I mean, West Ham are there as well. So I, I always look at it and think any English side are in it, it's going to be hard to beat. Yeah. But the money right now we've seen is not quite in the Premier League, is no. it? No. It, there's a little bit of money in Italy. There's a little bit of yeah. money in Spain from the budgets that we're seeing. So, yeah, it's going to be interesting. You should be definitely one of the favourites there. Valencia, of course, is the holders of that competition, speaking of money. And they've got like £75 million in their trans budget. And a 29-year-old uh, David Villa still knocking about. So, you know, those are the types of uh, teams that are winning these. But that's your goal, I guess. UEFA Cup, as well as, of course, yeah. in a brand new country. See what damage you can do in the Serie A and the, I mean, the Coppa Italia. I'd like to win the Europa Cup. And then, and then I'll take whatever happens in Italy with that. Yeah, yeah. That, to me, that's my main goal. Yeah. If I can win that and get it in the bag, I'll be chuffed a bit. So yeah. And I'll just go with whatever I'll go with then. Absolutely. And uh, my big goal is to finish off Germany and see what happens there. I mean, I'm in the Champions League, but I don't think I have a good enough team to, to just waltz right through and claim that I should yeah. be winning it. With a bit of luck, possibly I can get to the later stages. Then I've you never hope, know what I've happens. I've got to you've built your other team so good that they take you on. Well, that's my trouble. <laughs> yeah. Like That Werder Bremen side is now like I mean, you, really good. Well, you did at. it with me with the sport, didn't you? It? it took yeah. me two seasons to take them in the end. Yeah, they went so, unbeaten for a whole year. They did yeah. better when, without me there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, let's simulate this season and see what happens because there's going to be a very interesting time, I guess.
Dad's main quest of winning the UEFA Cup this year was off to a great start in the group stage, as he waltzed on through and topped the group, winning all six games and having a huge goal difference. However, my Bayern Munich side was struggling in the Bundesliga, dropping silly points here and there, including to my local rivals 1860 Munich in the 95th minute. In the Champions League, we were surprisingly doing quite well though. But with a couple of losses early on and some bad draws in the Bundesliga, we unfortunately aren't top of the league going into January. Dad got some more transfer business done in January though, bringing in his old mate Michael Balak from Benfica and after selling a couple of players for £40 million funded enough to bring in Vincent Company from Hamburg for a whopping £55 million. I've made no signings and just trusted my players to have a much better second half of the season, which also carried into the Champions League and round by round we looked stronger and stronger and got a second leg away from reaching the final, potentially against Benfica. And in the second leg itself, we destroyed Barcelona 3-0 to send us through to the Champions League final to face Benfica who defeated Lyon 4-2 on aggregate and will have their third final in a row. Alright, finally I've got, I've got the, uh, the Bundesliga in the back. Uh, it wasn't even Werder Bremen who caused me trouble. It was actually Andre Frankfurt, yeah. uh, who at one point were, uh, caused me to slip down into second place and were, were on my tail throughout the rest of the season. But they got the job done, six points. It all yeah. seems to be a thing with Bayern. We've noticed that with a couple of seasons. And they start very poorly and then all of a sudden they're a bit like Man City at the moment, and they? Yeah. they just sort of kick in yeah. and gone. Have a second gear at the end of uh, yeah. in, in, the, in the second half of the season, really. Uh, but yeah, so Werder Bremen actually dropped down into third place. So without me, they didn't do that well, Ronald Koeman, unfortunately. There's a lot of Dutch managers who take our job, by yeah, the way. Is, yeah. Uh, so, I mean, Germany for me is now complete. I only lost two games, Nuremberg oh, and Hertha. I done with you being there at least one more season, really. Yeah. Uh, Drew Six couldn't even beat Frankfurt. I'm just doing the favours, and I only conceded 23 goals, but so did they. But they only scored 69, and that's a naughty number, so they deserve to finish in second place. Uh, so, 84 points, good tally in the end. Look at Miroslav closer and Luka Tony. The two strikers I wanted to use, they both finish at the top there. Average rating was dominated by my three players there and two assisters as well. So that's great. I'm really happy with that. It means I can get it over and done with. But as we know, I had an incredible run in the Champions League and I got all the way to the final to face Dad's former team, Benfica, in the final, who have made three finals in a row now. Brilliant, eh? but didn't win three in a row. Come on, Champions League in the bag as well. What a season that I've had here at Bayern Munich. In one, Miroslav Klose, I absolutely love the bloke. Yeah. Uh, he is now best man at my next wedding. Um, <laughs> whether I have one or not, he is gonna be the best man. Four goals in the final, what a guy. That's insane, but fair play to Benfica. Oh, because brilliant. Rafa Benitez has gone there after yeah. you. <laughs> Rafa Benitez. <laughs> <laughs> uh, straight after and took him to a league title yeah so he kept on winning the league title he also won three cups fair play to him so he won the portuguese cup and the super Taka, but he could not win the champions league unfortunately i managed to do that so he went there and let him down yeah he so let, he let me down badly i, could, I know what not happened winning that one. the bella gutman curse ended and then when omega dad left there was some turmoil and he said for as long as i live <laughs> Never. The Omega Dad curse never. on Benfica. You will <laughs> never win a European final again. Don't you put that one on me. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine. So let's have a look then. My round of 16. Oh, actually, let's go to the group stage because I had an interesting group, actually, to be fair. So uh, I actually topped the group. I did not lose. I beat Real Madrid in one game and drew away from home against them. So that's good. Finished three points above them there. Uh, in the round of 16, I knocked out Arsenal 8-4. After, and I won 6-0 in the second leg, so fair play. That was a, a trigger. There's a lot of goals going on around here. Benfica knocked out Frankfurt in the yeah. Champions League in their route. Uh, Quarter final, then they knocked out Valencia, the, the, the UEFA Cup holders. Yeah. I knocked it. out Liverpool, which is a big win. That's when Real Madrid were eliminated and Werder Bremen were eliminated by Barcelona. Mm. Into the semi final, knocked out Barcelona 3 0 on aggregate. Benfica knocked out Leon into the final against me. So there we go. The past winners now. The two in a row from Benfica has been stopped thanks to my Bayern Munich side. But that's my job done. Yeah. I don't have to stay around. I've got no reason to stick around in, uh, in Munich now in Germany. So. I'm more than happy. I mean, I lost in the semi-final of the DFB Pokal. Couldn't get the treble over the line. That's a shame, really, against Hamburg. Uh, but never mind. 
Uh, Schalke went on and beat Hamburg in that final. There we go. Lovely stuff. Well done. Goals wise, just have a quick look. Mirosav Close got 46 in 46 games, but 43 starts. Luca Toni got 27. Uh, it was I had a great time there. And uh, the next manager will have 93 million pounds to make that side even better. We'll have a look at jobs in a minute, but for now, let's see what damage Dad has done in Italy with his Roma side. I was doing well, so well to for half a season until January, as yeah. you can see in the Syria. Past positions. AC Milan, who won it, were never top until the final two days of the season. Yeah. Dad, you were top until January. After a brief spell in second place, you were top for over half the season. I went on a really good run, and then after the January transfer window, I just don't know what happened. I don't know whether I took an injury or something like that, a couple of injuries. Yeah. But I just dropped off, and I just couldn't couldn't catch it back again. Couldn't recover it? No. Nope. Maybe too many games in a row or something yeah, like that? Yeah, I don't know. I just, so disappointed. I mean, let's dive a little bit more into it. Vucinic got 23 goals there. And Tommaso Rocci actually was the top scorer of the league. He looks very good. Uh, Delgado had your highest assist. He also had the highest amount of um, average rating and assist, sorry. Uh, and Vucinic got the third highest man of the match. Uh, the good news is, if you do stick around in, in Rome, yep. uh, you're in the UEFA Cup again next year. Oh, it's done me a big favour. Yeah. But that little bit of a bad run at the end of the season done me a little bit of a favour, dropped me into that again, so I've got a second season out of it. So. Yeah. Uh, so you've got another crack at that. That's that's a positive. But as we've seen on this, quarter-final of the UEFA Cup to Palermo. Now, Palermo are in your league. They finish below you yeah. in sixth place. Um, but the way you went out is poor. Because you lost 5-0 in the five first nil away leg. From I, I, I honestly, when I drew against them, I thought, ideal, they're in my league, I know what they're like, I, I, I could beat them quite comfortably. Yeah. And I lost 5-0 away. I and mean, as it was... I, I won 3 no home, but damage done. Yeah, as it was, uh, AC Milan beat Sporting in that semi-final. Man City beat Palermo. So it was a final between Man City and AC Milan, and AC Milan actually won that as well. Yeah, so they've done, they done the, uh, Europe, the UEFA Cup and the league. Yeah, but... They also were the team that knocked you out of the Coppa Italia yeah. on penalties to go and face Lazio in the final. And guess what? they done the treble. Yeah, they've done me badly this season. Really badly. I mean, they done Lazio at the Olimpico. Yeah. So that's that's hard, uh, which would have been amazing if you did reach the final. Yeah. Roma Lazio. <laughs> In the in the Coppa Italia final, I bet that doesn't happen very often. No. So that would have been uh, that would have been great for you. But I mean, it was so close to being such a good year for me. Yeah, I mean, let's let's look I where know. it all went wrong. We got because uh, I love looking in your turmoil. Um, <laughs> so up to January, so this half of the season here was great. You yeah. lost a uh, big loss there to Juventus, but that ain't too bad. Another loss there to Inter Milan uh, and and Fiorentina, so that ain't too bad. But from February onwards. There's a lot more. Yeah. Uh, but there's also more games. And I think that's maybe the trouble because you knocked out Manchester City, uh, Manchester United sorry, in the yeah. in the UEFA Cup there. Uh, a draw at Old Trafford, win at the Olympico. So, good result there. You then got battered by Lazio 4-0. Yeah. I mean, I think there was at one stage there, I, I think that loss, I, I lost one to Juventus. Um, I think I was about eight points clear then or something like that. Yeah. So, you know, even though I lost the game and I recovered from it quickly, I thought, that ain't too bad. You've got to expect to lose now and again, but then all of a sudden that was a lost, a lost, a yeah. draw, a lost. And that the points I system I the points ahead that I was just totally lost it. Yeah. Uh, and that's a bad error there for yeah. you. Yeah. Those two games or three games there, draw Atlanta. It's, lose, it's almost Napoli. like the the loss on penalties were too much to kick in the teeth. Yeah. Because as you can see then, you then drew to Juve and then two big losses to Atalanta and Napoli. And let me tell you, Napoli isn't like this year's Napoli. No. That team is awful. Yeah. This is their best player. Their team is not great. They finished in 14th place. So that's a game that you should be winning at home oh, 100%. easily. 100%. Atalanta, the same. They're a mid table side. They're not the yeah. Atalanta that we know and love right now. Uh, so, few few bad Chucked losses. It away. Chucked yeah. it away. But, Such a shame as well. Uh, I, I felt I had the team to win the year, uh, especially the UEFA Euro, Euro, uh, Euro, Euro Cup. Yeah. But he got another year of Totti, and that's the main thing for you. Yeah. He got another year of Totti. Uh, 33 goals for Vucinic, who's not bad at all. That's a really good uh, return. But that, I think, is obviously a great signing from you. And Delgado with 26 goals and 20 assists. Yeah. Absolutely incredible there. Um, 
obviously we, we you brought in Balak halfway through the season. He's been very good for you as well. That, that's what that was the other thing as well. Bringing Balak in it in January, I thought, and company too. Yeah, I just thought, especially company in because I brought him in for the left sided defence and off right side defence. Um, yeah, yeah. So we, I mean, he just yeah, but he he actually played on the left side for me. Oh, right, okay, the yeah. right side player was even better. Yeah, Max says yeah. So. Um, I just felt I really sort of sewn it up even more, and Balak in the in the middle of the, of the midfield as well. I thought I've just made my, my sort of team solid now. Yeah, and I was quite confident of going on for the next yeah three four months. Yeah, to that point, you were it, top run away with it, and it dived off the yeah. opposite way. So, uh, but next year's transfer budget twenty eight million pounds. Should you decide to stick around? Yeah. However, job wise, right now, of course, I will be looking to leave. Is there anything really available? Well. Not really, unless you go to Valencia for me. Now, Valencia, of course, they were in the Champions League because they won the UEFA Cup. But it's a very aging team. If you have a look by age and sort by age, a lot of their best players, I mean, go all the way down to here, that's all of their players who are 30 and above. That's brilliant for me. That's a lot of money for me now. It's all of them. Yeah. <laughs> But the trouble is, you go there knowing full well you're not going to win the league within a couple of seasons. So that's a full rebuild and a half, really. Yeah, definitely, yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah, they've got Raul Abiol, who's, who, who's great. But even their like their main talisman, David Villa, he prides his is 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 his thing on pace. That's not going to stick around when you get to no. 33, 34. So unless you do you're something not, within you're two not going to get anybody years, to buy him for that price, no. But so no. he's not really worth that. No. So I'm I'm kind of like that with with that job at the minute. I don't know whether to take it or not, or go for it or not. Uh, they've got 80 million pound in the transfer budget, or see who takes my job and see what the manager Mary Garam really does for me in that season. However, there's a couple of trophies to add to a trophy cabinet and thankfully, it's mine. Let's have a look. Yes, nothing for Dad to add this season after his new move to Rome, but a very unexpected season for myself, snagging that Champions League win as well as the Bundesliga. Meaning once again, I jump ahead of Dad in Glory Hunter with two nations now complete and on the hunt for a new job. It's time for me to resign as the Bayern Munich manager after just one season of success. But right now, I don't fancy any of the jobs available. Dad started this summer with a bit of a clear out, accepting bids for lots of his players, as well as signing the Brazilian attacker Hulk, which is one of Dad's all-time favourite players from Blackburn Rovers. Valencia are in contact about an interview and they have £66 million in the transfer budget, but I'm still so unsure about the age of their team, so I politely declined. The former Bayern Munich boss, who is now unemployed, actually took my old job back in Munich. And the Atletico Madrid job came along, as well as a lot of international roles. But again, it's a very aging squad that is currently already struggling in La Liga to keep up with Pride Barcelona and Real Madrid sides. But then I received an abundance of offers. However, they were all international jobs, and that's not part of our glory hunter journey. More trouble for Dad, though, as he still hasn't quite learned the rules of Italy's non-EU transfers. And he had to sell more starting players to find some replacement signings. Dad, the Champions League winner can't get a job right now. I could do with you being out for a whole season. That'd be brilliant. Oh, for that'd me. be awful. <laughs> there was a couple that came up when well, there. Obviously, yeah. the Valencia they offered me a job, uh, well, a job interview. Uh, declined that for the reasons that I mentioned in the last season. The team's aging, and I don't feel like I can go to Spain and cause enough chaos to win the league and cup within three years the Barcelona and Real Madrid team's too good yeah and I'd need a little bit longer to do that and I think by the time I get to the third year that's when the Valencia team would start to drop mm. so I declined Atletico Madrid exactly the same oh yeah even were, worse they were worse, yeah, they were worse. <laughs> yeah, age wise I could see why you didn't go there backs. yeah uh, international jobs there was loads that come about that was unbelievable wouldn't it I mean they, they were, they were so just, many offered me the job just outright there didn't have to interview no. yeah it's like, do you want it? No. No. <laughs> There's so many. I mean, going elsewhere, we, we can have a look. Uh, England manager is now Antonio Conte, but he left Palermo two years ago, and that's the trouble I was having. Yeah. Every international job that came about was taken by a manager who wasn't at a club. Who went to Bayern Munich is... Omar Hitzfeld. What happened to him? Well, he was the guy who was sacked from Valencia in the first place. <laughs> yeah. So he almost did a job swap, but that's another problem I had. He didn't leave anybody uh, other than Valencia. So that's the trouble I've been having, really. And uh, I, I'm now, of course, without a job. While I am here, uh, because I think it is quite interesting to have a look at, just before it happens next, this is the Ballon d'Or. Now, 
This is before I joined. Miroslav Klose won two of them. Carlos Tevez is the current Ballon d'Or holder. Uh, and David Villa won the very first season's Ballon d'Or. So we're always a year behind in the Ballon d'Or because it gets announced, I think, in the November. So one will be about to be announced. But, yeah, I know uh, people will be very interested to see uh, who won. I mean, even Canute finished in third place yeah. at Sevilla, which is quite impressive. But Miroslav Klose has won two. Carlos Tevez is the current holder. Anyway, enough about that. Dad and Roma. Well, what happened, Dad? That non-EU rule's funny, isn't it? Oh, I can't believe it. <clears throat> Let's have a look, shall we? <laughs> so, on the 1st of July, four players joined Dad. First off, we've got Robert Enker. Good goalkeeper. Good price as well. 35 years of age, so yep. age is not on his side. But He's a reserve keeper and the other one wanted to go, so I let yeah. him go and got this guy in, yeah. Then he signed Felipe from Benfica, Brazilian. Yeah. Oh no, don't panic. He has an Italian passport as well. His other nationality is Italian. I knew that. Dad didn't know that. <laughs> um, then he went to Porto and picked up Moraes, who is a non-EU player. Now, from what I understand, you can register one per season. And if you had one previously who weren't registered, which you did, which was the centre-back, which you couldn't register last season, that took a slot as well. Then you can register one per season, which was Moraes. So you did that. And that fills it, and then you went and signed Hulk. Yeah, and can't register him. Uh, this this goes back. This goes back to when I used to play football manager because uh, when I used to play, it was probably in the same year as what this one is actually. Because I always used to sign him. We spoke this time, before yeah. to me, and I loved this guy. And I couldn't. Well, he came up, and I went, Hulk Christ. I checked him and thought, Oh my God, he's brilliant. Look, look, at him. and he was thirty-five million as well, wasn't he? Yeah. And I just went, Bye, done, job done. And I'm and I'm sat back and then I'm looking at the best best of lemon. I'm thinking, oh no! And then it dawned on me then. <laughs> oh, he's and at Blackburn as well. Who you picked? I couldn't get him in the funny. team, man. So the main striker that I really wanted in my team that I felt was going to do me the job, I couldn't get in the team. No. And I thought with the with the two strikers I already had there, hand in coming in, I was going to play free up front, and that was going to be it. I was going to take this league apart then. <laughs> And it took me apart then. <laughs> oh, which then meant you tried to decimate your own team. Yeah. And look at all of these players who are non-EU players who you've been selling. So yeah. Senior for 45 million, Vucinic for 22 million, and Juan to Inter, which obviously you can't do because that doesn't mean that they uh, have left no. the Serie A. Even I know those rules uh, for eight million pound there. So you actually sold 98 million pounds worth of players. So many players went out. Uh, and then you kind of had to start backtracking. So you signed Julian Faubert for £33 million because obviously you sold your right back. You yeah. brought in a French right back knowing full well that that is EU. And we were, you were looking at countries like Croatia and going, is that non-EU? And I was going, well, back then it wasn't. <laughs> Just, they was, are now, but the, I don't know whether it counts now. That was the problem, wasn't it? We, we, it if, doesn't if tell you, think, you when you no, go to sign them. You look at it now and you think, they're in the European market now. Were they then? And yeah. Went, we don't know. And we were like, oh, no. And I'm yeah. When did they join the EU? <laughs> and I was even looking up. It's like 2014. Technically, we're in 2014. <laughs> but the game or the database would not predict that they would move no. to, not to, to EU. I don't know how in-depth the database is. And the worst Turkey thing was it, another one, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, it was. Yeah. The worst thing about it as well, all the players that I really wanted to buy, we weren't sure about, or they were Brazilian, mainly Brazilians. Yeah. I could have bought loads of Brazilian players. Well, you did. <laughs> you bought three. <laughs> you bought three last season. You brought six in two years. <laughs> oh, no. Even for birds laughing what, at you. I, I'm going to be glad now when I'm out of it. Yeah. <laughs> Just so so relaxing you're stuck again. with the European nations that yeah. you know, and this is a great player, if I'm yeah. honest. Andre Pierre Gijnac, I absolutely love this guy. He's still knocking about now. Yeah. And he's still a quality player. Uh, what a striker! Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I mean, I got rid of I got rid of a striker I really didn't want to get rid of because I was trying to get those European spaces back yeah. again. So, and with I still couldn't get Hulk in, so I had to go and get this guy in the end. So I was pleased I got him. It was a good signing. He's fantastic. I, yeah, and, and I and I'm really looking forward to the next season when I get Hulk back yeah. <laughs> to be in the front with him. I mean, he doesn't so, really have any weaknesses to be honest. Here. Look no. at those physicals. Yeah, absolutely incredible to be honest. 26 years of age. £40 million, pound. you got him very late in the window. He'd already got a goal this season for Lons. He's only playing in the in, uh, Lons in the French season, but 22 goals last season in 30? It's not bad at all. Yeah, good so, uh, as, as horrible as it is that you can't play Hulk, you've got Andre Pierre Gijnac. Yeah. So, there we go. Best 11. This is a new tactic, Dad, obviously. You've you've adapted it slightly for a, a shadow striker. Yeah. Uh, and this is what it looks like. So, you've taken off the left-hand side 
and gone for more of a middle approach there well, with a shallow strike. I don't play wingers very often, do I? Especially two wingers. I don't mind playing the odd one winger, but I very rarely play two wingers. Yeah. Right? So I like I liked it to be more action inside the 18 yard box. So that's what I went for. Uh, good thing is now you can register David Browse. He's registered yeah. after sitting on the bench last season, not being able to do anything. Zero appearances so far for nine million. Uh, I mean that's what made go. it worse. I only brought him in as a reserve centre back as well, and as you can see, he is my reserve centre back. Yeah. So um, I could have done with not having him in the team and having Oak no, in the team. Yeah. Really, so there we go. Oh, well. Company slips on the right hand side, which yeah. is interesting. Even though you brought in Fulbert, but I mean, Company has perfect attributes to go to do that other yeah. than outside of the crossing, I guess, and even gets forward whenever possible in this database with I mean, seventeen. That, that, that off gives the ball. me two world class uh, centre back and a right back. Yeah. So. Yeah, definitely, yeah. Good stuff. Okay. Uh, well, ignore the fact that Hulk goes in there. He can't play. Uh, yeah. So it would be Gish that by the looks of it, uh, alongside Delgado. So schedule so far, Dad. How have you been getting on? I mean, it hasn't been too detrimental to your season. I have played really, four so far. I hadn't really played anybody. That That's was the thing, wasn't it? You know, yeah. I, was, I, was, I was still trying to get Hulk in at the time and, you know, and selling players quickly before the transfer window to try and get him in. I just couldn't get him in, but I was lucky enough. I wasn't playing anybody big, so I got away with it. Yeah. So I got hope now that I got my striker back in. I got a settled side, and I can go for it and concentrate and go for it now. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the UEFA Cup. You got Feyenoord, Braga, and Stone Gratz. Yeah. Should go through. That I'm feeling. Nice I'm easily. feeling like I'm still should be one of the favourites as well for that. So yeah, that's what I'm going for. Yeah, I mean, in there is Palermo, of course, who knocked you out last season. Ajax again, Schalke, uh, who won the the German Cup. Uh, Frankfurt, who was second in Germany, Everton are knocking around. PSG are even in there yeah. uh, with Atletico Madrid. Now this is before PSG ever got the money. Uh, we can actually see their finances, but they yeah, that's uh, they've managed to climb up into the UEFA Cup. So I need a job. Dad has a job to do, the Italian job, in fact. So let's see what happens this season. Once again, Dad's Roma team has been struggling in the Serie A. Not the type of league winning form he was really hoping for. And a loss to rivals Lazio isn't going to be great who are also top of the league right now. Meanwhile, Carlo Ancelotti's job at Barcelona was insecure, so I declared interest. Not much came of it, but eventually the severe job popped up and with them in 11th place, I decided to apply. They very quickly gave me an interview as well. And they were even faster to respond to offer me the job and I immediately jumped on a plane to Sevilla to begin my new role. This was the team who had just beaten the champions Real Madrid recently, which led to La Liga being topped by Espanyol and Zaragoza by New Year. My team as well had some fantastic players, such as Ruben up front and Navas going forward, with some recognisable names at the back, including Manuel Neuer in goal. And the first thing that I did was bring in Americ Laporte, who is just 18 years old from Bilbao, for £25 million to be my future starting centre-back. In January, Dab was given even more funds to spend too, and even switched his tactic up to stop being so overcrowded on the right-hand side of the pitch. My January transfer window, I spent more money to make this squad my own, bringing in Willian as a young attacking midfielder from Santos, Big Leo from my old side Bremen for £20 million, and Andreas Guardado for a whopping £68 million. But this was all funded thanks to selling a number of squad players that I was happy to let go across Europe. Dad also sold a few more players and went big on buying two new talents in the Romanian Radu at the back on the left-hand side of defence, and the attacking midfielder Hatem Ben Arthur for a whopping total of £131 million between the two of them. And although Dad's league form for Roma wasn't great, he topped his UEFA Cup group and does find himself in the semi-final of the Coppa Italia with Inter Milan to play to potentially face AC in the final. Meanwhile, I had pulled Sevilla back to 8th place and Zaragoza was still top of the league, but I was in the Champions League with Benfica to face next and I was already knocked out of the Coppa del Rey. And after a draw with Inter Milan, in the first leg, Dad's Roma team was on fire in the second of the Coppa Italia with two quick fire goals from the new French signing Hatem Ben Arthur. Inter Milan did respond but couldn't quite get the two goals they needed as they only found one consolation through a young Brazilian called Neymar, who at just 21 has burst onto the scene recently after signing from Inter Milan a few seasons ago from Santos. But Dad was in the final with only AC Milan who stood in his way from another trophy. And on the cup final day, playing at the home of Roma, the Stadio Olimpico, it was once again a fantastic performance from Ben Arthur and the rest of the Roma side as they went on to lift the Coppa Italia with a 2-1 victory over AC Milan to keep the pressure on for Glory Hunter. What a fair play, Dad. Got it. That's, a trophy in the bag for that's, you. that's the hardest one in Italy, I think. 
So, uh, yeah, I've got it. I'm happy with that. Change the tactics seem to work halfway through the yeah, season. Yeah, I, I did a little bit. Um, it was mainly because Totti was playing yeah. more than my other striker. And um, so I just sort of just tweaked the, the, the front two and moved one from one side to the other side yeah. to allow the winger for more room to come in. Tactical genius, isn't he? <laughs> uh, I mean, you overcame a great AC Milan team. Obviously, they've got the likes of Gattuso around still, Pirlo at age 34, Ashley Cole is in the team, yeah. Kaka is still there, as well as Cristiano Ronaldo and Karim Benzema. It's a so result it's, than I thought it was. <laughs> it's like a Real Madrid team of, yeah. of back then with those three up there. So, yeah, they've got a great team and you managed to, to obviously overcome them. So, for well done. Well done for that. Uh, but how did you get on in the rest of the campaign? Well, Dad's Roma finishing fourth place. Yeah. I, I mean, if you go into the games I lost, I lost seven games. Um, I lost some silly games I shouldn't be losing against, really. Catania. I mean, Lazio, yeah, you can take. I lost both games against Lazio. Look, I can take that. Yeah, they stuffed the league but, as well. Eight points they won the league by. But the other two teams ab above me didn't beat me, look. Yeah. So I'm disappointed with that. Uh, AC Milan actually only lost two games across the season. But yeah. They drew 13, two against you. Yeah. So that's where they come unstuck oh, really yeah. that because show what sort of a good side they were they've got a great team yeah i mean obviously inter's got a good team they're down in seventh place yeah. with, with the likes of zlatan ibrahimovic up front so yeah they're, they're struggling at the minute um there's some interesting stuff that's happening in, in in italy right now it's going to make that season next season very hard because i already know ac milan are a very very good side so. yeah Lazio are going to stay there as well. Palermo's good. Who's, they've yeah. got Barzagli right now. They've got some good players. So it's going to make that, that next season going to be very, very hard, I think. Yeah, I think so. Uh, in the European competition, UEFA Cup, quarter-final exit oh, to Atletico Madrid. I lost the away game again and I just couldn't catch it again. I'm yeah. just so disappointed with that because I thought I, I really wanted to get this cup in the bag. Yeah, uh, you beat Feyenoord in the round of 16, the knockout player for you didn't play in. Uh, the group stage, you did finish top against Feyenoord, uh, unbeaten yeah. in that. Uh, in the final, though, Olympic Lyonnais won yeah. on penalties against yeah. Atletico Madrid in yeah. a boring nil-nil. Yeah, I think I, I feel really if I beat Atletico Madrid, I would have gone all the way and won that one. Yeah, it was a tough one. Okay. Lost that one. What about Sevilla? How did I get... Well, let's actually, let's have a look at your goals and everything first. You've got 30 goals for Delgado. Gijnak did well once you started to play him. Yeah. 15 and 32 there. Mancini with 13 and 20. So they've got a lot of goals in between them. Ben Arthur come halfway through the season. Yeah. Uh, picked up 12 goals and 6 assists in his 23 I mean, starts. you look at Totti there. Totti's played 24 games. Yeah. And he started most of them at the beginning of the season. He kept on... Uh, pushing my, my other striker out so he also bows out and is yeah. retiring finally yeah a legend of the club a legend of italian football a legend I mean, of world I've, football i've got a hell of a replacement for him haven't i i've got hope coming in <laughs> you hope <laughs> you hope he comes in he should be coming in now shouldn't he i should uh, have a space for well, him now <laughs> that's, that's a season out on the bench doing absolutely nothing twiddling his thumbs yeah so yeah maybe he comes in and uh and, and takes his team even further okay your transfer budget, I don't think we've been given transfer budgets yet because we're still only at 21st May. You've got £16 million left, which I think is what you had in January anyway yeah. uh, when you decided that was it. So maybe you, you'll have a little bit more transfer budget. Uh, let's have a look at my severe side. How did I get on? Well, I finished in third place. Rescue job yeah. turned out to be a very good season. Uh, considering very I took them over, they were 10th, yeah. I think. To take them all the I way to third well, place. You're one point behind Barcelona. Yeah. So very good. Yeah. I mean, nine points behind Real Madrid. They got a cracking team. Oh, I mean, halfway through the it, season. I mean, yeah. Halfway through the season, it was Espanyol and Zaragoza. Yeah, them two first dropped off, didn't they? That was a surprise, really. I so, mean, to, to see Real Madrid win the league and lose six games, that's very rare. Yeah, yeah. That's annoying. One of them was against me as well, which I I, I think they beat they beat uh, they beat Real Madrid the day I was offered the job. Yeah. So I can't claim that I did that. It wasn't my tactical now who managed to to beat Real Madrid. Um, but yeah, they, they've uh, they've done very well. I lost seven games until one of them was against Real Madrid, but none against Barcelona. I only drew against Barcelona and I actually beat them in one of the games 5-1 as well. Uh, that was I think it was one of my first games. So a good season and Marco Rubin is the top scorer of the league. He's a great player for me. Uh, Considering, obviously, they've got the likes of Higuain and Fred, who's two 
cracking strikers there right now. Uh, the manager of Real Madrid is still Bernd Schuster. I'm guessing he plays some kind of 4-4-2. He does. So you can see how good their team is there with the likes of Robin Fernandes. Pepe's at the back still. He's uh, obviously quite young at 30. Marcelo is in there as well. So they got a, a great team um, and still got Raul around. Yeah. Raul is still knocking around. I love Raul. So it's going to be hard to, to cap catch them but just from that one season alone my my confidence is is thriving right now yeah i mean your confidence is up here my confidence is down here at the moment yeah. you know i've had two seasons at that that uefa cup and two seasons at the league and i've missed out but i can see the routines being really good behind yeah. me now so and i'm not in the uefa cup anymore i'm in the Champions no. league now yeah so I've missed, I've missed two good chances to win that cup. Mm. uh let's have a look at my cup competitions how did i get on Round fourth round by Deputy was an early exit for me and quarter final of the Champions League, which of course I've already penciled off yeah. to Manchester United. Uh, holders was by Munich. It's now going to be between Barcelona and Arsenal who have made it to the final this season. So we're going to have a, a new winner of the Champions League. Will it be Arsenal? Uh, Liverpool were knocked out as well. I mean, it was, could have been an all English final there. Yeah. It just goes to show how powerful England are right now. None of us have even come anywhere close to. Uh, get into the Premier League right no. now. I don't even think any good jobs have come up that no, we've seen. Been. No. Uh, so that makes it interesting for the future seasons. Again, I don't think I have my trans budget. I've still got £27 million, which I think I ended January with. Uh, but we'll see what happens. My goals, 31 for Marco Rubin, 12 and 18 from Jesus Navas, who's probably my best player right now. Um, really good. Really happy with Willian coming in halfway through the season, getting 11 and 3 from centre mid. That's quite impressive, to be fair. Uh, so I might look to probably get rid of Julio Baptista because he's worth a lot of money and 31. So I could cash in, bring somebody better in, yeah. see what happens. I might actually look to change this kind of, kind of formation uh, to, to suit maybe more of an attacking thing and really go at Real Madrid at the top there because Gardado has come in and he's going to cause some trouble as well. So we'll see, I guess. If we were to consider moving jobs. Now, again, we're still quite early on. They don't tend to sack managers because of league performances this early. But there is a few options. Valencia, Villa, or Aston Villa and Schalke. Yeah, we've seen so, the interesting thing there was Josie Marino's the favourite Valencia job, didn't we? Yeah, which is a bit strange considering he is the Manchester United manager. Now, he did finish in fourth place. It's not like they're doing bad. Arsenal were winners. Only 100 points, only losing two games there. So that does make it, you know, quite interesting, intriguing that he is so far off the that he might even consider moving. Um, maybe we'll just take a look at the other leagues what, what, that we're not in to see what happened. I mean, Bayern Munich won it again. Werder Bremen actually came back look, yeah. into second place there. Uh, that's a league that you still need to go to. The French League, which we aren't considering as part of Glory Hunter. Lyon is still winning that. PSG are in third though, so they're gradually coming into they're it. They're gradually coming into it. And Benfica Euro side oh. is still winning Portugal. But look how close it is in yeah. Portugal as well with Porto and lost Sporting. one game as well. Who was that against? Uh, Porto. Porto, yeah. And the other two only lost two yeah. against each other. No, Amadora oh. came in. Estrella came in and beat Porto in one game. So it's tight everywhere else in the world of Glory Hunter. But I think I'm happy to stay put this season. Now that I've found a new club in Sevilla who took me on halfway through, I don't want another unemployed uh, start because that's always I'm, dodgy. I'm looking at that. I'm thinking to myself, a dream job now would be Spurs as a Saturday manager because they're in the UEFA Cup as well. So oh, Why would you want to go to that trash? <laughs> uh, they got Gordon Strachan in at the minute. So how long has he been there? Two years. Ooh. He's been there two years. Hasn't won anything yet. No. So whether you want to stay the only, there. The only problem is, is um, Matt Dawson. Oh, I don't know. My, yeah, Michael, Michael Dawson. Dawson sorry, yeah. yeah, yeah. I don't like him on the the, the, the sports <laughs> channels right now. He bores me, so that may be a reason. And Lady King is 32 and very injury prone, and yeah. that's that's like their two best players right now. So you'll have a bit of a rebuild going on. But there we go. There is a trophy to add to a trophy cabinet, and it's an Italian one. 
Yes, congratulations, Omega Dad, on winning the Coppa Italia. This is a great trophy to win in just the second season of being in Rome to add to his glory hunter cabinet. Back breathing down my neck with just one trophy less than I currently have won, and on to season number seven. First bit of action for me is simply activating the David Luiz loan to buy fee, which will unfortunately eat up most of my budget. But Dad is on a quest to buy some more goal scorers. Starting with an old signing of mine that I brought in at Sporting, Mario Gomez who caused Dad a lot of trouble in Portugal, and now Dad's hoping he can do the same for him in Italy. He also picked up a veteran in the form of Nicolas Anelka to add some squad depth. And that's to replace the retiring Francisco Totti after his legendary career. Dad is scrapping the wingers in his side and going for a more striker-heavy formation. While checking out the sport inside Dad was raiding, I also spotted a young Mohamed Salah, just aged 21 and already looking like an incredible talent. However, Dad had some questions that even I couldn't answer because he's trying to sell my race after the fact that Hulk for the second season now still cannot be registered into Dad's team and neither of us can understand why. But with that falling through, Dad's backup plan wasn't such a bad idea either. Well, <laughs> we still don't know why, but Hulk can't be registered again. For uh, another season. Yeah, w w I'm puzzled because you didn't buy anybody. Nope. That was non-EU. Obviously, the Ben Arthur deal was the last one. Uh, you sure. did sell anybody, yeah, but I I always thought like it would carry on to next season. That's yeah. my understanding, and then he'd just be able to be registered. Yeah, that's what I thought. So no, nope, he's not in. So no idea why. <sighs> I'm like I'd rather leave one. Now. <laughs> just leave. but Hulk for another season cannot be used. Yeah, <laughs> I had such big plans for what my formation was going to be this time, and he was a big part of it. As yeah. you can see, with a striker like that, you've got to have him in your team, in you so. I am so disappointed. Well, it allowed you to pivot elsewhere. Yeah. Uh, it did mean that you had to spend money in places where maybe you wouldn't have spent it beforehand. No, I would have done though. No. But there we go. You've bought in three other strikers. Uh, Anelka as the first one. He's de he was mainly going to... When I thought Hulk was in the team, I, for a freebie, he, he was like, right, that's a reserve striker for me. Yeah. I couldn't ask for a better than that. No. Nope. For a freebie, ideal. Uh, Mario Gomez from Sporting, £25 million, pound, but we know yeah. the damage that he can cause. He caused you a lot of trouble, didn't he, when, yeah, uh, did, yeah. at Sporting when I was there. I mean, 24 goals in that second season, 26 in the season after, and those were like unbeaten seasons, I think, under under Louis van Gaal. So yeah. he is absolutely incredible. And then finally, Didier Dropper, uh, who growing up I hated, yeah. but now I very much appreciate oh, how good legend. he really is. Yeah, really good. Thoroughly enjoyed watching him play for Chelsea in the Premier League. Yeah, absolutely brilliant. But um, yeah, I've got this guy in. So the tactic that I was going to play, I can play now, and I know I've got two very good backups, Backups, backups for my three struggles that I'm playing. And Hulk. And Hulk. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, you've gone for a three up front. Gomez, Drogba, and yeah. Delgado is your I mean, starting My, my midfield down. was really good, and I felt that my, my defence was really good as well. I couldn't I couldn't improve on it, so I just thought, right, I'm just going to go full out. I'm just going to attack this league and really go for it. Um, so the players that I've got in, I feel that I'm still strong enough to do it. Yeah. I mean, Ben Arthur as well, just sat there in behind him as well. Oh, what a shadow strike we'd have behind him as well. Yeah, he's already kicked off the season well as well. Yeah. Two goals and two assists and a player of the match. And so, obviously, he only came in during... January last season and all in the league he didn't look like he made an impact in the cup he won you the cup yeah definitely yeah so that was so a big sign I'm for you. still a little bit confident the only thing I was worried about was AC Milan yeah they had a hell of a side didn't they yeah we've seen Ronaldo and it and yeah Cole, yeah so um, and that was what was making me sort of like divert of whether to sort of like just think right I've got the cup in the bag shall I just go now I can't play Hulk shall I just leave and go to a different country and then come back and let AC Milan do the damage that they're going to do and then come back afterwards yeah um, but once but I got the players face in face them yeah but once I got the players in that I've, I've got I mean the Lazio result they were champions yeah brilliant result 3-1 at home yeah your so, rivals of course as my well biggest upset with this was De Rossi getting sent off in this game with yeah. knowing that my next game was against AC Milan AC Milan but I went to AC Milan and got a draw so I'm a little bit confident mate. yeah and it looks like you had the better part of the game really yeah. I mean uh, shots wise and on target you you controlled that uh, possession they had that's, a little bit more possession that's even though, isn't it sort of yeah. 50 47 or something yeah, so. but yeah I mean their, their team of Ronaldo Giladinho and Kaka as their front three with Perlo and Gattuso yeah. there yeah they got and a I great didn't team. have my best midfield playing so I felt that's a good result yeah went 1-0 down and pulled it back yeah so, Benzema on the bench yeah <laughs> 
<laughs> what is going on there? Benzema come off the bench. But Giardini was also really good. I mean, look how fantastic he is at 31. Yeah. So uh, an unbelievable ti- uh, unbelievable side, and you managed to, to pull away the draw from that. If I, if I could pull a miracle off and win this league this season and get out of here, I'll be out happy, man. Yeah. With all the problems that I've had. Oh, yeah, God, yeah. Uh, Champions League you got a very interesting draw down in the Champions League Werder yeah, Bremen my old side so Real Madrid Dean Makia two sides already in it so. yeah. I mean I'm not too worried about the Champions League so I'll, I'll be quite happy to go out of it yeah yeah drop into the uh, UEFA Cup that'd be even better wouldn't yeah, it yeah yeah so. Uh, so actually you know having Werder Bremen in there could yeah. cause you some troubles because they did alright last season I, mean, I, I, I do think thing. my team is strong enough to actually go through but it'd do me a favour if I didn't yeah I agree Okay, so that's what we got for you in Rome. What about in Seville? Well, let's take a look. Because I have had a bit of a quiet transfer window. Uh, really, I, I didn't want to do too much. I activated David Luiz's um, clause to, to make his deal permanent one. He was only on loan last season. And that was a lot, to be fair. That was 17 million out of the 22 million hours even given. When you see how much he's worth now, though. Uh, yeah. So but it's, tra- triple that time, it's always actually. one of those things that you sign them and you're like... I haven't gained anything. No. He was no. already here. Yeah. So that was a, a, almost like a bit of a downside, but I ended up selling a couple of players here, Fazio uh, and Capel, for a little bit of money, which gave me some more. And I actually found Mark andre Testegen for £2.5 million, pound, a new gen. Uh, he had a release clause in his contract. I activated it straight away, despite playing the whole of last season. Uh, he is now my number one goalkeeper. So he has taken Manuel Neuer out of the side. That takes some doing. It does, indeed. So the two German goalkeepers can fight it out between them. I also signed Asmir Begovic as a free transfer as a backup because I lost my backup. Uh, He retired. So now I don't think Begovic is going to be around much, but there we go. And then finally, I had a little bit of money spent left over, and I thought the CDM role is something I need a little bit of legs in. My player that's there right now, Yusuf Paulson, the halfback role, is 33, so I've bought in Raul Morelles, who, who is 30 himself, but he can also cover the positions in front. He's a bit of a set-piece taker too. All-rounder, I would say. Uh, for £20 million, that's not too bad. He's already played three games, come off the bench once, because Paulson was actually injured. So... Yeah, he's had a good career at Porto, but for £20 million, pounds, good deal. He was deal. a beast, he? good player. Yeah, well, I enjoyed uh, Raul Morales, definitely growing up. Uh, tactically, then, I was thinking exactly the same as what I had previous, because I managed to claw my way back to third place with this, and my best 11 does look very similar to what it did last season with Laporte and to Stegen joining the team that was there uh, at the end of last season as the starting 11. Uh, but it hasn't gone too well for me at the start of the season. No, 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 no. I beat Real Sosted 5-0 and Dad was like, oh, I can't believe you're going to go to Spain and then just whip the league. Uh, <laughs> then I lost to Real Madrid 3-2, which again, is not too bad to be fair. It's not when you go there, you know, away yeah. at the moment and, and pull off a result like that. You were quite close. So yeah. I'll, I'm, after that result, I was still worried because I thought you're still close to them. Yeah, it's 2-1 up at half yeah. time as well. Give it away a bit. Osasuna 4 0 at home, so it looks like this team, these types of teams, the bottom half of the teams, I should just be able to just plow my way through because Real Sociedad on this aren't very good right now. Uh, but then I lost to Mallorca, who doesn't have a great team. They do have some fantastic players, and Stefan Jovetic, who is there on loan from Benfica, so that was a good sign of them. And Arango is actually amazing, uh, but he's coming towards the end of his career. But yeah, I got beat 2 1. 92nd Our minute as well. favourite Spanish team as well. I no, know, it's annoying. My Champions League group though, Braga, Olympic Lyonnais, and Manchester United. So maybe Lyon's good enough to knock me down. Uh, they've got a good team. They've been causing some trouble in Europe. And they've got they've got no captain and no players. vice captain. No, that's <laughs> because uh, Bianca is a playable league. But there we go. So yeah, he's, uh, he's their best player right now. He's actually Italian as well. They are first in the French League the last couple of seasons. Maybe I'll drop into the UEFA Cup. And who really likes the UEFA Cup slash Europa League? Sevilla. Yeah, they do, don't they? So, let's see if I can drop into that, because that would be great. Because, if anything, I overachieved with them, to be honest, and yeah, then ended up shooting myself in the foot. Yeah, that first season, I thought, on though, yeah. you've already gone there and started off really well. And the team you've got is really good. Yes, it's a fantastic team, yeah. to be fair. I'm really happy. I mean, Ruben up front, uh, he hasn't scored that many uh, at the start of the season, I think it was like two in one game. Might I mean, you come across some really good strikers, didn't you? That you could have got in for your team and you decided not to because you pointless. wanted to stay in that formation. Didn't yeah, you? yeah. I thought, do I change and put another but another lad up front? But I thought, no, because I've already got Christian Benteke on the bench as well. Yeah. Um, he was there, you know, for, for when Ruben doesn't, well, can't play. So, all right. 
I think, Dad, you're going to be keeping an eye on the job this season. Yeah. I'm just going to be keeping an eye on what Barcelona <laughs> and Real Madrid do. So let's see what happens. Although there were lots of insecure jobs, not a lot was actually becoming available for Dad to apply for. And he actually might be tempted to stay, though, with Roma, as he's only three points off top and having a good run in Europe, too, with the wins against Real Madrid in the group stage. Meanwhile, in Spain, I'm not having such a great time with Sevilla. Currently in 7th place in La Liga, my schedule is patchy at best with lots of draws. The AC Milan job did appear in December, but the application process went so fast, we both missed it. And that's an AC Milan team down in 7th place in the Serie A, featuring some of the best attacking forces in the world with a slightly aging midfield and defence. In January though, I have managed to drag Sevilla back into the top 4 and we even dropped into the UEFA Cup and the board had kindly dropped another £30 million into my transfer budget. And I wasted no time bringing in a young Mario Gertz who had a very low release clause from Stuttgart. As well as picking up an absolute bargain from River Plate, the striker Radamal Falcao for just £6 million. Dad brought in one player during January and it's his new number one, Oscar Eustery, who is actually an Italian in his second nationality, don't panic. However, after a ropey January, losing to AC Milan and drawing to Lazio, Dad dropped out of the top four as the Serie A is currently being led by runaway leaders Palermo, who have yet to lose a game in the league. I started to pick up some bad form myself going into March and dropped down into fifth place. But after a first First leg 1-0 win in the UEFA Cup against PSV, we lost a second leg 3-1 and was eliminated from the competition. But my fate was sealed the game after at the new Camp after a 1-0 defeat. Because the Sevilla board have made their mind up to terminate my contract and sack me from the manager's position going into the international break. With Sevilla only sat in 6th place but with a game in hand and just 4 points off of 4th with a much easier run to the end of the season. Oh, I don't quite know whether I deserve that or not. No, I don't think you do. I am very shocked. I'm, 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 I think it's brilliant, but you don't deserve it. No. Uh, I think I was like fifth. I mean, yeah. after where they were last season, the reason why I got eliminated was, well, sacked because I got knocked out of the UEFA Cup by PSV. Yeah. Um, but That's all we can find, isn't it? Yeah, that, that must be the only reason yeah. because I was like fifth or fourth in the league and nowhere like... I mean, you've got a hell of a team as well. Yeah. So, no, I don't. I mean, Real, we know Real Madrid got into the UEFA Cup because I knocked them out in yes. the group stages and put them into it. Yeah. Um, but they were they, eliminated before me. They got, yeah, eliminated before you. That's what I was going to say. So, uh, Man um, City went on and won it, by the yeah. way. Uh, but yeah, so Real Madrid were eliminated team, in the knockout playoff round against Leverkusen after losing the second leg 5 0, 8 6 on aggregate. But I had knocked out Trubs on Spore despite losing 4 1 in the second leg 5 4. Yeah. So I went through. But the round of 16 is where I met my demise and PSV knocked me out 3-2 in that second leg. And they've got key player Afalai as one of the best players uh, in their team. But yeah, that's in the league, I think I was doing all right. Well, it looked like you was doing all right, didn't it? You were, yeah. I mean, At the time I was sacked, it was in fifth place. So that didn't do bad. No. Uh, so yeah, I, I don't really know. I don't really know whether I... Whether I why why they decided to sack me whether that's a little bit too harsh i guess obviously because i finished quite high in that that last season but there we go i'm with you on this one i know i'm laughing it's freaking just gonna believe it's it. awesome. <laughs> there I, you go i think i think there are faces when when we see it come up we were like yeah <laughs> <We've got laughs> absolutely bamboozled yeah. but anyway let's have a look at dad who is and by the way i haven't seen any jobs i want up until now there is a job. Let's have a look at what Dad's done anyway. With his Roma side, you finished in third place. I would. I mean, you, you look at. I lost nine games, and you look at the games that I lost. There were just some silly games in yeah. there. Really silly games. I Sienna, was yeah. Udinese, Torino, Torino as well. Yeah, and and that's what cost me. Yeah. In the end, I just couldn't. Every time I got close to Lazio, I lost two games in a row. I think. Yeah. Um, you ain't finishing 10th. Yeah, I know, yeah. I, my, my biggest surprise was how far AC Milan finished. They finished in 5th. Yeah. 
And they gave me a, a, a token in one of the league matches. They did, yeah. Or in the cup. One Palermo or two, yeah. really exceeded expectations. Yeah, they, did, yeah. they got some quality players in their they, team. I think they gave me a, a bit of an hammer in as well, one game. Yeah, with Manuel Pellegrini as manager by Zagli's 33 yeah. now. So I'm I don't know the, how long that will last. In the transfer window, I was still in it and I brought in a better keeper. And, yeah. I, and I, I was hoping then that just, just having a better keeper in the team would have just pushed me on. But I mean, I, I got I got within. Scored 110, yeah. conceded 46. That was yeah, your, so was, uh, your downfall. I was still conceding goals. That was the problem. I mean, I got to third. I think I was the closest I got to Lazio. Yeah. And then I was losing games then. then. So I'm a bit disappointed, a bit downhearted. I don't know what I'm going to do. Um, I don't know whether I've had enough of the Italian league. The only thing that's sort of making me think if Holt comes into the team for the third year in a row. <laughs> I mean, like I said, you know, I said he better be fit for the next season. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just sat on the... Just doing his nails for yeah. the last two years. Yeah. I've got all of my injury problems, boss. I'm ready to play. Yeah. Next season, boy, you're yeah, in. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Bloody hell. But yeah, I mean, this league is, there's an abundance of names going around, isn't it? Like, yeah. obviously, we've got Zlatan there with the top scorer again, I think. Delgado for you, finishing third place. Ronaldo at the highest average rate in the most amount of the matches for AC Milan. Uh, but your two boys came in second and third there with Aquilani getting the highest amount of assists in the league. So all of the names that you would uh, love to see in this database is all in the Italian Rossi, league. I mean, he, he, might, he might have cost me the league as well because he kept on getting bloody sick. Yeah, I mean, he had 19 oh, yellow, yellow cards. cards yeah. So he has been missing yeah. a lot of games. Uh, and he's obviously your best player. He was my best player, yeah. So whenever, I was, whenever he was out of the team... I won't get anybody in better than yeah. than what he could be. So he is always. Whenever I look at him, you just picture what the Romans used to look like. Yeah, he is definitely. It's yeah. De Rossi for yeah, me. Daniele De Rossi is what the Romans used to look <laughs> <Yeah>. like. <laughs> uh, so that's yeah. It's a, not a bad season by any stretch. Oh no, because in of where Italian you were. Yeah. yeah, there's some. Tri I mean, Palermo. I don't know how they managed to finish above no. you really, and and so well they actually nearly went for the title. Uh, Lazio were just in a league of their own. They've got. Uh, Delio Rossi is their manager and just they don't have like an amazing team they just no. got like okay players like that's their best player Barami yeah really I don't understand we've always said that the Italian league is an odd league to play in isn't it because you think you've got the best team in there then two or three teams just come back from nowhere yeah yeah and then they, they do you yeah so you've got to, you need a little bit of luck and I'm not having it I mean you've already won the Coppa Italia dad yeah, but how did you do this season as well as of course the Champions League not today Semi-final by Lazio, yeah. round of 16 by Manchester United. Yeah. But those two you'd already won and accomplished. You didn't really need to focus too much no. on that. Uh, the round of 16 knocked out by Man United 4-3 uh, after the group stage, as you mentioned, knocking out Real Madrid, which yeah. you didn't expect. But Werder Bremen finishing top. Yeah, I think they bloody good I think team. They beat me twice, didn't they? Yeah, yeah. Uh, who finishing third? In the Premier, in the yeah. Bundesliga, sorry. So Bayern Munich still won my old team as well. Uh, Dortmund in second place. They've jumped up quite a lot because they were nowhere near at one point, were they? Yeah. They were down in like yeah. in the depths of relegation. Uh, so they've done all right uh, in the Bundesliga. So yeah, uh, round of 16 was where you were eliminated. Quarterfinals uh, was where we said goodbye to Barcelona, AC Milan as well, and Arsenal. So uh, semi-final was Manchester United and Olympic Lyonnais. And in the final, to be played, is Manchester United and Lyon. Which, again, they keep showing up, yeah, Lyon. Lyon. They do, yeah. I mean, Man United is a team that knocked me out, so I'll, I'm happy with that. Really. Yeah. Still got Wayne Rooney, still got Real Fernando, Jose Mourinho as the manager. Uh, so it makes it quite interesting there. Now, Dad, your transfer budget for next season is only £8 million. But you keep buying players of instalments, which is obviously going to eat away yeah. at that. But now you've built a good team. You don't have to do too much to it. You just have to keep the players that you've got. And hopefully, as you say, <laughs> you might have Hulk come back. Uh, I mean, he's still not of you there, but and he's wanted. So if you did want to sell him, you might, yeah. might be enticed to. Uh, but maybe next season you can actually use him. Uh, but did he drop or was your top scorer with 24 goals at age yeah. 36? Proved to be a good sign at the end, didn't yeah. it? Yeah. I mean, he's started to decline a little bit, but he yeah. is 36 and he's still really good. Uh, so that's one of those things. Hassan Benafa, again, probably had the best... Best season out of your team, I'd say. Yeah, he had the highest average rating with a great amount of goals and assists. Uh, he's been a quality signing for you yeah. and wanted as well yeah. by Real Madrid. That's awkward, isn't it? Yeah. Well, usually when Real Madrid come calling. As is Gishnak, who also is wanted by Real Madrid. So I, mean, they I, are, I could they tell are a couple around. of players and build a, another side, but um, I just don't know about this league. It just really frustrates me. <laughs> <laughs> say the least. Okay, now, I mentioned that there is a job that I have 
been interested in, but it's only just popped up. And that is because nothing has literally come up until now into Milan. In the same league, they're in the UEFA Cup. They drop down, of course, to sixth place. But they do have Zlatan Ibrahimovic at age 32. Uh, who is one of the best players in the world. They've got a great team, £35 million in the transfer budget. This is very interesting. Balotelli on the bench as well. Ooh, this is tempting. Why is, why is it always in? Yeah. <laughs> Sami Kadira, Daniel Agger's in there. And, of course, they have a young Neymar Ooh, in the team. Dear, Coutinho dear. is bouncing around now, looking an amazing player as well. So they've got some quality talents, a little bit of money, it's just whether you take a chance and uh, whether I go for it. I think I'd be silly if I didn't apply for it. But I just know that you might also apply for it. <laughs> no one's seen the players. Yeah. I don't know. I think you've built a way too good of a team to move to Roma to, to enter. Yeah. Because that, that team, like, they have some good players. You have world-class players. Mm -hmm. It's just a system that you need to get to eventually uh, make them a, a, a league-winning side. But they're not very good financially. A lot of Italian leagues are now not. No. We've seen a bit of a change here already. Uh, Kivu, again, is is their captain and, and a great player, but coming towards the end of his career. So it's an interesting one. There's not a lot of other teams with not a lot of other options. Frankfurt, of course, is in Germany, which I've already completed. Um, and outside of that, Insecure Valencia seem to come up every single year. And I don't want to touch them because they're just getting older now. Yeah. I think the, the Spanish league for me is going to be off bounds for a while. I think I need to go to the Premier League and the Italian league before I decide to go back to the Spanish league. So for now, um, yeah, Inter Milan seems like a, a destination that I might apply for. Well, good luck then. Yeah. <laughs> Only time will tell, but for now, there is no trophies going into Glory Hunter cabinets. But let's remind ourselves where we're at. Yeah, so although Dad is building a phenomenal team, it's still not quite enough yet to pick up that Serie A League trophy. Whereas I'm now in a very precarious position on the job hunt before I can even think about what trophy is coming next. Shocking everyone, Leon won the Champions League. On the manager front, Rafa Benitez takes charge at Juventus, leaving his former side, Benfica. And although I had applied for Inter Milan, it was also a World Cup year, so there were more jobs to pop up. Three job interviews, though, all came on the same day, including Inter Milan and Valencia, which actually caught my eye again. Because Valencia's budget is £159 million, and although the likes of David Villa's 32, the rest of the team's pretty good. So good that even Dad decided that he wanted to apply for it. But he was too late and missed the window. And the Valencia board decided that I was the right man for the job. And I didn't want to wait around for the Inter Milan role and accepted their offer to become the new Valencia manager. This team is really good with David Villa headlining the front three. One Mata on the wing and even Anton Ferdinand at the back. This team's actually really underrated. But I already have an idea of players that I want to bring in. And I went straight to Sporting in Portugal for my number one target, the 22-year-old Mohamed Salah, who would instantly be a star in my side. I also went to another one of my former clubs, Werder Bremen, and activated the release clause of the young French defender Raphael Varane for £46 million. Without Dad signing anybody... It's the next season and Hulk still can't be registered for the third season in a row. But neither of us can still work out why. After winning the Champions League with Lyon, their manager took the job at Inter Milan. And after the World Cup, a bunch of new international manager jobs came up, which could start a manager merry-go-round, which might prompt my dad to leave. The World Cup, however, was won by Brazil, who beat Nigeria 3-0 in the final, with the last World Cup winners, Ukraine, finishing in third place this time round. No jobs came up, though, so Dad made the decision to sell Hulk on deadline day for a big loss. But that also didn't go to plan either. Dad, even when you decided to try and sell Hulk, the transfer was cancelled. This is another season I just couldn't register him, could I? I tried to get rid of the 90 u players in my team to, to, to get him in. Couldn't get him in. Another season, Still, I don't get so it. So this will be the third season I've had him and I just don't get him in the team. And I, I don't understand it. You don't understand it. So I tried selling him. I got a Florentina and Juventus wanted him, didn't I? So I made sure he didn't go to Juventus, except to the Florentina did. And then it got cancelled. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, no idea, but you're stuck with him anyway. Yeah. Uh, uh, and that's kind of forced your hand to change your tactic. Yeah, it did, yeah. Because you had a couple of players retiring. You didn't have that much money. Players in... You did bring in two players, but they were both 
mm. midfielder options. Yeah. You got a four million pound here, just I, more of a squad I, I player. Bought, I bought this guy in because I kept on getting my, my, my main striker, uh, main midfielder sent off to De Rossi. Yeah, yeah he, he, and I tried to make sure stick out her tackles and everything like that, but he was still getting himself red carded and things like that. So, and then Loic Perrin, yeah. twenty million pound, and I got him just to, so I got both positions in the midfield covered now. Yeah, makes it a little bit stronger in case I get any suspensions and all that. So that was all I could do. Well, there we go. And that forced Johan, as I said, to yeah. change your tactic to had, a narrow diamond. Yeah, I had three up front, then I, with a shadow striker behind them. And um, so I just dropped um, one one striker out, made it, made it a bit a stronger midfielder. Midfield in, played three in midfield now. Yeah. With the shadow striker behind them. So, yeah, that's what I've been forced to do. So, I mean, it's, it's worked. I played it for two games, didn't I? Um, I got a draw with Lazio. Oh, spoiler alert, there we go. Oh, draw sorry. with Lazio. <laughs> yeah. I got... A draw with Lazio and I beat Inter Milan. So. Yeah. After a bad start, yeah. to be fair, which you did have a player sent off when you were 2-1 up. It was the other player in the midfield. Yeah, yeah. In that game, you were missing De Rossi for suspension yeah. and you lost Aquilani yeah. because he got sent off. Straight red card as well. As well as Gishnak, who scored and then got himself injured. Uh, so, a bad start to the season, but then against, obviously, the champions, Lazio, two or draw away from home is, is never bad. No. Nope. Especially because, obviously... They are your rivals, yeah, that's right. Um, and they did actually equalise into the 88th minute, so you're actually winning 2-1 for a while there. Yeah, but that's a great win against Inter Milan, who neither of us heard anything about their no, job we didn't. for no. ages. Uh, I mean, Alain Perrin eventually took over. He was the Lyon manager, the current Champions League winners. Yeah, uh, but I mean, I applied for it, and then just. It was like radio silence, wasn't it? Well, they didn't get back to you, did they? No, yeah. no, yeah, no. No, well, no, because I got offered the Valencia yeah. but they still uh, didn't job. They still offer you a job to see if he was nothing. interested, did they? No. no. So there we go. Inter Milan decided to go somewhere else, and uh, I, I have mean, ended up at Valencia instead. To be honest with you, they, we thought there'd be a merry-go-round with the World Cup, didn't we? And I was sat there waiting for it. Yeah. And I thought, if a job comes up, because of the, the problem I've been having with Hulk, I'm going to go. Nothing popped up, so I'm... I'm not going to say I'm stuck here because I could easily retire, but um, I'm going to go give it another season unless something pops up in January or something like that. Yeah. Really good, but I've got a good squad, another good squad. It's I think it's my last chance, really, of winning this league with this role. team. I okay. Mean, I've got a few players that are getting to the age now where I'm thinking, and my defence is getting a little bit old as well, so this could probably be more my last season. I think money is your, also the other problem, isn't it? You had to sell a couple of players for FFP, Yeah. and you got minus in the bank... It's not great at the minute. No, there's some, you know, there's low loan wages and stuff but then like that. I, I got to have a good squad. I mean, the players I've got are good players. I, I mean, like I said to you just now as well. I was getting offered for every single player in my team, except for the ones I really wanted to sell, <laughs> wasn't it? Yeah, your non-EU players. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, there we go. I think Italy has high wages, which could be yeah. a problem for you there. Uh, okay, let's have a look at what I have done at this new team. Valencia. Now, I'm playing a positive 4-3-3. This kind of what they were playing when I come in here. And to be fair, it's been doing quite well. Yeah. Uh, already they had the likes of David Villa. They had one matter. They had some cracking players. And all I have done is added two, three, actually, gems to that. Uh, now, they did also bring in Anton Ferdinand, which... Okay, I mean, he's actually quite good on this, good to be fair. Him, yeah. yeah, 29 years old now, so... But I also brought in Raphael Varane, and he's only 21, still a wonder kid, and absolutely sublime. Uh, he goes straight into the starting lineup, actually knocking Anton Ferdinand out. He went to my former club for £30 million last season, played 29 games, had a good season as well, but I have picked him up now for 45, and I think that is definitely a very good signing. Also, we highlighted him last season... Mohamed Salah, 22 years of age, was at another one of my former clubs. Yeah. 60 million pound was his, well, was his cost. I think it's worth it. Uh, 12 assists last season and eight goals in the Portuguese league. He's already got three and one, and his finish is not that good. Only 11. Whenever these do gens come through of, of real players, they're not completely accurate. Nope. Obviously, we don't really think he had a very strong right foot. Um, but they're close anyway in the positions that they're supposed to be in. Uh, and Mohamed Salah is just an incredible play either way. But then the final player, Joe Moutinho, played for both of my former clubs. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, I've also already bought this guy before when I went to Werder Bremen, so it was kind of like, hello, me again. Uh, Jean Moutinho has joined Valencia. And those mental attributes. Is he going to be same. on your speed, though, is he? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, he's, he's my Frank Kessie. <laughs> yeah. He's my friend. I mean, people have been asking yeah. whether he is in the game yet. Oh, and Frank Kessie is in the game as a free agent. He's just not very good. We're not We're not even looking at him at the moment, are we? No. <laughs> uh, he played for Stella Club in the Ivory Coast. He actually looks older in that picture than he actually really he does is. He doesn't realise, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, he, he's not great yet. No. Whether he ever turns out to be anything, I'm not quite sure. But yeah, neither of us are coming run into uh, to Frank Kessie there. Uh, so my tactic, as I mentioned, is a 4-3-3. My best 11 looks like this. And I have some familiar names such as Raul Albiol, who is very good in this game. Whether it's CDM or centre-back, he can do both, really. Uh, we've got Pablo and Varane now at the back. One matter plays on that left-hand side, and I've got him used as a winger. Same as Salah on the right-hand side as a winger. David Villa up front, who is coming close to 33 during this season. Uh, so the pace might start going away, but he is still 20 at finishing. With 19 technique and 17 off the ball and composure, he's still unbelievable, yeah, really. Yeah. Uh, so how long I can keep David Villa, I don't know. But... Um, at the minute, he's still firing on all cylinders. And they gave me a big budget, which is obviously the reason what persuaded me to go to Valencia. Uh, whether they keep flooding me with cash, I don't know, because there doesn't seem to be any debts. There's, it's not like the Valencia that we know in real life. They're doing all right financially, so I could be all right. Yeah. And the start of the season has been very good indeed. It has been four games in the league and four wins, although I have conceded a goal in every single game. 4-1 in the first against Mallorca. Osasuna was a 3-2. Valladolid was a 6-1. And Villarreal was 2-1. Villarreal was my only tough game so far in terms of being tested. Uh, and I don't have any of the big two until I play them back-to-back -back at the end of November. So hopefully by then, I'm in a runaway lead. Yeah. Because right now, I am in second place. The only team above me is the team that <laughs> fired me last season. <laughs> you just couldn't write it. Uh, Maurizzi Romalo is in charge i'm curious how much did they spend 7.5 million pound there and they brought in naldo of course which uh was one of your old players yeah so they haven't really spent that much to be fair they I didn't really they were... need to did they no i built up quite a good team there we go my aim is just to finish above these yeah next season i've got a personal grudge against them now <laughs> and see how i do in maybe the copper del rey if i can hold on to a good league it, league win then amazing but I just can't see me doing that across the whole season but dad your final year I guess at Rome yeah I think so yeah yeah I would say so too <laughs> let's find out what happens despite my great start we hit a bad run of form because after my old club Sevilla gave me a Tonkin we hit back to back losses twice in two months although in that period of time we also beat Real Madrid at the Bernabeu 2-1 thanks to Mohamed Salah winner. I couldn't believe what was happening either as Sevilla somehow was still top going into the halfway point. Dad was having a good time though even if it was his last season in Rome. Three points off the top of the league and finishing third in this Champions League group which means he drops into the UEFA Cup becoming one of the favourites to win it and has Olympiacos to play. Neither of us signed any players in January however for the end of the season... I did succeed in bringing in a young John Stones as well as the legendary midfielder Ronaldinho who will be 35 next season and on a free transfer too. By April, Dad had been eliminated by Leverkusen in the UEFA Cup round of 16. And it was all going downhill because he was 10 points off the top of the league, Juventus with one game in hand. Meanwhile, after a 2-1 loss in the semi-final first leg of the Copa del Rey against Real Madrid, we also fell behind in the home leg too. But we kept believing despite being two goals down and scored two very late and much needed goals to take the time to extra time, where we used the momentum in the match to score a winner to see us through to the final. To face... Barcelona. However, bad news is that Sevilla are still top of the Spanish first division by five points 
with only seven games to go. Roma's league form never dropped though, and they went on a winning run like no other into the back end of the season, even destroying top of the league Juventus 6-1. And Juve have also been on a terrible run since that game, losing to AC Milan, drawing to Sampdoria, and with just Roma's rivals Lazio to play on the final day. And because Roma's form has been all wins, they somehow, with just one game to go, find themselves top of the league by three points. But hold the phone because celebrations in Valencia are now taking place because Cup Final Day was a huge day for the team in white as we took down Messi's Barcelona to lift the Copa del Rey. That's season number one in Valencia. You've only got to spend one year in, in, in each country, and you? You take their cup, don't you? It's just like that. That's the easier one. That as well. It's it's the hardest one to get, obviously. I'm not getting the easier one. It's the no. league. Yeah. That's the trouble. I'm too far away in the league. But Copa del Rey in season number one, done and dusted. I mean, you've done well, really, because the, you were a, a little bit outplayed as well by the looks of it. So. Yeah. But you went 2-0 up, didn't you? Yeah. And Ronaldinho, who is El Capitano for Barcelona, is joining Valencia at the end of the season. <laughs> What a signing that is! 35 years of age, he looks amazing. I'm buzzing with that. So yeah, I'll be having Ronaldinho on uh, in my team for next season. But that's really good. What isn't good is how I did in the league, unfortunately. Uh, I dropped down to fifth place and I kind of just stayed there. Almost crept back into the top four. But... Barcelona and Real Madrid didn't win the league though, did they, mate? No. My own team, <laughs> Sevilla, <laughs> were oh, probably you... really right for sacking me now. <laughs> <laughs> you can't write that, can you? Just a season ago, there we were going, oh, I can't believe they sacked you, Luke. <laughs> what were they thinking? You were going yeah. on to great things. Yeah. I was building a good team. You was? We did say that, didn't we? I, I mean, built a hell of a team. He didn't bring much in, neither did he? So no. It goes <laughs> they literally just they were there all 75 season. million. Yeah, they, they literally stayed there the whole time. And it was, it yeah. was quite rem remarkable, really. If we take a look at the Spanish first division, our pass positions, Sevilla, they were not in second. Like, our, the first game, wasn't it? Our 1-4-1? Yeah. And I was like, 4-1, should be top of league. Oh, Sevilla, they won 6-1. <laughs> they stayed there nearly the whole time. They dropped down twice. Yeah. Unbelievable. They had a little blip just there, and that was it then, wasn't it? Yeah. And then they carried on crushing. That was Barcelona who overtook them. They just couldn't catch him after that. And uh, yeah, I never really got back into that top four. I was, t I was four for a couple of seasons, yeah. but yeah, I never really was in it. And they ran away with it at one point. I mean, Barcelona caught them in the end because yeah. at one point they were like seven, yeah. eight points ahead. Yeah, they were, yeah. So it's quite impressive from Sevilla that they managed to do that after sacking me last season. But Copa del Rey winners. I've got to be happy with that. David yeah. Villa is the top scorer of the La Liga as well so now I just need to focus on that that's my goal for next season happy days lovely stuff but dad you were one game away from also winning a trophy did you manage to do it yes you did now the dilemma that your rivals Lazio had there was do they try and win the game? Because they had Juve in the final game, whereas you had AC Milan. It was literally what second a, versus third, first a, versus four. What a last weekend that was, wasn't it? Yeah. And it was I'm, actually obviously a bit of a as it was, I was three points clear with a better goal average. So chances are that I would have probably won the league anyway. But, but I, th I don't know whether it goes to a head-to-head -head or yeah, not. Yeah, it might do, yeah. It goes to a head-to-head -head or you play like a playoff yeah, game. Yeah, yeah. Italy. Yeah. But I mean, so, I've, I've, stuffed, I've stuffed them AC Milan and Noy, so... Yeah, the final game of the season, you won 5-1. I mean... I just went on a hell of a run. 6-1 I... against Juve, which was to actually overtake them Yeah, as well. I couldn't believe that. I come up against them and they were top of the league. Yeah. And I stuffed them 6-1 and I yeah. thought, well... The you only just time pinched I... it at the end, look. The only time I went top. There it is. There's the 6-1 win that you had yeah. into the last three games of the season. Uh, whereas Juve were top for most of the season, really. Uh, I think everybody had a little bit of a go. AC Milan dominated the first yeah. half. But out of your those four teams there, yeah. What so. a finish I had. I think it was the last three months I didn't lose a game today. Yeah, league. you had I won every game. Ben Arthur is the highest assist, but no goal scorers. But Oscar Cardozo, your old friend, 34 goals. Yeah. Uh, what a player. Your run at the end of the season was remarkable. Now, you didn't manage to win the Coppa Italia. You were knocked out quite early on by Palermo there yeah. in extra time. Uh, and UEFA Cup, you were eliminated by Leverkusen quite badly. Yeah, but we'll get back to them in a minute. Yeah. 
disappointed with that. Leverkusen. Yeah. We'll get back to them in a minute. Yeah, yeah. But your last league game that you lost was Napoli on the 23rd of February. However, you didn't even draw a game after that. Won every, every single one. Yeah. Uh, what a run. So, well, and, fully and deserved. What was the predicament I was doing? We uh, we were coming back every week. Looking every for week. I was determined... Because AC Milan, um, Juventus was doing so well, I was determined to get a job before the end of the season. When I, yeah. And I was just waiting and waiting and waiting. And no one really popped up. It looked like there's a couple of teams who were going to come up, didn't it? But they just didn't really pop up, really. Well, I think they? with five games left, you were eight points behind. Yeah. Because Juve's run at the end was so bad, Rafa Benitez's manager, they didn't win in their last four. So when, when you beat when I, them... When I gave him an hammer in, that was him. They folded, yeah. didn't they? Uh, that's completely where they chucked it away. So they had a very bad end of the season under Rafa Benitez there where they basically chucked the league away. But you were considering all this way here, <laughs> well, actually even earlier, I think it was about from there onwards, yeah, was, yeah. that uh, win against Siena, I remember we, were, we, we looked straight away right after. Yeah. Is the Tottenham when, Hotspur job available yet? Especially Leverkusen. When Leverkusen knocked me out of the UEFA Cup, that was me. I was just said to you tonight, right? If I find a team there, I'm going. Yeah. And Tottenham's job, Gordon Strachan, was under threat. Yeah. Time and time again. Yeah. It was insecure, stable, insecure, yeah. stable. And when you look to see who they've got, Harry Kane's here, Gareth Bale was there. Yeah. I was just looking at it and thinking, that's where I want to go. Yeah. So. I was stuck around though. I'm glad I did. I'm glad the job didn't come up with it because I would have gone for it and I would have been absolutely <laughs> Yeah, I mean, now you've completed Italy. Yeah, finished. So that's get away done from and that dusted. the EU rule now. Yeah, you don't have to worry about that. I mean, Mario Gomez, 29 goals there, 19 for Ben Arthur, Gijnak, 18, Aquilani with 14. It's very impressive. Uh, on, on my side of Valencia things, 34 from 38 in David Villa, uh, 14 and 14, both for one matter and Mohamed Salah, so they've had a great time as well. But Ronaldinho's coming next season, so I don't know what I'm going to do in, in terms of <laughs> that formation. But yeah, we need to push on in the league, I guess. Maybe put him in a shallow striker. However, there are some options. Now, Dad, of course, will be resigning more than likely from Roma and getting as far away from Italy as possible. Definitely. But where will he go next? Well, there's some options straight away because... In the job centre already, we have about four or five managers, four managers. AC Milan, that's tempting for me. they got a good side, haven't they? Yeah. I mean, straight away, Ronaldo is their key player, age 30, so one of the best in the world. Pirlo's 36, Gattuso's 37. That's the only thing that's putting me off there. They're, they're probably close to they retiring. Got 7 million, though. So yeah. That's a lot of money for an it's Italian side. The, the age, though, is yeah. really bad. Look how long it goes down until you get to the 20s. And that's a lot of first teams. Look at how many non-EU players they've got in there as well. I'd yeah. Leave, I'd leave that alone. Yeah. <laughs> they've got loads of them, lad. <laughs> God. And it's meant to how you couldn't register Hulk. Yeah. And they've got all of these. Oh, I don't know. How do they so, do? there we go. But yes, AC Milan is available, should I wish to go there. But Leverkusen, maybe, yeah, who knocked you out. They haven't got a bad team. It's, a, it's an option in Germany. So do, how did they get on in the UEFA Cup? Because we didn't look to see that who actually um, went on and won it, did we? No, so they were knocked down in the semi-final by West Ham. Ah, right. Uh, who obviously went into the final against my old side, Werder Bremen. And Werder Bremen are champions of that. So that team is really good still. Yeah. Uh, they still got Courtois, Defoe, they still got Mertesacker there. Ronald Koeman has been there for a while. And second in the Bundesliga again behind Bayern Munich. So they've consistently stayed up there. Uh, let's have a look around the leagues, actually, because we haven't done that for a while to see how things go in. So, obviously, Sevilla somehow managed to win La Liga. Mental. Roma won Serie A. In the Premier League, Liverpool are champions. Now, at one point, it was Manchester City. In fact, for a lot of the time, yeah. it was Manchester City. And Liverpool overtook it at the end there. So, yeah, Liverpool done the business quite early on there. Man City's got a good team. Not an amazing team, but they couldn't hold on. The likes of Sergio Aguero, of course, is at Liverpool. It's weird, isn't it, this yeah. this realm that we're in, <laughs> where, uh, an alternate universe, I guess. Uh, but you can see the rest of the lineup there. I mean, Tottenham finished down in ninth place. Yeah. Even Blackburn in sixth place is, is a surprising one so, for the Premier League. Uh, but outside of that, of course, we've got the Bundesliga, which we had just seen with Bayern Munich. And in the Portuguese league, Benfica are now champions after Sporting won last season. So Benfica won three on the bounce when you left 
Uh, and then Sporting 1-1. One, one. Now it's Benfica again. Porto are not getting a look in at the minute. But they've got Diego. Benfica's Diego still yeah. there, look. Yeah. Uh, so a few of the players that we've had previously are there. So yeah, very interesting. The only thing I want to ask, want to check is my Valencia transfer budget for next season is 38 million. But I've got a young John Stones coming in, age 20, which is not bad at all. And I've got Ronaldinho coming in. That might be enough to entice me to stay because that AC Milan team is just on the wrong yeah. side of 35. What about the um, Ballon d'Or? We haven't seen the Ballon d'Or for a while, have we? We've got nope. a couple of years to catch up. The Ballon d'Or was won by Fred last year. Real Madrid. And Gonzalo Higuain the Real year Madrid before. Again. Miroslav Klose, which might have been the year that I was there. Might have been. It could have been the year that I was there, 27-28. I think it was because he won these two here and I had joined here when Carlos Tevez won it. So I think that could be the year that I won it. Uh, the year that I was there, Miroslav Klose actually won the Ballon d'Or. I think I quit in that season yeah. the 2028 20, season so yeah fair play all right well there's a couple of trophies to add to both of our glory hunter cabinets which hasn't happened in a while no. that we've crossed off one I've got in that, each I've got that bad one that was just hanging me on, on my shoulder i've got him off now yeah go now get out of there let's add it to the retro glory hunter cabinets yes a successful season for both with myself surprisingly managing to lift the copper del rey in the first season of asking with my new side valencia but well done to dad who finally completes italy lifting the syria trophy and he can now move away and search for a new role after completing italy dad resigns from his post at as roma meanwhile the valencia board are backing me giving me over 90 million pound in the transfer budget and i went straight to strength for my defence first off by trying to take Sporting's left back for around £15.5 million. As well as getting a bit accepted for a world class Greek centre back aged just 22 from Bedfica with scary physicals that I've had on my radar for a while now. But then a dream job came up for one of us anyway. Because Jose Mourinho shocked the world leaving Manchester United to take dad's old job at Roma. And dad was immediately on it and applying for his old job. As much as this would be my dream role, I was content with the team I was building here in Valencia. And Manchester United wasted no time bringing dad in for an interview. And even less time to offer dad the role as Manchester United boss going forward, which he happily accepted. And in the United Development Centre, there are some names that you may also recognise and Scott McTominay and Marcus Rashford coming through. But to improve his side, dad put in bids for two attacking midfielders and James Rodriguez and Fernando Forestieri in attempts to conquer England in one season. And while that was all happening, I was signing Franco De Santo from Real Madrid as a long-term replacement for David Villa. Already, Dad suffered a defeat to Liverpool after a 1-0 loss in the Community Shield, however. But I was too hyped to realise, though, as I had the legendary Ronaldinho on my side scoring winners against Atletico Madrid. So, Dad, you've ended up at the Theatre of Dreams. Yeah. So, Trafford. Well, when the job came up, I couldn't believe me luck, really. I, I didn't expect it to be a, as good of a team as it, was, what it actually is, because I thought... Well, we knew they'd lost a few players, didn't we? Yeah. Um, but to get in there, I mean, Rooney was definitely, I was really pleased with him. But you got a good defence there as well. So mm -hmm. when I looked at the squad that was there and the players we got coming through yeah, in the youth development, it's not a bad little team there, really. I know I didn't have a big transfer window, but when I put my squad together, well, my, my first 11 together, I didn't really need a lot. So, no. all right, it was only 19 million, but I didn't, didn't need a lot of money now, so... I'm quite happy with this. I mean, you had a big wage budget, so you were able to, yeah. to actually put the, the transfer budget oh, it a lot just, higher. It just went up to, I think it was nearly 60 in the yeah, end, wasn't yeah. it? So. Uh, but we are, like, this is eight seasons in now. This is the ninth season, which if you're going by when the database was on, the 07-08 database, you're looking at, like, we're 2015 now. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, we got Mark, you've got Marcus Rashford, like, in and around the Youth Academy yeah. now. So... Straight away, you're already thinking, oh, okay, we are not too far away from where we are in real life. So, this Manchester United side, albeit they finished second place last season to Liverpool, it's still a really good team. Yeah. And you've actually uh, like brought in players which have improved that. Yeah. And some world-famous players too. So, let's have a look. You've got a tactic where you're going for a 4-4-2 diamond. And that is because you eventually brought in two players 
which was James Rodriguez as the main shadow striker ta- yeah. slash attacking midfielder type of role. What a player he is. Oh, definitely, yeah. Look at that. 24 years of age now. Uh, £26 million. Pound. Bargain, I think, for that. Yeah. yeah. That is a bargain. Two goals in four games already. From Fiorentina. I worried that, though, because when he was looking at him, I went, ooh, Nani, you player. And he went, <laughs> Don't have to worry about that yeah. again. That wouldn't no. haunt him anymore. Oh, God, I'm still having nervous being in <laughs> yeah. nightmares with that now. Uh, and then you went for Fernando Forestieri, who plays up front or as a shadow striker. Again, he's really good. I mean, that for that money, 12 million. What did 10 I pay? million? I paid 10 million for him in the end. Oh, well, that's a bargain, minute. Really. Yeah. And he just sits as well. If if um, Rodriguez gets injured, yeah. there's the guy that comes in. Yeah, he also if plays I need, up top. If I need a striker, this guy comes in as well. I mean, the striker-wise as well, I am really covered with strikers. But yeah. it's just handy to get a player that can play that role as well. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I mean, best 11, as you can see, we got Waza Rooney up front, 29 years of age, in the prime of his career, uh, one of the best strikers, one of the best players in the world, yeah. really. Uh, and then we've got Alan Kardec, oh, who is good as well, really yeah. good as well, great yeah. finishing, head and ability, beats the offside trap, but he's also 6'2", with 17 jumping reach, plays both feet, he's been scoring some goals for you at the start <laughs> One. What it's going to go for you at the start of the season. <laughs> so he's been doing all right. You've gone for a narrow diamond. They've managed to keep poor Pogba yeah. all the way through. They never lost him. Uh, and he looks great. Different type of player than what we know of poor Pogba. Uh, good ball winning midfielder on this. Yeah. Uh, Gerard Piquet stuck around. Yeah, he's only 28 as well. So yeah, and he's still there. Never yeah, went so to Barcelona. Got, yeah, so I know I've got him for a few seasons. Uh, and uh, he goes alongside Virgil van Dijk. Liverpool fans are all going, Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Because I Virgil van Dijk's in a Man United shirt. I couldn't believe my luck when he was there. So, yeah, yeah I'm happy with that as well. Uh, £69 million. Pound, they paid a naughty number for him from my Werder Bremen side yeah. when, I, when I originally bought him when I was uh, in Germany there. Originally, from Sporting, my other team. Yeah. So, uh, they, that's what they've done there. they got Philip Lamb in the side, who is absolutely yeah. incredible. 31 years of age now. Vidic is still knocking around uh, and still can do the business. You've got him there as an inverted fullback because that actually starts like a back three with Hargreaves just in front, gear land the license to go forward uh, it's a good side and for some reason Craig Gordon's really good on this uh, I mean I always look at my keepers don't I I, so, just, I just looked at that and thought right forget that yeah don't <laughs> need to change that at no. all but there's lots of names that you might recognise down the side Juan Cadrado is on the bench that he can play all the way at the uh, of that right hand side if you were ever to, to, to change your mind there some great players coming through the youth youth system too uh, let's have a look at your start of the season, though, because... Hero was there as well, wasn't he? Yeah, it's not been amazing No, I was a bit disappointed, season. really. I mean, all right, I lost the charity shoot in Liverpool, but um, I wasn't too worried about that one. But the, the I got a hammer in from Arsenal 3-0. Yeah. Um, I think they've gone top of the league as well now after all the games that we've been playing. But Chelsea 2-0, Everton 4-1, I thought that was good. But then I got beat by West Ham. Yeah, 1-0 as well. Because when I thought the team was sort of settled in the formation that I was playing then, because yeah. I, I did try a couple of different ones, didn't I? So... I remember they picked up uh, West Ham, Henri Save, who back then, when this game came out, was the wonder kid to go for. I uh, don't know whether he's developed into that quite yet. They've only just bought him for £47 million, pound, but he's had a great start to the season for them. Yeah. Uh, he was very good. So, yeah, it's been a bit ropey start for you, Dad. Two wins in the Premier League, but two losses as well for that second-place finish. Uh, your Champions League group, though, is Hamburg, PSV and Celtic. You should easily be going through that. I should do, yeah. Really. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I'm not, af- I'm not after Fika this. again. Yeah, brilliant, eh? Yeah. I set up with some sort of team there, didn't I? God, bloody hell, so they've won it again. I mean, I'm not after the Champions League, so I haven't got to worry too much about that. Yeah. But, um, it's the FA Cup I'm really looking forward to in the league, so yeah. hopefully I've picked a, a, a cup-winning team. That's what I really want. Mm. Well, we know where hard that FA Cup is to win, boy, don't we? Yeah, <laughs> very difficult. Uh, speaking of cups, though, I've just come off the back of winning the Copa del Rey, so I'm absolutely buzzing, and my Valencia side... I think is prime for a title oh, challenge. You've got hell of a side now. Yeah. I think I've built a really good team here in the 18 months, even less actually, that I've been here. When did I take this over? Like, only like 10 months ago actually. Yeah. So I have brought in one massive player in Franco de Santo, uh, and as well as some really good talent. So to start things off, of course, Ronaldinho came in on a free transfer. That's a Great signing, even though he's 35 years of age. Goes straight into the team. John Stones comes in as like a good backup option, one for the future. He's only 21. Then I looked at the actual starting line, uh, starting lineup, and I needed good fullback. So Jose Gonzalez comes into the side. Can also play centre back as well. But going forward, he's a very good, solid left back. Uh, then. I mean, this, obviously, new gens come into the team, which are based on real players. This one isn't, as far as I'm aware. £49 million. That's one of the best centre-backs in the world. Yeah. 
by a mile because he's 23. That's 17 for pace and 18 for balance and 17. And look at the mental attributes. That's one of the best centre backs in the world. Yeah. Uh, I had my eye on him last season. Tried to get him in the January window. Couldn't get it because they wanted obscene money. But he's down to 49.5 million pound Benfica just off the back of a Champions League yeah. win. So, Gover Golverinos comes into the side. I'm really happy with that. Uh, a goalkeeper for oh, two million. This was insane for two million, wasn't it? Yeah. That's already a better goalkeeper as well. I Not didn't... to mention as well, he is part German, which means he doesn't count as my, my, my non I didn't have player. A, I didn't have a job when you found this goalkeeper. Then you went, oh, he's only two million. He ain't bad. And then he went, oh, he's really good. Then you went on to someone else and I'm thinking, remember that name, whatever team I get. No, as I'm if you can remember through. that name. Yeah. <laughs> and then finally, Marvin Angulo came in from Lyon as a right back option because I needed to uh, get better right back and left back but then I had enough money left over and Franco De Santo with me thinking really that David Villa is still my starting striker but he is 33 and he's starting to get a little bit worse for wearing physicals he's still a finisher don't get me wrong he's got two and four so far and he even missed a penalty as well however Franco De Santo is the long-term plan for £68 million. It weakens Real Madrid. What? 26 years of age. He's really good. Didn't they um, Didn't they buy Harry Kane? They did buy Harry Kane. I, I had yeah. a sniff at him, didn't I? But I couldn't afford him at the time. Yeah. I? So, as you can see here from Tottenham, yeah. Harry Kane, he plays on the left, the right, or as a striker. He's not amazing. He's not amazing, but he's only 22, isn't he? Yeah. I mean, I was, I was in Manama to get him in and train him as a shadow striker, weren't I? Yeah. So I just couldn't afford him. The Englishman is at Real Madrid really. now. One chance I had to get him, but I missed him. Yeah, but there we go. So that's the team that I have uh, built here in Valencia. And if we look at my best 11, as you can see, I've changed tactic because of Ronaldinho coming into the side. I think I'd be silly not to. Bringing him in as that advanced playmaker. Justin behind the striker. What a player. So buzzing to get him in. we still got one matter on the left. we still got Mohamed Salah on the right. And he has been injured at the start of the season. But he's played three games. Got one goal. Front four. One you player got there, match. It? Unbelievable front four. Uh, and Manuel Fernandez is still a really good centre midfielder. Albiol sits in front of my two defenders. Which is now Varane and Govarinos. Who's two really good centre backs. This is a title challenge inside. Uh, my 100%. bench alone speaks for itself how yeah. good this team is. Uh, my schedule so far looks like this. Now, I have dropped points, but it was a 0-0 a nil -nil draw against Espanyol. I've only conceded one goal so far, which was against Betis, and I was already uh, up in that game as well. So, a 7-0 against Levante, a 1-0 against Atletico Madrid, Ronaldinho scoring that winner there, and a 0-0 against Espanyol. I am on course at the minute for a very good league campaign, but I do have Real Madrid and Barcelona back-to-back -back yet again. Uh, I have UEFA Cup. That's what I'm worried about. You winning that one straight away. You can, yeah. You've got a hell of a team. As soon as I seen yeah. that there was a draw for the UEFA Cup, I was like, oh, huge opportunity this season to lift this trophy. And my group is Red Star, Blackburn, and a team from Iceland. I should be going through. Yeah, the definitely. rest of the groups, obviously we know there's going to be teams dropping in from the Champions League. There are still some tough players in this group as well, in this uh, group stage as well. The likes of Ajax, Chelsea's in there, Inter Milan is in there. This isn't going to be an easy UEFA Cup, considering no. what we've seen but you've previously. Got, you've got to be one of the favourites. I think so too. So, there's a lot to go for this season for both of us. Dad's in a brand new country. I've got a league title and a UEFA Cup to win. Let's see how the season pans out. Does Manchester United may have started the season very well in the Premier League, but it didn't last long, unfortunately. Because throughout September and October, he went on unbeaten runs with many wins. Until a trip to the Etihad, where he took an absolute pasting by rivals Manchester City, 3-0 in what seemed to be a bad turning point for his side while sitting in second place in the league. Because December was not great with three losses and three draws. And job security become a risk after the 4-0 loss to Liverpool at Anfield. Meanwhile, I was having a blast picking up wins against Barcelona in La Liga with a fantastic brace score by Juan Mata. Even beating champion Sevilla 2-1 at their place with a very rotated team, might I add. But to top it all off, I won six games out of six in the UEFA group stage without even considering seed in a single goal. The only downside was Real Madrid was running away with La Liga. Just as Dad's league form started to pick up in January, Sheffield United knocked him out of the FA Cup. 
but he was slowly climbing back into the top four of the Premier League. After dispatching Lons comfortably in the UEFA Cup, it was the Bianconeri next in the quarterfinals. With De Santo being absolutely immense across both legs to send us through to the semi-finals of the competition, 4-3 on aggregate against Juventus. Only going on to face Jose Mourinho's Roma. And after we crept in a 1-0 win in Valencia, we went to Rome still hungry and took them right to the sword, scoring three more goals with De Santo picking up two more goals himself, and we walked into the final 4-1 winners on aggregate with Chelsea there waiting for us. And my dad was hating every single minute of it because he watched my Valencia side just score one goal, which was all we needed to lift that UEFA Cup. In the bag. <laughs> UEFA oh, Cup no. down. That's the one I was already hoping that you were going to struggle on, really. I just had a feeling at the start of the season that I could be in with a shot for yeah, that. You, I mean, the team that you had in there, you had to be the favourite to be in there, really. Yeah. I mean, I had good three chances at it with Roma, and I thought I had good team, good enough team to win it. Yeah. I mean, my old team had a brown one at last year. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm, I've, I felt like I was in a, in a good position for that. Uh, the group stage itself slapped it six wins out yeah. of six into the round of 16. Knocked out Lons 11 2 on aggregate as well. Quarter final, knocking out your Juventus. And that's a good win. And then in the semi final, your old team Roma. Yeah. Bounce them out of this one as well. Against Chelsea, 1-0 in the final. And that's all I needed. But I, I did say, no, my defence has been really good at the start of the season. Yeah. So it just continued throughout the rest of the season. Yeah, definitely, yeah. Now, it wasn't the only trophy I won, of course. But unfortunately, I had already picked up another Copa del Rey. <laughs> uh, two years in a row, beating Barcelona this time round in the final. Uh, after extra time, Sevilla... My old team in the semi-final. How about that, eh? Not winning the league now, are you, eh, Sevilla? Uh, but Real Madrid, the, the, the round before that. Good result. Yeah, so I knocked out the three best teams, really, yeah. if you consider it that way. So yeah. I deserve to win the Copa del Rey. But the Spanish first division was dominated by Real Madrid. Nobody was stopping them. I mean, it just goes to show that it is hard to spit them to or even beat both of them, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, you had out of a side and to be, what, 22 points behind Real Madrid. Yeah, they only lost one game, so that goal difference alone is I mean, 170. I mean, you look at your team and you think, where do you make your team better to be better than Real Madrid? I That's what I'm really going to struggle know. with. I need to make like a. Well, now that I don't need to win cups, I can kind of like cater the tactic and stuff to just yeah. league football. Yeah, that, that really high attacking style that I like yeah. which I don't like to do when I need to go for cups no, it because think. it only takes one game to lose in yeah. the cup so when you do a, a high attacking intensity you know three up front or whatever it is that's when you start to lose a lot of points unfortunately I mean I lost seven in, in the league here by playing fairly conservative in a 4-2-3-1 yeah. I mean you look at the goals that but, they've scored as well yeah I mean I lost both only, times against Real they Madrid only, they only conceded 19 goals I know that's mental yeah that's absolutely mental. So, I mean, if you look at the profile itself, I didn't even have a top scorer in there. I didn't have anybody in there. Uh, my actual top scorer was Franco De Sancto. So, so if you think about the, uh, the what I actually used at the start of the season, which was David Villa starting off, De Sancto has actually come in. He's got 18 and 31 appearances, 25 starts in the end. So yeah, he's probably now my number one. It was probably yeah. a good idea to bring him in. Uh, but yeah, there we go. There's a UEFA Cup in the bag. But that Do league... You know that really far away you know the biggest surprise was that, that that chart there go back to the leading uh, the, the uh, clean sheets clean sheets Igor Akinfeyev Barcelona weird <laughs> Casillas only had 17 but he conceded oh he only played 29 games though right yeah but they so the other the other Real Madrid uh, goalkeeper oh, really did he had 5 clean sheets ah right so, the, so Real, Madrid Real Madrid did, did as it. a team yeah, yeah. Uh, had a lot yeah. more clean I'm saying, sheets. When I seen that, I thought, hey? Yeah. Most clean sheets, they had 22. I was third there with 17. Yeah. But they dominated a lot of it. Like most points per game, most goals, most shots. Fewest conceded, of course. Barcelona just had the possession and most dribbles. So, yeah. You got your work cut out, really. I mean, you've got out of a side where you've improved it. I, I don't know. know. I don't know. Yeah. I do not know. Uh, I mean, I think like, what you just said, the tactic deal. could be different. Yeah. You could make that team better by just changing your tactic. Yeah. And now, like, I've got... I need to possibly look at a Ronaldinho replacement. He's 36. He's probably better off the bench now. Uh, Mohamed Salah isn't going anywhere. He is wanted by Chelsea. And if they want to pay 200 million, maybe he will go somewhere. Yeah. But 20 goals, 14 assists is, is absolutely incredible. 
uh, yeah, maybe I need to look at doing something a little bit different. My defense is fantastic. I've got some great midfielders as well. I think solidifying that midfield and maybe pushing uh, another striker up there might be the way to go. And I've got £118 million to do that. You've got more than that. Look at your wage budget as well. Yeah. So I know you pay big wages options. for your team. but Yeah. But Dad, the league form wasn't great at the start. Uh, well, However, sure. you did rescue it. You did rescue it into yeah. a third place finish. I had joint, a good, second, joint second, really. Yeah. I had a good, like I showed you, I had a good um, second part of the season. I lost to Arsenal 4-0, who eventually went on to win yeah. on the first day of the year, so 1st of January. I didn't lose a league game after yeah. that. Yeah, you only lost six games until there was yeah. that Arsenal 4-0. You that had was... some Tonkins, though. Yeah, I did, yeah. Lost to Arsenal 4-0 and 3-0. Yeah. 4-0 at Anfield. The big, so. I think the biggest disappointment me for my season, and it hasn't showed you yet, is the, the FA Cup. Yes. I wanted to do better in the FA Cup, and I lost to Sheffield Fourth United. Round. I was disappointed with that. Fourth round the FA Cup. Especially seeing we found out as well that um, Arsenal didn't didn't win it neither. It was Liverpool. Yeah. It was a Merseyside derby. I felt that was a big chance. Oh, nice. Big chance missed for me there. Absolutely. Yeah. So I mean, I'm disappointed in one way, but I'm pleased with the way I've finished. Yeah. So I'm the same as you, really. I probably just need a little bit of a tweak. I don't know what my transfer budget was. Transfer budget. I don't know whether it's come through yet because it's 24th of oh, May. Right. Yeah. So that. I mean, look at the Might wage. Come through later. Look at the wage. So it's going to be a lot bigger than that. Yeah, uh, but yeah, goals, goals wise, you know, yeah, this is where I was a little bit disappointed. Lot. Alan Cardock was your top scorer with twenty one, yeah. seventeen from Rooney. Whit Rooney. 70. And he only played thirty seven games as well, yeah. so he obviously Must took a bit of an injury. A bit of an yeah. injury at some point. Yeah, he had a fractured lower arm, so he was out for five weeks. Yeah, uh, in a game against Arsenal. Unfortunately, oh, so and then he picked up a couple where he was out for. A, he got a bit annoyed and he, and he smacked him. <laughs> <it>? Yeah, <laughs> broke his arm because of it. Punched somebody so hard he broke his own arm. I mean, I've got a few players that I wanted as well that I could possibly get rid of um, to make the budget a little bit bigger for myself, and then just sort of feed a couple of players in. I think, and I'm, I'm like that with changing my, my formation. I might, I might do. I'm the same as you. I, I do, I do like a, a free up front. Yeah. When you're really going for the league. Yeah. So uh, I might even go for that if I can get. Him. Okay. So you're through. not tempted by any of these jobs? I definitely, I definitely don't that want to may go anywhere. Or may not be coming up. I mean, yeah, I'm not, there. I'm not interested in going anywhere at the moment. I've got a job to do in England. Yeah. Um, and I'm happy with my team at the moment. So Neil Bath is the manager of Chelsea right yeah. now. Oh, he's interim. So maybe yeah. that is a job that you could have. Oh, no, you can't. I don't know. Maybe they've already got. Normally, I'm, there's like one lined up, isn't it? When there's yeah, an interim. I'm not really interested. I mean, the board. My job was never insecure. So yeah. The board are happy with what I'm doing at the moment. So, yeah, I'm quite happy as well. All right. I think I'm quite happy. It's just going to be yeah. some doing trying to catch uh, Real Madrid and Barcelona at the top of the league. But there is a huge trophy to add to a retro glory hunter cabinet. Let's have a look, shall we? Yes, a huge win this season because the UEFA Cup is arguably the hardest trophy left for us to both win. And I proudly stick it in my retro trophy cabinet as we move on to season number 10. There were lots of talks of a tycoon takeover at Manchester United this summer. But nothing ever came of it, unfortunately for Dad. I didn't care though. I was too busy signing Romelu Lukaku from Chelsea for just short of £50 million. But I was also laughing when Dad's old enemy Louis van Gaal took over Chelsea to haunt him again. Dad's main target this summer was a CDM and he brought in a very good one. However, I picked one up myself and it cost me just a tenth for the price of Dad's. Arguably though, one of my best bits of business this summer was a grin for a new contract for Mohamed Salah for another five years. And I also had a lot of fun watching the Euros as Spain defeated the Netherlands in the final and both of the goal scorers with the two Spanish goals were contracted to my club in David Villa and Juan Mata. You're making me very proud, boys. I had two early tests this season, with the first being Arsenal in the Super Cup, which we did win. However, the second was a lot more meaningful as we took on Real Madrid at home in a fantastic league game for the neutral. But I do feel hard done by in this game. After taking the lead on two occasions and having far more possession at 62% and creating 24 chances on goal, in the 86th minute, Real Madrid scored the final goal of the game to end the match at 2-2. Dad faced his own early test against Arsenal as well, and let's just say it didn't go to plan. So, Dan, we've had two challenging games for us yeah. at the start of the season. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, mine came against Arsenal. I was a bit disappointed. I lost my main keeper, put Dean Henderson in, and from, he made a mistake and cost me the last goal. So. Debut. Yeah. yeah, so 
Not bad. Uh, I mean, apart from that, I'm, I'm really pleased with the start that I've made. Yeah. I mean, especially the next game was at, uh, away to Man City. Yeah. And to win that game 2-0, I'm really... And Rashford... With a young first. Marcus Rashford. Because yeah. I did try to, to loan him out and he... And he um, Refused the, the the deal, didn't he? Yeah, to Napoli, wasn't it? Yeah, so he stayed in the team and he's come good for me. So yeah, looking good for us. Not his... bad. Yeah. Now you have made a couple of signings as well that yeah. we've already seen. So we've got uh, the main guy coming in was Aruka, fifty nine million pound for a centre defence midfielder. Yeah, I and mean, the players that I had there, Owen Hargreaves, just getting out the wrong side of thirty now. Yeah, so um, Carrick as well. Yeah, same. so I didn't want to sort of like get rid of them, but I've got someone to come in and just replace that sort of position, and they'll. Oh, our Greaves and Carrick now be in my reserve uh, defensive midfield. Yeah. So this makes it sort of a little bit stronger just in front of my defence now. Okay. And then we've also got Antunes, which is a left back backup because you had yeah. Patrice ever retire. Yeah. So just a straight forward. Yeah. And he's decent to be fair, but you've got oh. Philip Lamb in front. Yeah. So it's kind of like that. Well, Philip Lamb. Yeah. He's good. A legendary wing back, yeah. isn't he? And then finally, Serge Gapka. Yep. Yeah, I had a little bit of money left over and I just felt I could do with a stronger winger than what I already had in the team. Yeah, instead of Quadrado. Yeah, so um, this guy fitted the the, the, uh, the deal, so um, I went for him and got him. That's right. And, and yeah, straight into my team. As you well. alluded to, you've changed tactic. Yeah. Away from the narrow diamond and into a 4 triple 2 Yeah. Uh, with one winger and one attack midfielder, obviously, with Hamas Rodriguez. Uh, so similar look inside, really. you still got Van Dijk and Piquet at the back. Still got that full back in Nemanja Vidic. Lamb's obviously given the license to go a little bit further. Uh, but yeah, this is uh, strongest eleven, and it's, just, it's it makes one. it like a strike, strike force of four now going forward. So yeah. um, I'm, I'm hoping it's going to do business for me. All right, and as we've seen your results already, only one loss to Arsenal, fifth yeah. place currently in the Premier League, and your aims really this season are the Premier League and the FA Cup. However, there could be a chance that yeah. you slip into UEFA Cup because Real Madrid and Inter Milan in your Champions League group. That's a group of death. It is really. I mean, I'd like to think that I'm good enough to finish right behind, as it is now. Yeah. Um, but I mean, I've got to slip up against Inter, and I might just slip into the, uh, the UEFA, UEFA Cup. Cup. Yeah. So, I mean, the interesting thing about the league table as well, Middlesbrough are the top of the league, and I've just did I just beat them in the League Cup? Yes. Oh, it was the League Cup, was it? So four three. At least I know I'm quite capable of beating them in the league. Yeah. So, yeah. A Wayne Rooney ninety fourth minute that winner. Me, yeah. Uh, but yeah, they're currently top. There's only four games. But yeah, I mean, that'd be great if I could drop into the UEFA Cup. Yeah, absolutely. Speaking of the UEFA Cup, who's won it recently? It was me, uh, just to remind you. Now, I've still got £41 million left because there was just... I had a, a big trans budget yeah. and then at the end, I was just selling players like Gonçalves <laughs> and Issa Kirdo that I didn't even realise were in my... Well, Gonzalez, I already had Jose Gaia come through, so I'm like, I can sell him now for 21 million. It's a gear though, I, uh, well, left, and I was just like, right, that's fine. Uh, and Anton Ferdinand for 23 million pounds because I got way too many centre backs in my team. That Even John Stones was kicking off. Uh, but I did bring in some new faces. Romelu Lukaku was my big sign in there for 49 million pounds. Turns out he's not even in the starting 11, uh, which I was quite shocked with. Unbelievable. And that's because I signed Kevin Monet Paquette for 33 million pounds. And he's incredible. Yeah. <laughs> he's unbelievable. So I've got really good options now going up front. Uh, and I've had to change my formation ever so slightly. I've also brought in, oh, to be fair, £44 million is a lot for a left back, though. He comes in as my starting left back with Jose Gaia backing him up. So that's quite good options, I think, there in squad depth. And Le L Lorenio Torres from Boca Juniors for £3.9 million. Get them while they're young. What did he say? Oh. Yeah, Youth definitely. to gold project. That's, I mean, mentals and physicals. I mean, look how much he's valued now. Yeah. I mean, that's some of the best mentals and physicals I've ever seen. Unbelievable. And he's 21. Yeah. Uh, technicals aren't great, but when, when he's that intelligent and physical, yeah. you don't need to be good on the ball. <laughs> I've seen plenty of players like that. <laughs> for for £3.9 million, pound, and he's already got a 7.25 average rating. I think that's a cracking sign and really happy with that one. Yeah. So, that's the signings that I have brought into the side. As I alluded to uh, as well, change of tactic. I've gone for a 4 triple 2 but with two wide options. Uh, and if I did best 11 pick, you can kind of see what I mean about my starting 11. Because it, although it does say Manuel Fernandez, a lot of the time when I was asking my assistant to suggest to me the best 11 four games coming up, Jean Moutinho was dropping into that position as well because he's uh, a very good centre midfielder. So I've got options in there as well. Lukaku and David Villa on the bench. Ronaldinho on the bench. Rafa Varane on the bench. I'm like, what is going on here? But still, 
Al Raul Albiol can drop back because I've got Torres in the side now. Uh, my new gen Greek centre back goes on the left hand side. In Sue and Andrew, I think this is my only weak role here that I, could, I couldn't find any good right backs. No. Just no good right backs around. All for one. Yeah. Uh, Juan Mata and Mo Salah on the wings with DeSanto and Monet Paquette up front. So it's a good lineup. Hell of a team. Yeah, as we've already seen, it was a 2 2 draw against Real Madrid. Now, Arsenal, I played them in the Super Cup with a bit of a rotated team. Yeah, you did, yeah. Beat them 2 1 <laughs> in the UEFA Super Cup, but they might have played a rotated team as well, so I can't be too harsh. Some clubs don't take that seriously. But a 6 0 win against Celta Vigo was a great start to the season, and a 3 0 win against my old club, Sevilla, and I was chucking up the middle finger to them. Um, that was a good win, and then somehow I lost to Real Celsius down. I, don't know what happened, no, we? no one knows what happened. So there we go. Now I'm also, of course, in the Champions League for, for winning the UEFA Cup. And I've got Bayern Munich, Anderlecht and Galatasaray. So my former club, Bayern Munich, in there. Uh, which, yeah, it could be, could be difficult I to be fair. I think the team that so you've got, there. you should go for it. Oh, yeah, definitely. And Anderlecht and Galatasaray, I don't think I'm, I'm going to be on the same level as, no. as us. I think I should cruise through that. So who knows? But my eyes are solely set on the Spanish First Division. Of course, after winning the Copa del Rey two years in a row, the UEFA Cup already and the Champions League, this is the one thing I need now in Spain. And I really, really need to, to push for this one to Come happen on within the next couple of years. Come on, Barcelona. But yeah, uh, Barcelona is actually my next game as well. Yeah. That's who I've got next at the Camp Nou. So it's going to be really tricky, uh, but it's going to be an exciting season at the same time to see what happens. You've got three trophies to go for. I've got one. See what happens. Yeah. Although we lost in that next fixture to Barcelona, the rest of the season didn't take a nosedive as we then defeated them in the home game 2-0 and we dominated the play as well. Does Manchester United sneakily dropped into the UEFA Cup though as he hoped to finish in third in his group? But that form really rubbed off on his side during the winter period, taking a lot of losses in the league as well. Things did pick up though in the second half of the season, which coincided with Marcus Rashford actually getting quite a lot of starts and minutes from the bench. And he became a massive positive for Dad's season and gave his team a new lease of life, even scoring four goals across both legs in the UEFA Cup semi-final to take Dad into the final against Everton. Meanwhile, in the Champions League, I kept facing my former team, such as Sport in the quarterfinals as I defeated them 6-1 on aggregate, as well as Bayern Munich in the semi-final and I defeated them 6-2 on aggregate. And wouldn't you believe it, the team that sacked me, Sevilla, made it into the Champions League final to meet me and took the lead for a signing of my own. But no panic, they scored so early on that we had time to compose ourselves and get an early goal for ourselves too. And after signing a new deal in the summer, Mohamed Salah stepped up and smashed in the winner to put Valencia's name on the Champions League trophy. Beat Sevilla in the final, 2-1. <laughs> Sacked me, did you? <laughs> you bloody pillow sloggers. <laughs> Have a taste of that. Also went 1-0 up from a player that I signed for your team. Beat you, 2-1. Have some of that. Champions League winners with Valencia. Well done, mate. Can't argue with that. Nope, definitely can't. However, there was a second European final and unfortunately, Dad, you lost to Everton. I can't believe it. Radamel Falcao. Rashford. Rashford got a goal. Yeah. Sam Jovetic. Falcao, uh, I remember signing for Sevilla. Signed for £11.75 million. Pounds. I'm so disappointed, really, because I, I just felt I had a good enough team to, to win that. Um, oh, I don't know. I don't know where Everton finished in the league now. Um, they got a well, good team, you know, Bernardo yeah. Silva. But that's, that's a big chance for me to win that cup, wasn't it? You know, yeah. to get to the final as well. We, we, we did predict that with the, with the Champions League. Yeah, you had an odd group. Yeah, I had an odd group. So it worked out perfectly for me. And I think that's the fourth time I've played in that cup now. Yeah. I think I had three goals of Roma, didn't I? Yeah, yeah. So I'm not the cup king, mate, am I? I just can't win a cup. Marcus Rashford got 10 goals in that competition. Yeah. He is playing a lot of games now Yeah, uh, for you. 23 games in total in the league alone with five goals and two assists. But across the season, got 19 goals in only 21 I'm, I'm starts. I'm pleased with it because when I looked at my formation um, at the beginning of the season, I did say to you, didn't I, I was going to play wingers. Yeah. And I only had one winger in my team, didn't I? Yeah. But so he can now be that second winger. I can winger. play him the winger of the other side, which is what I wanted to do. I wanted to play two wingers. So. Yeah. I've brought him in at the right time, I think. Yeah, 19 years of age, burst yeah. onto the scenes. He even got six England caps as well. Yeah. So he's actually playing for England too. Uh, but you mentioned in the league, 
You're not the Cup King. However, you did only finish in third place in that league as well, behind yeah, Man City. Yeah. Three points behind them, but nowhere near Arsenal. They no, only lost two the, games all they're season. They're the team at the moment, aren't they? Yeah, they are unbelievable. They got so Carlos Everton finished in sixth. So I still should have beat them in that final. Yeah, you should have. Yeah. That's a tough one to take. Yeah. But hey, there we go. Now, I was a little bit closer in my league. However, I didn't win it. Barcelona only lost two games as well. One was against me. One was against Real Madrid. Real Madrid jumped off a cliff compared to what they were last year. If you remember last season, they were the team that was running the yeah. wave of 103 points, only losing one this season, down to 71 points. Yeah. Losing nine. So 30 points and less. We usually much. find that these teams have a drop-off like that only one season, didn't they? Yeah. They're usually back with a revengeance in the second season, didn't yeah. they? So I'm just keeping my fingers crossed that that's what happens because mm. you've got a hell of a side there. I mean, I, I lost of, six I can't games, afford you to win that. Lost that. against Barcelona and Real Madrid. Lost a lot of away games in yeah. there. Um, I did score, though. 136. Only conceding 39 as well, which is not bad. No. And then when you see this, I had the highest average rating all top three players, the highest assist all top three players, and the highest top score, goal scorer in Franco De Santo. Unbelievable season, really. It's just yeah. some of those results went against me. Uh, and then you see the schedule... And it's hilarious, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> so in just the league alone, as we come towards the end of the season, this is how funny it is. I win nine-one against Mallorca. There's the two, a couple we'll of the two fives games in there. That's fives. Five again. Five again. Draw nil-nil to Cadiz. How do you go from scoring nine and five and five, also losing to Getafe? Yeah. Then I won thirteen-nil against Deportivo, which probably breaks the record. Trap that, lose 4 2. Yeah. Uh, I mean, that is the game before the Champions League final, and I probably couldn't win the league at that point. No, you So it's kind of you. like, oh, yeah. fair enough. Um, never mind. But still, weird. Yeah. Uh, how I've managed to do that. I mean, yeah, in January, you, know, you lost to Real Madrid there 1 0. Yeah. Draw into Zaragoza again. And drawing the game before that. So I couldn't beat them. Team, so. to, who I beat 13 0. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> crazy i mean you can even look at that and sort of say that area cost you your league really yeah because i think the last game of the season if you if you had to win that game to, to win the, the league you'd have played a stronger yeah. side i drew against silly teams as well Rassi yep, and definitely yeah. like they are nowhere near the top of the table and i, I lost and drew against these teams deputy didn't he get relegated i'll be in 13 nil and they didn't <laughs> get relegated it's <laughs> mental uh but anyway i finished in second place in the league it's closer but no cigar, unfortunately. The Champions League run is also quite funny. Now, in the group stages, as we've seen, Dan got eliminated into Europa League. We'll take a look at his run uh, in a minute. But you lost two against Inter Milan there, drew against Real Madrid and Fenerbahce, and won against Real Madrid and Fenerbahce as well. Um, we can see the remnants of our old teams, look. Sporting, yeah. top. Werder Bremen, top. These teams that we've built up have done quite well. Uh, but also Benfica, Sevilla yeah. and Benfica, Benfica. and Roma in the same one. <laughs> yeah, and, ben, and, and Sevilla. So yeah. three of our teams in there. Uh, I, was, of course, had my old team, Bayern Munich, uh, who beat me once. I only lost one game. I, I won five, though, which was good. In the next stage, the round of 16, I knocked out Lazio. Then, in the quarterfinal, knocking out my old team, Sporting, 6-1 on aggregate. And in the semi-final, I beat Bayern Munich, my old team. 6-2. So three teams in a row in my was my old sides. One of them in the final, the team that sacked me, and I beat him in the Champions League. So they would have beat me in the UEFA Cup. Yeah. Because uh, <laughs> that's their that's, that's their, their role, their, isn't it? That's, that's their, their cup, but yeah, that's what they do. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, back to back European competitions for Valencia. Yeah. Just not that league time. It's not that bloody lead title. That's the one thing I actually needed. But let's have a look, Dad, at your, your UEFA Cup run. Uh, so as we alluded to, you dropped into the UEFA Cup. You then knocked out Celtic 6-4 on aggregate. Uh, into the round of 16, Villarreal 5-5 was that second leg. It was yeah. a huge second leg there. Quarter final, you knocked out Rangers. So you knocked out both of the Scottish teams en route to the final. And in the semi-final, Real Batis. 8-3. A lot of goals going on. You could have had a Manchester derby yeah. if they want the fact that they stuffed it on penalties. Would have been a Manchester derby in the final, but there we go. Got it. 2-1 loss. Good. That would have been a really good one having the bag. Yeah, that would have been. Uh, in terms of your team then, 26 goals from Wayne Rooney, 22 from Kardec, Rashford with 19, Forestieri with 18. I mean, the only the only one I'm happy with there is Rashford and Rossiteri. 
19 and 18. I think that's brilliant. The yeah. other two I'm not happy with. Yeah. I think hey, Wayne uh, Rooney's performance is a 7.3. Yeah. I just think my t- front two should be banging in more goals than that, really. Mm. I know it's the Premier League, but... Uh, not great. I'm open now with Rash. I'm, I'm definitely going to be playing Rashford on the wing, so a little bit more balls coming in. I, mean, yeah. I could be a little bit better next season. At uh, the minute you haven't got any money in there, it might not have ticked over yet, but you didn't give you a lot of money last no, year. So the same as last year, really, wasn't it? Yeah, the Glazers are tightening the purse money. strings at yeah. the minute. Uh, you mentioned how you next season, but what if a job came up, Dad? Because the Werder Bremen side has just come up. Yeah, I mean, we have, we have brought a new ruling in for this Glory Hunter where if one of us leads a team, the other person can't go to that team until another manager's already been there. Yeah. So now I could go there, couldn't I? Yeah, because uh, I I was before Ronald Koeman, obviously, but he's been there for five years. Yeah. And he has won two Bundesligas. Yeah. He's actually done really well. They won the Bundesliga this year, in fact, by eight points. Oh, see, now it's tempting now, isn't it? And they've got a very good team. They got finances of £67 million in the bank. <laughs> they got an all right team. They've got the likes of uh, Kovacic, who is Austrian and not Croatian on this. Croatian is his second nationality. We've already had a look at that. Rudiger alongside Per Mertesacker. Courtois in goal. Giovinco. Some cracking players. Frank Ribery's there. Wow. I looked at buying him for, for United. Yeah. Zhirkov as well is still there from when I bought him. 33 now. Got a very good team. Lucas Vasquez, who I think I sold to them. So they've got a very good team, Dad. Yeah. Uh, and they've just won the Bundesliga. And uh, yeah, so he's actually gone to Palermo, which makes no sense because they finished seventh. So I don't know why that happened. No. But, no, but that. Uh, yeah, that makes no sense. And Newcastle job is also available. I won't be going to Newcastle. What's what's their budget going to be? What Newcastle? Yeah, just, well, they don't just have for... any any rich owners. No, no, they? they don't. So that'd be twenty million. So, I mean, that's more than United. Yeah, yeah. You know, I'm, I'm getting what six six million at United. Yeah. Oh no. Yeah, that's because you find it. Oh, you got sixty million in the bank. Don't know why. Uh, let's have a look at mine though. I've got oh, you're thirty-nine good. goals from DeSanto. <laughs> Mane Paquette, 28, 26 from David Villa. Still, oh, he's retiring. What a season retire though. Twenty-six goals, eleven yeah. assists, and thirty-one starts. It's Unbelievable. Uh, Lukaku didn't play that many games this season, but stick around, Lukaku, and uh, you'll, you'll start more next season. Mohamed Salah had a great year as well. So did one matter. Uh, yeah, it's been it's been good. Oh, Ronaldinho's retiring as well. Two legends of the game retiring. Weird. At the same time. Even my centre-back got 16 assists. I don't know how he managed to do that. He's unhappy for some reason. Wants a new deal. You can get a new deal after that. That's unbelievable. Yeah, definitely. 16 assists. That's crazy. And my transfer budget for next season. Oh my god. Do you know that that one budget for your one season is more than the budget I've had of all the teams that I've been to. Look I'm, how much for my wage budget as well. So that's probably going to be over 200 million. Yeah. Bloody hell. Well, I, I think if you don't win the league this year then there's something seriously wrong. How's my finances is that good? That's insane. I can't wait to spend that. I'm going to have such a good time spending that. I think I'll just go downstairs for a cup of coffee for a couple of hours and let you get on with it then. <laughs> but the Werder Bremen job, you might want to go yeah, to that. Yeah, I, I must admit, no, I'm really tempted by that. It's, it's, They're a good side. A bit more money to play with. I haven't got a lot of money to play. You know, how can I strengthen that team that's there? I know they're a good side, but got a couple, Rooney's getting old as well, isn't he? Mm. The only one that I think is I'm a bit gutted with, if I, if I, do, if I do leave... The only one I'd be gutted with would be Rashford. Yeah. Because we, I brought him into the team and I tried to loan him out, I must admit, and, and, he, and he refused it and I'm glad he did. So I've played him and he looks absolutely good now. Yeah. And I think that Rashford being on the left wing could be really good for that team. Yeah, he could be. So, could be. Uh, you know, I'm changing the formation straight away and I've got a player all, automatically for that position. Yeah. So it's only a couple of positions I think I do need. But do I hang around and stay there or do I, do I move? Well, that's the question. But there were trophies won this season, but nothing added to the Retro Glory Hunter cabinets. Let's take a look and recap the winner. No new trophies to add this year, but my cabinet is looking very healthy indeed. And my Valencia team is looking really strong for next year to have a crack at that La Liga title. Dav was so close to adding the UEFA Cup to his cabinet, which would have been crucial for the race to complete Glory Hunter. 
how will he react to that setback next season? Especially because the Bundesliga champions are needing a new manager. Brad knows exactly what's required for him to challenge for trophies next season. However, the board are unwilling to support him with more money. He has signed our old pal Diego on a free transfer, however, from Benfica. But he's struggling for cash so much that he can't even complete signings like David De Gea, and the board won't accept his request for the extra to bring him in. Meanwhile, I'm just turning down huge bids for Mohamed Salah from Chelsea, near and 200 million pounds, as well as going for a new goalkeeper in the Brazilian Alisson, who at 24 years of age has yet to leave his boyhood club yet, and I have eventually matched his release clause to 20 million. But I was about to make a world record transfer fee for a player, because after toying over so many options, I decided to bite the bullet and spend big on Cesc Fabregas, who is easily the best midfielder in the world right now. And very quickly, Valencia signed their target and broke the world record for a player transfer. The Liverpool job then popped up, which is a shock because their manager left to take the Werder Bremen role. And despite signing Cesc Fabregas, I still had some cash left over and went in for Marco Royce, who could really provide world-class cover on both wings for me. And my dad had the same idea as he went for Nani, who had returned back to Sporting. I could have asked for a better test at the start of the season with my new Valencia players as we headed to Madrid in the first league game of the season, but Real Madrid were completely ruthless and gave us a 3-0 battering that I really did not expect. Dad, I broke all kinds of transfer records this summer. Yeah, I think this is the biggest transfer record that we've done as well as a, as a mm. pair, really, innit? So, yeah. Never spent more money on a player in my life. Didn't think it would be on an Arsenal player. Mm. Uh, that, oh, yeah. I thought that would be your job. I ain't saying nothing. <laughs> <laughs> He's 30 years old as well, which did give me some reservations. However, I couldn't find anybody anywhere near as good as Cesc Fabregas, which I kind of makes sense in a way, but £197 million is what I spent on arguably the world's best midfielder. Deep line playmaker on support, five star. Yeah. Probably the best midfielder in the world. Definitely, yeah. A few you've, 20s in there I think as you've just well. spent on one player more than I've spent in. Uh, how many seasons have we done now? Are we on 11 seasons? I just spent way more than that. Oh, get Damn. out. The last five seasons then. Well, <laughs> should, we, should we try that? Should we? Uh, Alisson was another one as well. £20 million pound that I brought in from uh, Internazionale, who of course goes on to great things you might have heard of him uh, but that is because my goalkeeper wanted to leave i ended up selling for 30 million pound not bad considering i bought him for just two million three seasons before that when i first joined don't know why he wanted to leave and go to udinese who i don't think are that good in this i mean from last season obviously we won the champions i actually finished second well Smack me round the face. <laughs> we didn't actually check the, the season last year, do we? How, no. how things got on in Syria. I knew Lazio won it, but I didn't know Udinese kind of come in second. So that's really good for them, actually. And as well as Cesar Aspilicueta, which was my final sign in there, uh, I needed a new right back. I almost spent over £100 million on a right back, and then I come to my senses and realise I shouldn't be doing that. <laughs> so I bought Aspilicueta instead. So £81 million on the outs, £241 million on the ins. And then I spent another 60 million. Uh, because I brought in Marco Royce, who's very good and, and plays both sides naturally, which I really like. 28 years of age. Again, he's just an unbelievable talent that goes into my squad now. And I've got a backup goalkeeper because I didn't have anyone else. But, I mean, my side now, I've got a world-class player in every position. And I've kind of got a world-class backup in most. Definitely. So... I don't think I've got any excuses. However, th the start hasn't been great. <laughs> I lost to Real Madrid 3-0 in the opening game, which is not fantastic at all. Harry Kane even scored against me. Uh, I did beat Everton in the UEFA Super Cup, something that Dad can't do. He can't beat him in cups. Nope. Uh, and then I drew that athletic Bilbao, which was a bad one. Fernando Lorente did, did, Fernando Lorente, sorry, did score a goal. Uh, but, I mean, that's a disappointing start from me. And next season, look yeah. who I'm playing Ooh. in the Champo League. So, yeah, I, I don't know about this season. I thought when I made those sign-ins, that's it. I'm going to be winning the league. Because the other Should. two teams didn't look like they did that well. well we, we checked uh, Real Madrid before you played them, didn't we? And yeah. They hadn't signed hardly anybody. And neither was Barcelona. Look, they um. spent a grand total of £10 million in the last season. Yeah. So they're not doing anything. Carlo Ancelotti is just sitting on I mean, their transfer budget. Lionel Messi, five million. Yeah, 
They're just waiting. They're going to sack the manager, and I'm, I'm in. Oh, of course. <laughs> well, we'll see. But yeah, so right now, yeah, not much to really talk about other than I, we're in the same group, by the way, which is quite funny. It doesn't happen very often. No, it don't, does it? Uh, and you're Team Roma. Yeah. So that's oh, quite funny. God. But I there do we go. both of you beating me and then they put me in third spot. Now I'll have another go in it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So, okay, let's have a look to see what you've been doing, Dad, and let's see whether you have literally let's spent Let's see the millions that. that I've spent, shall we? You spent £51 million pan there, 37 that's £100 million. 96 the season before that, that's Cesc Fabricas. I've had a, I've had a in sell players that, that you've that. been here. So, and £45 million pan the year before that, just as you joined. So, I mean, you say you had to sell players, £16 million pan there, £27 million pan there. You haven't really. Oh, come on. <laughs> Let's see who you did bring in then. Diego was the first name. It was a freebie. Yeah, free transfer, I, good I, I, signing. When I've seen it, I'm not going to let that one go for a freebie, yeah. Definitely. A friend of both of ours. He's yeah. played for both Werder Bremen and Benfica, of course. Uh, then you picked up Nani. I wanted a replacement for Rashford, and Rashford got injured, Yeah, to be honest with you. And um, bringing Nani back to the club. Yeah. For the second time, Yeah. Manchester United have bought Nani from Sporting... <laughs> But this is the fourth time he's played for Sporting. Yeah. <laughs> now, I don't know, like, many facts. However, I don't think I've ever heard of a player who's been bought from a club by the same, from the same club twice. No, not so, that I can remember. No. So, and obviously, I know players go back to clubs, yeah. etc. after being bought. But have they ever been bought again by the same club? I'd love to know if that's ever happened. Yeah. Because I don't think I've ever heard of it. Maybe in a, like an, uh, a semi-professional level yeah. or in a in a random country, but on the you know the, the top pre- leagues. I yeah, the top leagues. I don't think has no, no. ever happened, but that's a player of that caliber as well. Yeah, but there we go. Nani is back at Manchester United for the second time from Sporting for twelve million pound. The first time it was only se- it was seventeen, so <laughs> less than what it was the first time. And then finally, Havard Nordviet. Which was uh, from Werder Bremen, yeah, centre back him in, slash right back. He's, he's more of a, a right back for me. I bought him as a reserve right back. Yeah, but ideal that he can play centre back in case one of my two main ones gets injured there as well. Okay, uh, and as we can see, the last signing actually, well, the first signing you made was David De Gea. Yeah, a goalkeeper that you had to bring in. Oh, I just wanted million. to strengthen, strengthen my goalkeeper. I mean, the goalkeeper I got in there, which was the Gordon, isn't it? He's, yeah, he is a very good keeper. And then I had two old. Well, an old keeper there. Yeah, Ben um, Foster, Sam ben Johnson. Ben Foster, yeah. Sam Johnson, I, I wanted to keep because he's a good up-and-coming keeper. Yeah. So Ben Foster was the one I let go, and then I got David to go, and, and, and I've got two world-class keepers, I think, now. Yeah, so Gordon actually starts in the 11, yeah, which does, does surprise yeah. me instead yeah. of De Gea. Uh, but your starting 11 does look like this. You've got Lamb and Vidic still in the full-back roles. Vid, uh, Van Dijk and PK still a centre-back. Pogba in the ball winning midfielder, so Ruka's dropped down to the bench because you've changed tactic and yeah. gone... Three across the attacking midfield, but with two up front. A lot more attacking. Yeah, definitely, yeah. The game describes it as a 4-1-5. <laughs> yeah. uh, Rashford gives gives him options from the left now instead of as a striker, but he's already got three assists in three appearances with a 9.3 average rating, which is mental. And he's been injured at the start of the season yeah. too, might I add. So, great start to the season. To be yeah, honest, I'm doing well at the moment. Yeah, and that says it all in the fixtures too. Yeah. Outside of a four-nil spanking. Oh, well, I did change the team there. I'm not interested in winning that cup, so I just rested a few players. I didn't expect to get tanked four-nil, mind you. So you still played yeah. Aruka, Pereira, James Rodriguez. Well, I couldn't change everybody. No. <laughs> <laughs> Wayne Rooney came in, so there was still some I mean, I did big rest. players in there. I did. I did rest uh, Wayne Rooney. He didn't, he didn't yeah. actually start the game. So He did uh, West. Yeah, I did West, did West Wayne, Wayne Rainy. Rooney. <laughs> Rain Rooney. Um, uh, and I doubt if he was very happy with that pre-season no. with Everton. So, but um, yeah. but I mean, in the Marcus, league, though. Marcus Rashford was the main one I had to rest. Yeah. 3-0 against Portsmouth. 4-0 against Middlesbrough. 3-1 against Sheffield United. We're all good there. Yeah. But as we already know, Champions League, there's some extra bragging rights. No points involved, but it's just some extra bragging rights. You know, I'll, I'll let you have those bragging rights oh, if yeah. I can drop into that for a position Sure. Again. Let me have another go at it. <laughs> but there we go. Your, your fifth or sixth attempt at it in yeah. 10 seasons. I don't know. All right, let's have a look then. What happens throughout this season? Dad has got all to win in the English uh, league. Still hasn't done the FA Cup yet. Still hasn't done the Premier League with that UEFA Cup still to go. I have we, one we target and one the, target um, only. The jobs and vacancies, did we? 
Well, no, but they there wasn't a few. There was a few that came up. Was the Liverpool came up? Yeah, we've seen Liverpool come up, didn't we? Which um, was I, I, I had a look at it, didn't I? But when it when we spotted it, it was too late. They weren't taking any vacancies for it. And then no. there was the German side when it which I aimed in at Bremen. Yeah, um, they had a good transfer budget, but I just felt that really I've got a good team here, and I'd only gone because of the transfer budget. Yeah, what was annoying me with the Man United side w- w- team, should I say, was the budget really? Yeah. It? not the actual team himself. It was the budget. So, no, I stuck, stuck to me guns and, and I'm going for it again. Yeah, because the Liverpool manager took the Werder Bremen job. Yeah, he did. Yeah, that's what, uh, that's what happened. Yeah. Oh, one thing that is quite funny, though, is I play Katafe and Katafe's manager is Jurgen Klopp. <laughs> uh, in this world, Jurgen Klopp went to Torino, Hamburg, then became the Germany manager and then Katafe. So, that's uh, Jurgen Klopp's reign so far in from the retro database. So, let's run through this season see what happens because i've got one task one task only i haven't started great dad's got a lot to do let's see what happens unfortunately for my dad he recorded two 4 no losses back to back after red and battered him following that game against everton in fact his run in september through to october was absolutely abysmal and yes that was my valencia side who defeated dad 5-0 in the champions league at the end of september and with both teams playing heavily rotated sides against each other it was my reserve striker tony martinez who stole all the headlines as he picked himself up a hat trick at old trafford to pile on dad's misery the second leg in valencia with all the big hitters returning for both teams was even worse as my Valencia side this time scored six. And my impressive performance in the group stage of the Champions League seen me score 30 goals without conceding in six games, but only did Dad a favour as it actually pushed him into the UEFA Cup. There's no surprises that I struggled against my old team Sevilla again in the league, and despite scoring the opening goal in the first half, I ended up conceding two late Sevilla chances to pick up my second loss of the league campaign. However, going into the new year, that was the only time I was dropping any points in La Liga that season, as we won every single other game. And yet, that was still only good enough for third place right now. Dad sailed on through the third, fourth and fifth round of the FA Cup to face Everton in the quarterfinal. But this was as far as he could go as the Merseyside team knocked him out 2-1. Meanwhile, I was preparing to face my old team in the Champions League with the first leg finishing 0-0. In the second leg, we were far more deadly in the attack and made sure our progression in the competition, winning 6-1 on the night. There were other setbacks for us, drawing to Real Madrid and losing to Barcelona in the league. However, we still found ourselves at the top of the league table for now, going into the final stages. Dan couldn't say the same despite the Premier League being rather close at the top. He was still down in sixth place and his UEFA Cup run isn't looking too strong either as he's just been drawn against Real Madrid in the quarterfinals. Sometimes it may be good, sometimes it may be shit. And it was a very tough tie for Manchester United as Real Madrid and Higuain ran riot at Old Trafford. Eliminating Dan from the competition, 8-4 on aggregate. It was still mathematically possible for Dad to win the Premier League, but unlikely with three games left. Especially with Liverpool to come next and Arsenal, who are top on the final day. I'm still chugging out results in Spain and somehow still top of the league with three fixtures remaining and two points clear of Real Madrid win their game in hand. Not to mention, I'm also within touch and distance of yet another Champions League final. And with a 5-0 second leg win, we meet Hamburg in the final in Amsterdam, where we take the lead in the first half through Mohamed Salah. It won't be easy, however, because in the 92nd minute, Hamburg find a way to send the game into extra time. And actually, although I said it won't be easy, the Hamburg goalkeeper gave us a gift, and we scored the worst Champions League final winning goal of all time. Back to back. Champions League winners with Valencia. You did have the best team in the world, didn't you, really? This I mean, is the best team in the world we did, now. We did see Salah uh, won the Player of the Year as well, didn't I? So, yeah. Uh, yeah. So that is another one ticked. However, I had one job to do here in Spain. I got it done. Champions. By eight points as well. Yeah. I well knew done. it was coming. When he lost three games, it was coming. Yeah, Lukaku, after not, after sitting on the bench all last season, 24 goals. He's got to be buzzing with that. 35 games, 30 starts. Yeah, got to be happy with that. Mohamed Salah with the second highest average rating. DeSanto was up there as well. Fabregas, 12 assists. It was a very, very good Valencia side. And the good thing is, now that we've implemented the rule, I know Dad can't go to this Valencia side. <laughs> 
and do the business with it as well. Only lost three games across the season. I've got to, I've got to stay away from Spain for a little, bit, a little while and then just let it settle down again. Really. Yeah, yeah. Try and get it back to normal, I guess. Um, but there we go. Other competitions. I was knocked out in the fourth round by Al Maria, but it's a competition I've already won a couple of times anyway. The Champions League. We know I've won it, which meant Dan didn't win it. But in the group stage, I crossed paths with Dad, of course, and knocked him into the the UEFA Cup, 6-0, six 5-0. Nil, nil. Tonkin. 11-0. <laughs> the two times the two. I, play, you, I played against you, I was going through a bad spell. Yeah. Um, and I just couldn't buy a win. And um, I mean, it put me where, exactly where I wanted it to be. Yeah. Another chance at the uh, UEFA Cup, so I was pleased with it, really. Don't know whether I conceded a goal. I did not concede a goal. God, how many goals you did score, though? 30. <laughs> group state, group, uh, goal difference of plus 30 without conceding the goal. Back to back Champions League wins. Uh, so, in the round of 16, went on and defeated Werder Bremen. <laughs> I was unbeaten, still at that point. Uh, quarter final, 5 3 against Lyon. So, I'd lost in the Champions League at one point, yeah. but I'd won the first leg 5 0. And in the semi final, knocked out Benfica 7 1. Lovely stuff. Hamburg's done very well to get to the, the Champions League yeah. final. They got Yogi Love as uh, um, their manager. Ben Teke's there as well. Somebody I've actually managed before in this save. But there we go. How did you do, Dad? I'm off already because I've completed Spain. How do you? Do, how did you do? Well, a third place finish. Yeah. Rescued what looked like to be an awful season. My job was under threat for quite a bit of the season as well. Yeah. Um, if you looked at, at my results, the end part of my season was a massive save. It saved my job in the league. Yeah. <laughs> that's all I'm saying. Past positions. Look how bad it was down yeah. here. Oh, that's, oh, 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 oh. that's where I lost this league, really. Yeah. Because I've pulled it back really well with the results to be so close to almost winning it. I mean, Chelsea and Arsenal they only beat me by I mean, Arsenal two points, Chelsea five points. So I was close, two games close, mm. and I had a bad start to the season. Nah, disappointed with that. Highest assister in the league. Yeah, goodbye then, really. Yeah, it was actually, wasn't it? In his second stint, you're going to sell well, him for... back to Sporting yeah, now. Yeah. <laughs> or should I go to Sporting and buy him, buy him back? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, so other competitions. We know you dropped into the UEFA Cup. Yeah. It was a loss against Real Madrid in the quarterfinal. Two quarterfinal exits. Yeah. Everton knocked me out of both cups. Yeah. And when I played them in the league at Everton, I stuffed them 4 0. Yeah. They also beat in the UEFA Cup final last year. Yeah, I just can't beat them in a cup. They cost me all my cups that I needed. But I couldn't believe my luck to get Real Madrid in there. I, I fancy my chances when I got dropped into it. That's a hard. Yeah. Like, look who's in there, though AC Milan, Liverpool, Real Madrid, and Lazio. Yeah. You had a very difficult UEFA Cup uh, to, to finish because that's never normally that good. No. AC Milan beat Lazio in an all Italian final there. Uh, the FA Cup, as we can see, the final was won by Everton. They're causing some problems here yeah, for people, are, yeah. aren't they? Portsmouth have got to the final there. So, well done to Everton. But, yeah, you are struggling I mean, if you so go, far in the if Premier you League. If you go on to my, the schedule and have a look at my schedule, yeah, I mean, you can see it. As soon as September was over, the, the, the transfer window, I just started losing again then and I couldn't catch it back then. Yeah. Lost too many games, silly games. Another bad area in December and, as well. Yeah, and that's that's where my job was under threat then. So I pulled it back, started doing well. At least but, you beat Western Super Mare yeah, eleven nil. Pleased with that. That's that's what I, the the the, uh, the body language of all my players were up again, and we was off again, and we was up, up and going again, and then we come against Real Madrid. Yeah, which is really the only bad spell you had in that second yeah. second part I mean, of the season. You Real lost Madrid. to Man City, but you the two cup games were the only yeah. two Premier after League Real losses. Real Madrid, look at the teams I beat there. Yeah, Some good results there. Uh, unfortunate dad very unfortunate now if you were to stick around you'd have 42 million so they are giving you some money now oh, and i got a big wage budget so it's more yeah. than 42 million yeah so so that's not too bad no but will you stick around because there have been some jobs that have popped up and one that's really caught my eye let's have a look at the job center lazio who finished second dortmund might interest you, Dad. I've already completed Germany, yeah. but that might interest you. But there we go. Jurgen Klopp is leading candidate for Dortmund. He's been sacked by the looks of it by uh, Getafe. But Lazio, remember, they won the league the season before. This year was AC Milan. 
I go to Italy and I get no budget. You go to Italy, if you go to Italy. 140, <laughs> if I apply. <laughs> I like the little giggle that you gives me. <laughs> <laughs> they won the league last year. They didn't win it this oh, year. They do yeah. have this guy as a starting striker, though. <laughs> He's good, isn't he? So there we go. Some very interesting stuff can happen. Uh, What's the budget of Dortmund, then? Borussia Dortmund has 69 million. That's an annoying number as well. Yeah. 69 million so players like. to spend. I mean, they got Julio Cesar. They got Seven Jovetic, who isn't bad. They've got an okay team, to be honest. This, it's not a bad team. You like yeah. a good goalkeeper there. Look, I don't think it's as good as your Manchester United team, but there we go. So, some interesting stuff. Let's have a recap of uh, the, the league. So, Chelsea obviously won the Premier League. Valencia uh, in the Spanish First Division. The French League was won by Lyon again, I think. Uh, Syria, AC Milan, as we've seen. The Bundesliga was claimed back by Bayern Munich, who come back with a vengeance. And the Portuguese League was won by Benfica okay, yeah. by 10 points as well. So huge. Uh, let's take a look at the Ballon d'Or winners. I'd imagine Mo Salah might be there. He is. He's the current Ballon d'Or winner after four in a row from Real Madrid. Unbelievable. Well done, Mo Salah. What a, what a crowning moment of my time. Got Wayne Bruni in third place. Yeah, well done. You got a third place. Then. Yeah, that's not bad. And Lionel Messi in between. Some bit of a nice crowd to be alongside, isn't it? Yeah. But there we go. What's gonna happen next season? Who will be going where? But first, there's a trophy to add to my retro glory hunter cabinet. It's been one up in eight and four for a while. That's right. After all the trouble in Sevilla, I cross off Spain, lifting the La Liga title with Valencia, adding yet another trophy to my retro glory hunter cabinet. Now with just four left remaining. My legendary spell at Valencia is complete. I have loved my time in Spain, creating probably the best team in the world right now as well. There is lots of differences to this Lazio team, but there are still some recognizable names in world football, as well as a world-class striker with some fantastic attributes, 20 off the ball and 18 finishing, for example, and he's only 24. And that was enough to persuade me to apply for the job, knowing I need to go to complete Italy at some point anyway. Dan, on the other hand, was offered a new contract at Manchester United, which he agrees to sign and extends his contract for another four years. And he celebrated that by bringing in his old French striker on a free transfer. No sooner though had I left Spain, Valencia began making bids for dad's players. But my mind was on Lazio, and they eventually brought me in for an interview. And within days, the Lazio board were back in contact again to offer me the role to become their manager, which of course, I accepted and began right away. First thing I did was go for a player that I've been keeping my tabs on since he entered the footballing world. Kylian Mbappe. He was unhappy at his current club Chelsea and I got a deal accepted for £75 million. As well as bidding for the Liverpool defender, an old player of mine at Seville, in Laporte. Dad was also trying to track down a centre-back as his director of football suggested Marquinhos. He finds himself currently at Benfica. So Dad pursued the transfer. My old job at Werder Bremen came up once again and that's because the manager Victor Fernandes jumped ship to take my latest job at Valencia. But there was another reason my dad was actually tempted by Werder Bremen. Because upon looking at their squad, we noticed a 21-year-old Frank Kessie in the side, an up-and-coming midfielder that my dad's rather fond of. Spain continued their dominance on the international stage, though, as they beat Brazil 3-1 in the World Cup final. And I decided I needed another midfielder and brought in the one man I've relied on four times already in Glory Hunter in João Moutinho, who I could buy for the third time, this time round for just 20 million pounds. Another future star in Erlen Haaland, who I was keeping my eye on, has just rejected a move to Liverpool with his contract running out very soon. But instead, he agrees a while later on, on deadline day in fact, to move to Manchester City. Dad, I am quite surprised to see that you're still the Manchester United manager. Yeah, I know. Uh, I was tempted, but I thought, well, I am building a side here. Yeah? I had a bad season last season, but I think I know where I went wrong. I think I had the wrong formation and um, I've changed that. Rashford's getting even better, so mm. I think just a couple of players that I've bought in to just strengthen the squad up a bit more. And I'm a bit confident with this season now. Yeah, okay. Well, let's have a look at the signings that you made because to start things off, you brought in a centre midfielder from Werder Bremen. Yeah. Uh, who plays in both roles that you are currently using yeah. and very well too. Yeah. So Traini comes in as a centre midfielder, very good on the ball. Yeah. I mean, Fantastic, he's, really. He's actually going to be fighting for the first... first uh, spot yeah so i brought him in as a reserve to take you know come in of any injuries but he's also fighting for the first team spot really yeah he's good uh then we've got an old player of yours 
Yeah. From Roma, the striker. On a free transfer as well. Yeah, I mean, I'm playing two up front, and I just wanted a, an extra one as possibly to come in and fight for that first team spot as well. Yeah, uh, and he has actually scored as well in yeah. one game. So, so far, so good. And then finally, Marquinhos. Now, I think this is like the first player that you might have signed. That's a new gen come yeah, through. That we, I think it's it like is. a recognized, really good player yeah. in real life. Um, and yeah, he's fantastic, to be fair. Very good on the ball. There was a couple of players that you were in and I'm in, in yeah. between. But Marquinhos stood well, he, out. He plays I mean, he's mainly for the, well. the centre-back position as yeah. a reserve centre-back position. But because he plays the ball position so well as well, just got him in really. Yeah. Just strengthens the defence up a little bit more. Exactly, because your tactic, if you look at it, you've got PK and Van Dijk, who yeah. are your two starting centre-backs. Uh, Lamb is obviously your starting left-back with Pereira on the right. This is the formation that you've decided to change. Now, you're going to be trying to get David David De Gea to play every game because yeah. at the minute it still plays Gordon in there. But the rest of it, you're kind of all right with. Yeah, I've, I've set it up that one or two players could slip in if one player's off form type of thing. So, yeah, I'm quite happy with that. Okay, nice one. Uh, let's have a look at your schedule. So far, it was going all well because you had a draw at Anfield at the start of the season. Game, that's yeah. not bad. 90th yeah. minute equaliser as well. 3-0 win at home at Old Trafford, so that's lovely. But this one was a little yeah, bit bizarre. It was, a, it was a bad game more ways than one. <laughs> Definitely because of the result, got beaten the last two minutes. Yeah. And Wayne Rooney getting sent off. Like, Wayne Rooney getting sent off cost me the game, I think. Yeah. I mean, they actually took the lead through Junior Stanislas, but you came back, got yourself a penalty as well from Guignac, yeah. and then Wayne Rooney gets himself sent off in the 72nd minute when you're 2-1 up. Joey Keating scores two goals. Yeah. <laughs> Not a fantastic start at all. I think I've had a bad injury as well. Just one of my players in that game as well. Pogba is out yeah. yeah, for a couple of months. Two to three months of a broken ankle. So, so just as well, I did bring up midfield player in. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna be you're gonna be losing your best midfielder for now. Uh so let's have a look at your Champions League group. You've got Leon, Porto and Schalke. So I think you should go through to that. Unfortunately, I probably will go through, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but let's have a look to see what I'm doing at my new club of Lazio. Yes, I went straight for the job, got it immediately, and I brought in some big names. Oh, yes. They already had a fantastic team, to be fair, and I had a good transfer budget. Uh, so the first signing I made was Kylian Mbappe. And I've been keeping my tabs on him as soon as he came into the game. I noticed that he went to Chelsea last season for £42 million, and I was like, oh, there's my chance for him. They're going to use him. They didn't. Four games and he was unhappy. It cost me almost double what I paid, what they paid for him. But has it been worth it? Three goals in two games already. Yeah, definitely. And a player of the match, Chelsea are idiots. We all knew that. He is fantastic. <laughs> They're I'm good already, at wasting money. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm already trying to get him to beat the offside trap because that's exactly what killing Mbappe does. But at 19 years of age, he's already really promising uh, and I'm looking forward to bringing him into the team. Merrick Laporte, is a player that I once had at Sevilla. Uh, I, think, I think I bought him. He was my first signing at Sevilla. I bought him again from Liverpool. It didn't cost me as much as what they paid. In fact, half of what they paid. And they played in two seasons in a row. So I don't yeah. know why he was so cheap. Uh, but he comes in as my starting centre-back. And he is injured for a little bit. Four to eight days. But it's not too bad. Uh, then, I mean, it's the fourth time I've had him. <laughs> I think I've only had six jobs. But four of the jobs I've had... Jean Moutinho has been in it. So the only time I haven't had him is at Sevilla and Bayern Munich. But here he is again. And I've bought him three times. Werder Bremen, Valencia and Lazio. He is the Nico Crunch car to my Harry Redknapp. Yeah. So. Or well, my Frank Cassie. Yeah. So who is also in the game? Yeah. We did look at him. Werder Bremen. Yeah. And the Werder Bremen job come up. Dad was tempted. Didn't go for it. I was only tempted because Frank was ringing me up and saying, Boss, come on. Yeah. <laughs> this is the second time this has come up now. Uh, so there we go. Jean Moutinho is signed for £18 million. Still only 31. I could go again. I could, when, I, when I complete Italy, I'm going to go to the Premier League and, buy and I'm going to buy him again. <laughs> and then Lucas Leiva is my final signing. I know, I'm buying Liverpool players. £50 million though. I needed a centre defence midfield as a good option. He gives me that good option. Now, I wish he was better at the position that I'm using as a ball winning. Uh, apparently, he's only good as a Segundo Volante. I'd argue he's better uh, than what people are making out, well, what my coaches are making out as that ball winning midfielder, but still. He comes in, is a lot of money, but there is, is not a lot of options, unfortunately, unless we had silly money. 
Now I'm going for a 4 triple 2 formation, very similar to what I played at Valencia, but catered towards the team that I've got. Um, my only concern really, I mean actually isn't happening here, but when we were going game by game, my assistant kept on suggesting we put Goran Pandev in. Now Goran Pandev is a legend of Macedonian football and the Serie A, and I was always a big fan of his. However, he is now 35 and his pace is not quite there. Although his technicals and mentals are there, I want to be playing Mbappe. Next to this man, Vittorio Villa, an Italian 25-year-old who is immense. Yeah. Off the ball of 20, great composure, great finishing ability. He is insane. World-class striker uh, who got 19 goals in the last two years. So... That's the two strike force that I want. Leroy Sané is here. I almost bought him two years ago, and then he went to Lazio, I remember, uh, for £45 million. I actually activated his release clause and then turned it, well, cancelled the offer to bring in a striker instead uh, while I was at Valencia. I think it was a good move at the time, and I've been re reunited with him instead. We've got the best right back in the world in Di Silvestri as well. Unbelievable. Yeah cracking player that's the one position we've all been struggling yeah. with as well isn't it uh Jean Moutinho of course and Lucas Leiva goes in there Douglas Costa is also in the team uh plays on the right hand side in this as a new gen from with his right foot which I think in real life he is right footed I'm not sure but he's 27 here uh, and still a really good player but on the bench I have the likes of Anthony Martial I've also got Jack Grealish Ruben Loftus-Cheek there's a few players here that you might recognize um, and even my captain, Christian Ledesma, he's at the end of his career, 35, but can still go for now. So I'm excited for this season. I don't think it's going to take me too long if you're going off the start of the I season. I have a funny feeling I might be seeing you in the Premier League next season. <laughs> <laughs> because on the start of the schedule, I've only played two games, won them both 4-0, but one of them was against Inter Milan. Yeah. At Inter Milan. Good start. And I absolutely destroyed them. Now, my Champions League group does have your old side Benfica dad, but also has Lons and Shakhtar. I'd like to think I can go through that. Could I make it three Champions Leagues in a row yeah. with two different teams? Who knows? There's only one way to find out. I'm in a new country, so I'm chasing down both the Coppa Italia and the Serie A. Dad is in the same country, still trying to chase down the FA Cup, the Premier League, and of course, the UEFA Cup. Let's find out what happens this season. Dad's Manchester United started the season in much better form than previous years, scoring way more goals than usual without conceding just as many. And he managed to put on a nearly three-month run without a single loss from the first game of September to Arsenal on Boxing Day. But Arsenal, unfortunately for Dad, are untouchable at the top of the league right now and have only dropped four points all season with Dad's side trailing 10 points behind already. I was also having a fun time in the league with my new strike force of Villa and Mbappe getting on very well and both picking up a number of goals each and some of the results we felt like we were on another level however we went into the game against AC Milan tied on points and 19 year old Donnarumma in goal for AC Milan put on a man of the match performance as Milan defeated us 2-0 at the San Siro taking the current champions of Italy to three points ahead of us going into the new year after only losing one game so far this season dad did however pick up a domestic trophy it just wasn't the one he's been chasing as he wins the League Cup at Wembley, defeating Liverpool 3-2. Another game against AC Milan in the frosty snow of Milan, and this time in the quarter-final of the Coppa Italia. And the game goes to extra time after they find a late equaliser, but this time round it's us celebrating at the final whistle, as we score two goals in extra time through Anthony Martial to go through to the semi-finals against Juventus. And the first leg actually goes very well for us indeed. Dad's good start to the season in the league started to fall apart as he picked up some bad losses from February onwards, including a loss to Manchester City at Old Trafford. Although there were still some highs as they spanked Chelsea 9-1 at Old Trafford, but the points being dropped against West Ham, City and Sunderland started to take its toll on the title hopes. With seven games remaining, they were 14 points behind Arsenal. And Dad also crashed out of the FA Cup in an epic encounter, though, at Fratton Park in the quarterfinals. But we both, however, still featured in the Champions League quarterfinal with Real Madrid and Manchester City on our way of a possible clash against each other. And although Dad overcame Manchester City on penalties after Sadio Mane's miss for City at Old Trafford, Lazio were destroyed against Harry Kane's Real Madrid. Followed by elimination from the Coppa Italia 2 as we lost 4-0 to Juventus in the second leg. The amount of draws in the Serie A was also annoying in April too. 
although we then beat Juventus 5-0 in the game before they knocked us out of the Coppa Italia. But with AC Milan to soon play, we trail them just by a point near the end of the season. And AC Milan's form dropped right at the perfect time for us as we sail past them into the top spot with the fixture against each other next and the Milan derby after that, meaning we could lift the Serie A title against them if we win. The game did not start great despite us being the home team as Ronaldo put AC Milan in front right on the stroke of half time and we find ourselves now trailing by two goals to nil. The hope was never lost though and we mounted a comeback through Douglas Costa to begin with and even managed to score an equaliser on the 81st minute by the veteran Goran Pandev. However, one moment of concentration lapsed in injury time and we crumbled. As AC Milan took all three points. Going on to defeat their Milan rivals 2-1 after falling behind 1-0 as Cristiano Ronaldo fired in a rocket of a winner to guarantee themselves as champions against their biggest foe. That I was so close. I had it in my hands. It definitely was in your hands, yeah. To win the Serie A. Two games left, you were top of the league. Yeah, I mean, AC Milan defeated me. They went 2-0 up, pulled one back, but the 92nd minute uh, winner. I ended up losing the last game of the season anyway. Yeah. Um, don't know whether I pushed for it, but I had a bad period I've from say, that, April I, onwards. We say the last two games cost you the league, but they didn't, I don't think. April yeah. cost you the league. Definitely. A couple of bad, well, three draws in there, which really I should be winning. Yeah. Also out of the Champions League. Beat Juve 5-0 in the only win of the month in the league, and then lose them 4-0 in the Coppa Italia semi-final after already being 3-2 up yeah. in the first leg. So they also knocked me out of the Coppa Italia. No trophies for Luke this season. Very annoying because I was so close. I was top of the league a couple of times throughout the year. Uh, just wasn't to be, unfortunately. I had two of the top goal scorers, including Kylian Mbappe uh, and Pandev, actually had the highest average rating and the most assists. He had a great time. Which worries me where my other striker was because he seemed to have not scored as many. I don't know what he was up to, uh, but he didn't seem to play as many games. Well, he did play as many. He just didn't score as many games, no. many, many goals as, as the other two guys did. Goran Pandev had a wonderful time, possibly playing from that right-hand side. Uh, so, okay. Difficult time for me uh, this season. It was unfortunate. Close, but no cigar. Dad... How was it for you? Well, third place finish, which I feel like is all you've been able to get at the minute. Yeah, I mean, I, I was up around the top the whole season, but I was losing silly games. I thought I lose eight games in the end. Yeah. When Arsenal only lose four and draw four, I just couldn't get near Arsenal. Every time I got a little bit closer and I got second place, I'd go and lose two silly games. Yeah. I mean, um, you lost against both Man City and Arsenal at yeah. home. Yeah. So there, there's games that you can't afford to lose. No. Um, so. Some bad results too. Middlesbrough, Bolton, West Ham, even because yeah. they're they are, they're not. Oh, they are fourth to be fair. Couldn't beat Sunderland Everton away. Again. The first game that I lost, the Preston game. I mean, these games like you should be losing. Yeah, I mean, Preston bottom of the league. Yeah, and I lost Sunderland as well relegated. You lost to them three yeah. two. Both, you know, both times. That's the games you can't afford to lose. Absolutely. Uh, profile of the league, though, you had Forestieri with one of the top scorers of the league, which is a bit surprising. I'm a bit disappointed about that, to be honest with you. Yeah, really. there's not a lot going on for you there, really, which is a shame. Uh, but the FA Cup was the other competition you wanted to go for. You were knocked out in the quarterfinal. Won the wrong cup. Yeah. You finally won a cup, but the wrong one. You won the English League Cup instead. Lost to Portsmouth. So. Which you beat Liverpool in the final. Yeah, I did, yeah. I was pleased with that. Might have been the only thing that keeps your job at the minute. <laughs> I didn't do too bad in, in the um, Champions League, to be yeah. honest with you. I got to the semi-final. Because they also knocked me out, Real Madrid. Yeah. Went on to face Sporting in the final. Yeah. Which is still yet to happen. I mean, what I will say is I did beat AC Milan in the Champions League. Yes. <laughs> I... Oh, great, well done. <laughs> yeah, you don't get anything in the retro glory on the cabinet for that. When I come up against them, I thought it was a big surprise that I got AC Milan and I and I beat them. So, yeah. yeah. But look who I knocked out. My yeah. old side, Valencia. Yeah. How oh, funny! It all uh, comes round and round. Of again, course, it? yeah. Lost them three two in the first leg, beat them three 0 in the second leg. Quarter finals when I lost to Real Madrid. Uh, you knocked out Manchester City on penalties. Yeah. So an all Manchester semi oh, quarter final there, uh, which meant that you were the final English team in the Champions League. So, well, it's always the same when you come against Real Madrid, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> you ever you ever beat Real Madrid in the final, or you're just going to lose them because they'll get to the final. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, let's have a look then at the other competitions across 
uh, European football. Real Madrid went on and won the league. Valencia finished in third. They were only four points behind those. A very tight t title race. I did say that Real Madrid would probably bounce back from that. Then they could, yeah. Because you can right talk in there, really. Didn't yeah, really? absolutely. Yeah. Uh, in League A, uh, it was Lyon again. So they pretty much won every single year. And the Bundesliga, Bayern Munich lost this season. Werder Bremen, the job came up. You turned it down. I don't believe it. And they went on and won. Oh, they didn't look like they had a good enough side for it. They comfortably won as well, yeah. Dad. 72 points oh, to 66. Gutted. Absolutely gutted, though. No. I wish you Louis Van Hal. <laughs> I wish He's been somewhere. haunting you. He has, yeah. Louis Van Hal. He's constantly haunting you. He's. Oh, he well, left you and Chelsea. Him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've, I haven't really done anything since well, you, we haven't crossed paths. It's just he, he keeps popping up. Yeah. He's 67 now. It might be time for him to go eventually. Uh, but at the minute, he is giving you a hammering. Oh, dear. The t yeah, the team's all right. Milazzo's a good striker. Um, there's a few good players in there. Yeah. It, does, it doesn't look like, you know, you'd, you'd look at that and go, they're easy to win the Bundesliga. No. But, well, Bayern, Bayern Munich come third. Yeah. That's real bad for them. Yeah. I could do with them second their manager. Seven points behind. Well, <laughs> we haven't looked at it yet. No. Could it be a possibility? Let's have a look. Benfica at the minute with Jose Mourinho as the leading candidate uh, as he left Roma last year. But the job security, I mean, there isn't anyone there yet. No. So, possibly, it might cause a bit of a... Yeah, Manager no. Mary go round. Yeah. We've only just got to the end of the season. Sometimes they, they the board take a little bit longer yeah, to decide. Yeah. Uh, but Omar Hitzfeld at the minute is class as stable despite finishing in third place. Maybe it's because they've gone on and won the DFB Pokal. They did. Yeah. So that's what goes against you, unfortunately. Yeah, the definitely, DFB yeah. Pokal win. I could um, do with them leaving them rather than being sat there. Yeah. Really. Yeah. Because yeah, if, if they had lost that, then you're looking at it going, by me, it's probably going to sack our manager today. Yeah. But there we go. So far. No, nothing has come up. The only good thing is I finally league. won a cup. It's the wrong cup, Yeah, I finally won a cup. Yeah. <laughs> you can't add that one to your retro glory hunter no. cabinet, unfortunately. Uh, Dad, your goals this season. Alan Kardec got 34 for you, which I am quite surprised yeah, with. I Wayne am. Rooney got 23. Yeah. How would you know? 33. A lot of players got 20. Forrest, Dieri, Diego and Rashford. Rashford Going looks amazing now. Going forward, I was really good. Yeah. I was... I, was, I mean, I... Did I stuff Chelsea nine one at one stage? Yeah, he did. Yeah, throughout the season. So yeah, nine one Chelsea there. So I, I was scoring a lot of goals, but uh, the important games I was just losing. Yeah, some silly games. There we go. Okay, your transfer budget next season, Dad, fifty seven million. So you've got enough. Yeah. And of course, we came back in uh, January. We had a look in January, and we actually signed a couple of players for the end of the season. Neither yeah. of us had budgets. No. But we had enough to offer players at the end of the season. I, mean, I know I'm losing. Um, Gordon, yeah, he's retiring. Keeper, so yeah. I, I need a reserve keeper. So you've got Manuel on a freebie. I must, I must just get him in. It's silly money, in it really. The fall's good. Yeah, and uh, so is Maritimo actually. He covers the three positions that, that I do. I do play at the moment, so that's yeah. a good, good signing, I think, for a freebie. Yeah. And I also did the same. I got two midfielders coming in. Andrea Lucci, who is uh, at Real Madrid, but a really good uh, centre midfielder, thirty-four now. But so is John Obi Mikel. He's also joining. 32 years of age so I can afford to get I had a couple of midfielders who weren't really getting a lot of game time and I can afford I mean, to your, lose them now your budget was only 56 but did you see your wage side of it yeah it's a lot in the wages which I can <laughs> possibly bump up but of course I got two of those coming in I think yeah. one of them uh, is like 300 yeah, was, so yeah. he'll be coming in quite expensive so I might have a bit of a clear out because there are a few players in here who didn't get many games uh, at all and a, a few down here who I might have to just think yeah it's time for you, you guys to go really so yeah I mean, I don't really plan on leaving because I, I think I'm on the I'm on the cusp of something now. I think I need a, little, a few little tweaks, yeah, and then I might be all right. But I still think you're some way off here, Dad. You're some way off there. I mean, you look. You look at. I think it was was it Everton who won the league last year. No, it was who Arsenal won who won the league was the it? year before. Yeah, Chelsea. Oh, Chelsea. Louis Van Gaal. That was. Oh yeah, and I was close to them. That's only six points, no, five points away from them, but. Arsenal just walked the league this year, didn't yeah. they? So, well, I don't know. Big summer ahead for yeah. Dad. There's no trophies to add to the Retro Glory Hunter cabinets, but let's remind ourselves 
what we've got left to get. I think overall it was a good first season for me in Italy, even though I never got to add a trophy to my Glory Hunter cabinet. But that's fine because right now Dad is seriously trailing behind and he needs to step up if he is to beat me at completing his retro Glory Hunter cabinet first. However, maybe a move away from the Premier League is on the horizon as the Bayern Munich manager has just left his role. I asked my director of football to suggest me a midfielder, and he suggested three of Dad's players. And there's no chance of any transfers there, unfortunately. Although maybe, I would just have to wait a little bit because Dad has made his mind up about the new vacancy at Bayern Munich. He has decided to apply for the role in Germany and promptly got himself an interview. Yes! And just like that, Dad's time in the Premier League with Manchester United has come to an end. And there's new beginnings in Germany with Bayern Munich. And now, Dad has money. He's in his element as well. First going for a new goalkeeper in Thibaut Courtois at Everton. Eventually getting a deal done for £35 million. Next, he targets his main title challenger's best defender in Per Mertesacker, despite him being 34 for just £6 million. Stamping his intent to dominate Germany by signing the 20-year-old Nigerian striker Victor Osserman for £17 million, who was already absolutely exceptional and rapid fast. Finishing up with a bid for a new right back and targeting Liverpool's Trent Alexander-Arnold and getting a bid accepted for £42.5 million. Louis van Gaal got sick of haunting dad and decided to join AC Milan to haunt me instead in Italy. <laughs> and that was because other jobs too popped up like the Barcelona job that Manuel Pellegrini filled from AC Milan as Carlo Ancelotti left Barcelona to go to Benfica. The Werder Bremen role even came up which was filled by Rafa Benitez who left Juventus, who knocked me out of the cup last season. Dad ended up facing Werder Bremen twice at the start of the season too, with the first being a 7-3 win in the Super Cup, with the second being 2-2 until the 92nd minute when new signing Victor Osman scored the winner. Well, Dad, you have a new club in yep. Bayern Munich. I'm pleased with this, to be honest with you. It, you know, if you're going to go to Germany, you want to go to the best, so I got the job, so I'm pleased. No, you didn't go to Werner Bremen, you went to Bayern Munich. <laughs> well, well, we'll see what happens, won't we? Well, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Now, uh, a few other jobs came up as well. Jose yeah. Mourinho took your role. We also seen the Barcelona manager uh, leave, leave yeah. Carlo Ancelotti. Yeah. But Which, that was that was after I took the the buying job, so yeah, he went to Benfica. Yeah, that fact. was a big surprise, wasn't it? Yeah, I mean, I was all right with it when it came off. Oh no, but I'd already took the buying job, so yeah, I would have been a bit disappointed if it was if I'd missed it and I was still at Man United. Yeah, I would have definitely left Man United to go to Barcelona. Oh yeah, I think you'd have been silly not, silly not, to, yeah, not so. to. But, but I'm go. no, I'm happy where I am. Yeah, I've got a good side here, and I'm I'm. I'm, I'm bought a few good players so I'm pleased alright okay yeah. well speaking of those this players this is the happiest I've been for a few seasons don't put it that way yeah <laughs> uh, speaking of those players you've had a very busy window indeed now you joined just at the start you spent 241 million pound since well, you I arrived had I had 174 million pound yeah as a kid and I sold it I didn't sell many players I only sold a few just to sort of like 89 trim, million trim the squad off really but I, you know the ones that I really didn't need like, yeah. But I have kept the big squad though still. Thibaut Courtois was yeah. your first man in. Well, you know what I'm like for keepers. I've got to have a good keeper in my team. Yeah. And this guy was fitted that bill straight away. Now, eagle eye viewers may already know there's a Thibaut Courtois at Verde Bremen. Um, and here he is. There's duplicates of him, Harry Kane, and somebody else. But we're making sure we stick to the one with the proper skin with his face. Yeah, yeah. yeah so. Although we. I had already signed the other one at Werder Bremen without knowing that yeah. this one existed. Yeah. So that's the only occasion where that didn't happen. Because I nearly bought the every Harry Kane, didn't I? <laughs> yeah. Because there's two Harry Kings, <laughs> two two World Courtois, and there's another player as well as, where as, there's, as Neymar. Someone, there's as, two Neymar. Yeah. But the other one's terrible. It's really strange. And the guy who sent us the message saying there's only two Harry Kanes, absolutely brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> so Victor Osserman was your main signing i think 75 yeah. million pound that's a cracking signing for a 20, 20 year old. old yeah this guy's this is the guy that's gonna hope he's gonna win the league for me yeah uh very pacey as he you would expect great stamina good finishing ability uh picked him up as well from udinese who, yeah he got 15 goals for last season so it's straight not, off the bat it's pretty league. good yeah yeah uh, 75 million he's got 3 and 3 few so far uh, he also picked up this man who is a very good I mean Greece have a cracking team by the way because yeah. I think they've got the, the centre back that I signed at Valencia um, as a new gen they've got this guy who plays CDM he's a really good defensive midfielder Per Mertesacker weakening that the was, opposition I needed a centre back and this was the guy I had in mind and I thought straight away 
a, a, a fucking week in the, the, the team that's just won the league. Yeah. And for that price, I'd be silly not to. Yeah. I mean, he's a bit of a beanpole now. He's 6'6". Six, six, can't really run because he's 34 and he only has 11 strength. So it's kind of like a... Oh! <laughs> <laughs> he's fell over. I still think he'll do the job for me. Yeah. Uh, Federico Valverde. Mm -hmm. Another name that we know uh, who's just 21 on here. Daz picked him up. Really cheap for just four point seven million pounds. I'm just strengthening the midfield, really. I mean, I've got a good midfield already, but it just helps to strengthen them up a bit. Yeah, defence. You got Rentero, yeah, who's a left-footed centre back, and then look at this one, Trent Alexander-Arnold plays both sides, so I'll cover both sides. Yeah, so he's already played left back for me as well this season. Yeah, already. thirty-seven point five billion pounds seems like a bit of a steal as well. Yeah, Pepe, because you seen me nearly go for him, <laughs> then realised he was non-EU, and I decided against it, and then you went for him instead because he's just two million. And he pound. covers both sides of the wings for me, so he does. that's another ideal player at that price. Oh, and then me. this one's hilarious: no, six don't million talk pound to me about for this. Fred. Don't talk. And on this. the same day, we're not even joking. The day that he joined, he broke his leg. <laughs> I was, I was chuffed a bit of getting this guy. For, was it like pay for nine million? Was it? I paid oh for him, God, yeah. and he goes and does that. It was amazing. I mean, he was only going to be my, my uh, backup midfield players as well, but I just thought, well, for nine million, that's hell of a buy, and he might just six get in million my, even. Well, six million. He might even get into my team, and, and then he does that. So I might for two, three months. <laughs> Well, I've still got him in the team. Well, he'll yeah, still yeah. be available for me from the March. What have we got? September, October, November. Yeah. From November from the onwards. New Year onwards. Yeah. November yeah. onwards. He'll be all right. But on the day he joined, didn't even get through one training session. Broke his leg. <laughs> uh, tactically then, Dad, this is how you're setting up for this season. Well, they had two good wingers already there. Yeah. So I'll, I'll play with wingers. And I don't play with wingers very often, but... No. I mean, your best 11 picks actually sticks Morata on the wing there. Yeah. Even though he is... A main striker. I think he was top scorer last season with 17, but yeah. he does play from the right hand side as well. Uh, you can see a few of your new signings coming in. Ilkay Gundogan is another player in the side that yeah, you've still got there. there. Yeah. Bastian Schweinsteig is I mean, still around from when such, I was there. He's such a good winger as yeah, well, really. Absolute legend he is as yeah. well. So, yeah, it's a good lineup. Gail yeah. Clichy's there as well. Quite happy with that. And your schedule so far, you lost the first game <sighs> to Gladbach, and the winner was a player that dad sold to them <laughs> just weeks before 2.3 million pound i love it it always goes back and kicks you doesn't it yeah but you have already played Werder bremen twice twice yeah and, and you beat, beat them, them twice. twice so it's a good start really yeah. in the cup it was a 7-3 win then a 9-0 win in the uh, dfb pokal but that was the super cup sorry yeah. uh, and the Werder bremen league game 3-2 away from home 92nd minute winner from victor very good. Yep. Uh, he also scored two in the 5 0 win at home to Wolfsburg, where you uh, only won nil up until the 87th minute and then won 5 0. Uh, so they've only got legs for 85 minutes and then they are screwed. So I'm, I'm happy with the start. I'm happy with the start. Right, I've lost the one game, but I'm, you expect to lose about four or five games in this league yeah. and still be able to win it. So yeah. I'm all right. Porto. After beating the champions twice. Porto, AZ Alkman, AK Athens are in your Champions League group. Yeah, should, should go through there, shouldn't Yeah, I? so no hope of a UEFA Cup there, unfortunately, no. for you. But what about me? What have I been doing? Am I still at Lazio, you ask? Yes, I am. Thank you very much for asking. Now, I actually had a really nice transfer window where I didn't have to stress too much. I didn't sell too many players. I think only £24 million went out there, and it was kind of like a lot of loans as well. As I said, I would do. A couple of midfielders left because I was bringing in a couple of midfielders and Andrea Lucci and John Obi Mikel. So those two guys uh, joined, of course. Then I signed Luca Be Luca. <laughs> I always get his name wrong. Luke Bacchiel. Okay. He's even got my name in it and I Sounds can't even good. say it. That was uh, a bit but, struggled on. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Le, never heard of it. <laughs> 7.75 million pound from Anderlecht. That's a good backup winger for me, to be honest, I think. Because I almost like scrapped the winger because I, I was going to make another sign yeah, in, but did, I yeah. didn't. Uh, Barbagallo, who is another winger who can play on that side. So I've got two wingers, but I also sign in because he plays on the left-hand side as well. Plus he was Italian and only 20 years of age from Sampdoria and he had a great season last year 10 goals and 11 assists Carlos Kameni I'd look to try and improve my goalkeepers there wasn't many around that wouldn't going to cost me over a hundred million pound the likes of Allison and to Stegen who I've already signed previously were now yeah. mega money even De Gea at Man United was mega money uh, Lautaro Martinez though wasn't from Inter Milan he was a non-EU player that I picked up as a striker 
absolutely phenomenal. Weakened my opposition of Inter Milan. How weird is it that he even went to Inter Milan like he usually does, like yeah. he did in real life just a couple of seasons after. Uh, he scored 15 goals last year in the Serie A, only at 19 years of age. He's got two for me already and four, and he hasn't even started those four games. He's only started two of them. So it's a great start for Lataro. Really good start. And then finally, Marquinhos, your old mate from yeah. Manchester United. I needed better options at the back. Uh, he signed for me on the same day as he played for Man United because I couldn't <laughs> use him in a game. I literally signed a confirmed. I thought, oh, I signed literally on the day that I need him as well. Bang, go into the game, unavailable because he played the same day. And I thought, where? And he played <laughs> at Old Trafford against Arsenal in a 0 0 draw. So he literally signed, he played at 12.30 and then that, he jumped, that, on yeah, jumped on a plane <laughs> straight from there. Didn't even make any sign. There we go. £49 million. Uh, I've changed tactics slightly. I've gone for a switcheroo in the midfield there. So I've got a deep line playmaker with Lucci because um, he is left footed. So I moved that across there. So my best 11. It doesn't put the Taro Martinez in the team, but I think a strike free, a, a, like a three three striker formation, I wouldn't have had enough depth in there. And I kind of wanted to keep my wingers going because the tactic itself last year, I was just close, no cigar, really, I think. So Mbappe, Villa, and, of course, the Tower Martinez up front. Those three can interchange, as well as Goran Pandev for that experience. Sane on the left, Douglas Costa on the right. Jamie Tino can hopefully get more game time because he's complained about that. And then Marquinhos and Laporte at the back. Should be absolutely fine. My schedule. I started off against Inter Milan. This was before I signed. Uh, oh, no, I did sign the Tower Martinez because he actually played in the game, sorry. Uh, he got a 7.2 rating, even though we lost 3-0. Not great. Uh... 5-0 against Napoli, though. Kicked it back off. 5-1 against Sampdoria. Okay, we're all good. Yeah, Messina, 4-0. Yeah. Uh, then it's AC Milan next, Ooh. and that's the tough one. Um, obviously, they lost their manager, and Louis van Gaal joined. So, not looking forward to trying to beat Louis van Gaal. Because, I hope he haunts you like he haunted me. I was going to say, he, he caused <laughs> you a lot of trouble, and they've made some good sign-ins, such as Raphael Varane, my former player. A best bud of mine. I signed him twice. <laughs> so I, I might struggle against AC Milan this season. That could be... I think that could be the one that at the end of the season might cost me the league. They already won the league last year. They got a, a better manager in. Uh, yeah, and I think they might cost me this season. They're unbeaten so far, as is Udinese, who, again, have a decent team. Uh, so backs against the wall for the both of us. We're both in new countries. So there's lots of things for us to win. I need to win both in this country. Dad didn't even win anything in the last country and he still left. But of course, Champions League, I don't have to worry about that. I'm in a group with Real Madrid, Stuttgart and Celtic. I've won all the European competitions. It's all down to what I can do in Italy right now. And Dad's got stuff to do in Germany as well as the UEFA Cup, which doesn't look like he's going to drop into. No. So let's see what happens. The following fixture at the San Siro for my Lazio team was a fantastic battle between two elite clubs. And I had the golden advantage of being 3-1 up, but then I threw it all away. As Adam Ujek scored a hat-trick in the second half to win the game for AC Milan, including two goals in stoppage time. But I did follow that up with an 11-0 win. And outside of a remarkable 4-0 loss to Porto in the Champions League, Dad literally hasn't dropped any games, going on an insane winning streak, which by the new year already sees his Bayern Munich side running away with the Bundesliga. Nice. My Lazio team wasn't doing too bad either outside of a couple of draws of Siena and Udinese and we sit in second place still just three points behind the champions AC Milan. I didn't play AC Milan next until the first weekend of February where we fell behind because of an own goal but we dominated the fixture and it wasn't long before we equalised thanks to Villa but from the AC Milan kickoff seconds later Mbappe parks on a mistake and lobs the keeper to win the game. Even still, a couple of draws in January and another at the start of March, and AC Milan cling on to their top spot by four points. But this is where the season got incredibly interesting for the both of us. Because we had both reached the Champions League semi-final and managed to avoid each other. And while I look to bank myself in the final with a first leg win, Dad is trailing Barcelona. It wasn't the only final we had to look forward to either, however, as Dad had reached the DFB Pacal final two to face Gladbach. Oh, and I also had a cup final to play too in the Coppa Italia against AC Milan. In the second leg of the Champions League, despite Dad's Bayern Munich side conceding an early goal, 
they still fought back and scored four goals of their own in Munich to mount the full comeback. Meaning they beat Barcelona 7-6 on aggregate, while I also defeated Arsenal minutes a Champions League final against each other in Germany held at Dortmund Stadium. But on German soil or not, my Lazio team was prepared to shock the world as we completely destroyed Dad's Bayern Munich team, scoring two goals in each half without being put under much threat at all, or having to pick the ball out of our own goal. We were rampant and lifted the Champions League trophy, winning 4-0 on the night. Have you ever seen a more one-sided final than that? Got it. It was even played in Germany. <laughs> Absolutely good. I can't win a cup to Four save my nil. life, can I? Four. I am just nil. jinxed with cups. Yeah. Well, 4 0 in the Champions League final. I think that's my fourth yeah. Champions League final in a row. I think so, yeah. Uh, third in four years as well, which isn't too bad either. Now, into the other stuff. I won another cup. The Coppa Italia. Bang. That's one that I really needed against AC Milan. 3-1 in Rome. That was a good result. Yes, definitely. Yeah. They, they got hell of a side. Yeah. Ronaldo scored just... their goal again, so he's still looking good as well, isn't he? Unfortunate that they managed to just keep plugging out wins in the Serie A. And Louis van Gaal has caused me a bit of trouble. He's done me a big favour there. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I can't be too mad because I've got a competition under under the belt. And I'm, I'm actually enjoying my time at Lazio, so... Yeah. Uh, another year, I'm not like, oh, God, another year. Um, like you kind of was at Manchester United. Yeah, I'm just okay, yeah. But it's just annoying that I was so close because these last two games here, Udinese and Juventus, where I've lost, has cost me the, the league title and cost me a very a remarkable treble because I went on a run for so long where I hadn't lost a game. Yeah. All the way in since AC Milan <laughs> in September. So Good run, yeah. That was, you know... For, t for not even in any competition up until that Udinese game. In the Champions League then, I knocked out Arsenal in the semi-final while you were knocking out Barcelona. 7-6 on aggregate yeah, as well. A good, good home win. Yeah. 4-1 to knock them out. Uh, in the quarter-final, while you were knocking out Villarreal, I was knocking out Real Madrid. So we knocked out the big two Spanish sides. We did, yeah. So it was a good, good... Could do a bit of run for us. Yeah. Uh, you knocked out Juventus there. I was knocking out West Ham. He managed to get into the round of 16. See, Valencia beat Man United as well. So yeah. I'm pleased for that. That was my old team beating your yeah. old team. Lovely stuff. Osvaldo Bremen was beating Leon 6 5 as well. Some lots of different stories going on. Yeah. But I couldn't get it done. That's annoying. But never mind. Another year. That helps me at big stuff. Another season with young Kylian Mbappe leading the line for me. Looking absolutely incredible. And he does look absolutely incredible now yeah. at 21 years of age. Uh, he got 33 goals for this season. 29 from Villa, uh, who also looks absolutely insane. Lataro Martinez off the bench got 28. And he's not complaining about the lack of first-team football. So those three are, are good to go for next year. Now, Douglas Costa did actually do really well with 20 assists, even though I was thinking about getting rid of them last year. Um... Yeah, a lot, of, a lot of good performances this year. I, th I think I just need to check. I don't know what I need to change for the league form, but I need to change something. I need, I need to do something so that I can overcome AC Milan because I don't know what it is yet, but I, I'm struggling against uh, AC Milan in that league. They've beat me twice um, now in the in the last couple of seasons. I mean, it's been difficult. They were the team that I feared, weren't they, when I was at Roma? Yeah. And I, I just I had to get it done that season because I felt they were going to come through and, and do what they're doing. Yeah. So I might just have to go balls out, all attack, kind of like what I did at Valencia. Yeah. And just go for it in this fight in not final year, but uh, in this third season. Sorry. Uh, while I'm in Italy, Dad, your first season at Bayern Munich. Yeah. How did it go? Well, you won the league. 86 points. Never looked in trouble. Look how bad 60. the rest of the league done. 20. You were, that was a guinea. Yeah. I mean, you, you you literally have got to try and get into these these leagues sometimes and, and hopefully the teams around you just fail and they did miserably this season. God, yeah. You didn't even have a top scorer. No. Makes no I mean, sense, I was scoring yeah. a lot of goals, mind you, so I'm, I would imagine I just shared it around. Yeah. But, um, yeah. I'm pleased with that. Victor and Achibi's up there. Bloody hell. At least I got um, one trophy in the cabinet. Yeah, 
that I've been waiting for a long time for. I mean, like I said at the beginning of the season as well, you can afford to lose four games in this league and we still win the league, and I did. Yeah. I only drew two, and, and I think that's, where I, that's what won me the league, really. But you will be staying in Germany because yeah. you didn't get the DFB for Got to the final, and look what team beat me. Well, look, God, look what team God. hammered me. 5 1 as Who was well. the team that beat me the first game of the season? Yeah. And they only finished in sixth yeah. place on 57 points. Absolutely. When I got to the final of both the Champions League final and that final, I was praying that I would win one of them, that one. I didn't. Yeah. I, didn't, <laughs> I thought I'd, that'd be job done and I can get out of, get out of Germany. That's right, yeah. So, but now I'm there, for, move on. I'm there for another season. I might as well stay. I've got a really good team. I've got a really good transfer budget. So 21 million. I've got an idea who I'm going to buy already. A couple of players I'm going to buy already. And um, I've just got to do the same as you really I've just got to make sure I'm really strong in certain areas to make sure I go on and win yeah I mean you got a cup competition they're always diff more difficult to yeah, win you as can, we've established yeah you can't, you can't afford to lose one game and that's yeah. it isn't it so bit, bit, bit harder I, might, I guess where you're sort of going to be more out and out I might have to be a little bit more conservative, conservative yeah, yeah. Uh, you had a lot of goal scorers which is yeah. I think I mean, it, you look this is why you 20. can afford to be conservative because you know Victor Osman Morata Rahim and they're scoring goals yeah. 20 goals 20 goals 24 from your winger there, Bernadeschi, 25. I mean, that's brilliant. From it, both really? Morata and Osman, yeah. yeah. They're sharing the goals around, so that's not too bad. You know, Trent got 12 assists. He's had a great season. Bit yeah. of development in there, too. So, you know, you've got the players. They're all young, too. You haven't got a, an aging team. You've you've actually built the side really well, yeah. where the ones that are old, I mean, the only one you really need to think about, to be honest, is Schweinsteiger. Yeah. But he's not retiring. No. He got 20 goals and 19 assists. And he's still good. He's still good. He's thirty. He's just more of a, uh, you know, like a and a playmaker. A he's going to be a, a good backup for me. Yeah, if I bring in another world class player. Yeah, you're hundred twenty one million pound to replace Mertesacker and Schweinsteiger's positions. Yeah, because all of these, yeah, all right. There's a lot of them which says like thirty three, but they're not. You start an eleven. They're just the ones that you were forced to play because of injuries and yeah. uh, lack of registration purposes in the Champions League. That's so why they're. If you go down to the 11. bottom, Fred's still injured. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. from the original broken leg. No, imagine that. <laughs> he didn't. He didn't actually play. He didn't play a game all year. So I don't know what happened there. What? Just kept he just, getting injured. Did he just get to come back again in a injury? No, he, he had a fractured lower leg, which was there, and then he's only just been out with a damaged kneecap. He just hasn't played. He's he never played. Get, I mean, I did bring him in to be a, a backup from my midfield. Yeah, and obviously that's what he was. But when he <laughs> and the rest, he wasn't available when we yeah. did need him. Yeah. He's, didn't, couldn't even do the water boy. Um, so yeah, that's that's. Get, I guess that's what you need to focus on for next yeah, year. Definitely. Unless you want to go to Valencia. Did I see the Man United job? No, that was the assistant manager. Oh, was it? All right. The Valencia manager job, though. Jurgen Klinsmann's lead. Is favorite. available. They have sacked their manager, who was Victor Fernandez, who took over from me. After leaving Werder Bremen, Liverpool. Well, that's a, that's the thing. We can only take over from each other after there's been another manager in place, isn't it? In so, between, yeah. yeah. Uh, he won the Super Cup, and that is it. While I was there, I won eight cups and a league, including obviously the Champions League twice. Yeah. So this uh, is very much still the same team. They still have Cesc Fabregas. They still have Mohamed Salah, and they have two hundred and two million pound in the bank. They've still got Allison. They've still got Lukaku. They've even got the Greek centre-back that I signed. Probably the best centre-back in the world. Marco Royce is still there. Monet Paquette is still there. It's just a, such a shame I lost that cup final, isn't it? Yeah, because that would have been such that. an easy out for you. Yeah. They've even signed Bernardo Silva since I've been gone. Yeah. So they've done really well. Now they're without a manager because they finished in third place, 87 points. And that was enough to sack him. <laughs> uh, I don't know. That's the first time Barcelona's won the league in a while. And obviously yeah. they've just introduced a new manager in Manuel Pellegrini who left AC Milan. So he's done well there. There's not many occasions where a big job in Spain comes up. But that's the problem, isn't it? I've got a big job in Germany. I mean, I might leave Germany to go to there. And I'm much struggling to, to win that go cup. Back to Germany. Yeah. I mean, at least I know I've got by far. When you go in the league stage, I got by far the best team in Germany at the moment. Yeah, it's just the cup you yeah. need to get hold of. Well, what's going to happen then? Will Dan make a decision and maybe even go to Spain, or will he stay here and get that DFB for Cal? 
and I've got a business to do with that down AC Milan who's causing us a lot of trouble throughout this whole retro glory hunter. But there is a couple of trophies to add to the trophy cabinets of our retro glory hunters, and it comes one each. Let's have a look. That's four total Champions Leagues won already, but more importantly, it's a Copper Italia to add to my Retro Glory Hunter cabinet. Bad loss there from Dad, and he might actually see this as a bad season, despite winning and adding the Bundesliga trophy to his cabinet this season too. On to season number 14. After failing to not win the DFP Pacao in season number 13, Dad had big plans for the new year. And that started by signing Cristiano Ronaldo, now aged 35 years old, for £27 million. I was looking for a more creative striker, and I found Maxi Gomez, who was on loan at Sporting last season, and I signed him from Arsenal. Meanwhile, Dad was also going back to his old club and putting in a bid for James Rodriguez at Manchester United. But he wasn't going to stop there, there was more. As Dad's next target was Sergio Ramos, whose experience could be crucial for Bayern Munich, and he's still an excellent player and wouldn't cost too much money for the short-term project. Dad also decided to switch around his tactical style of things to be more solid in the cup this year with a 4-2-3-1 variation. The Euros were being played this summer, and it was victory this time round for the Dutch, who defeated Spain in the final. A cracking game too as they won 3-2 in Edinburgh. And a lot of international roles popped up because of this. But with the season drawing closer, I was targeting a defensive midfielder and Blaise Matuidi was the chosen option as he fitted in perfectly with my remaining budget. And before you know it, Dad's first test of the season was against Gladbach. And it didn't go well as a mistake from kickoff led to the only goal of the game for Gladbach. I had an early test too against rivals Roma who won the Europa League last season in the UEFA Super Cup. There was an early goal too in this game but it was me who was celebrating. Another followed in the second half when Joe Moutinho found the net and all Roma could do was find a consolation goal late on. Dad, you signed the legendary Cristiano Ronaldo. This is the first big signing for me and I didn't even have to spend a lot of money to get no. him. I was I mean, complete to this. Yeah, he's 35 yeah. but he's still absolutely incredible. Yeah. £27 million pound after what a career he's had at AC Milan, really. Yeah. Done uh, you a favour as well, I think. You actually have, to yeah. be fair. He was caused me a lot of trouble. I mean, last yeah. season, 19 goals, 17 assists. I'm hoping he does that for me. Yeah. I'm hoping he does because... I, mean, I, I didn't even know about buying him because obviously I wanted AC Milan to stay good in your league. But uh, yeah, that's... at the end of the day, I'm, I'm more interested in myself in trying to get this cup. As soon as you uh, buy it, I was like... <laughs> Yeah. Jackpot. Because they are still causing me trouble. I mean, Louis van Gaal hasn't gone anywhere. No, that's there were so it. many jobs that popped up across the summer in the, in the the well, after the Euros. And I yeah. thought, the one job I could have done with coming up was the Netherlands. Yeah. And they, they ended up winning the old thing. So Louis van Gaal will stay put uh, as the AC Milan manager. But that's fine. Okay, he haunted you for a while. He's yeah. now going to haunt me instead. Uh, but that's not the only signing you made, Dad. You also brought in a couple of recognisable faces as well. James Rodriguez from Manchester United, your old player. Yeah, I need an attacking midfielder because I lost them. Um, what was it called? The Ozil. Ozil for free. Didn't yeah. interested in signing a new, new contract. So. Yeah, he's gone to Juve. Was yeah. In my league again. So, uh, so I think yeah, that's a good replacement. million pound after buying him at Manchester United, remember. Yeah. Uh, so there we go. Jose Gaia, which is an old left back that I used to have at Valencia. Yeah. Really good still. Right, we, I, I, was, I had a weak left back, side yeah. of, of my uh, defence, so that just strengthened that up, really. Yeah. And then Sergio Ramos, 30 yeah. million. Another person, I've, you know, a legend that I get in for yeah. quite cheap as well. So, And he just sort of like sews up my um, my centre-backs. It gives you a lot of options because he also oh. plays very well in that right-back yeah. slot That's as right, well. Yeah. Uh, and then we, we could, Jorginho, and you're always buying an Arsenal player. There's <laughs> Jorginho. <laughs> just, he was, he's an actual... Uh, as um, a reserve one there. Really. Yeah. I don't think he'll get into my first team, but um, he's good to have if I have any injuries. So. And then finally, the only name that you might not recognise yeah. is Demarlio Watt, who is an English new gen that's at uh, Aston Villa, left-sided centre-back. We've both had a look at him the last couple of years, haven't yeah, we? Yeah, we have, yeah. Uh, but now he's 22 and he's got just a little bit better yeah. at Aston Villa. And he's straight into my first team as yeah, well. Yeah, and he goes into your first team. He's played quite Ramos, well and even scored Ramos a goal. Ramos beside him, so looking good. But yeah, you've actually sold £80 million pounds worth of players. A lot of players went out for around about £10 million, pound, like yeah. squad sign-ins. Uh, and you kind of just like bumped the ones that were in the first team down a bit, to be fair. That's and you right, changed yeah. your tactic yeah. to a 4-2-3-1. Try to be a little bit more sort of full in the midfield rather than being full attack, even though they're, they're still good going forward like with the wingers and all that. But um, 
That's what I'm trying to do. Yeah. So obviously you've got one thing to do this That's year, right, yeah. mainly, is the DFB Pokal. Of course, yeah. you can still win the UEFA Cup, but I think your team might be too good for that, depending on your group stage, of course. But that's I mean, your starting 11 my defense, there. My defence is, is really good with the guy sat right in front of them as well. Yeah. I've, I'm quite good at defence now, so I mean, he's, he's world class as well. Yeah, he's so. absolutely, cl- yeah, absolutely playing, brilliant. Playing him in the anchor role as well. Yeah. So he'll just sit there. And hopefully I'm good going forward then. Yeah. Uh, you lost the DFB Super Cup. I can't beat this thing can I? against Gladbach. You've got to hope they get eliminated <laughs> from the DFB Pokal because that's your screw. Oh, it's always one team, whichever league I go to, is one team, and they're not it usually it's not one of the best teams. It's just an average team. It's just a team. bogey team. It's just a bogey team. And yeah, Gladbach is my team. Yeah, uh, you scraped through the yeah. first round, fourteen uh, nil against Lot. You didn't even change like your style. You kept nope. your strongest eleven. <laughs> strongest out side out for that one game. Yeah, uh, beat Werder Bremen first game of the. Bundesliga yeah, with that. away from home that's Home your main rivals yeah from a player you almost <laughs> went and signed him, to be yeah. uh, 4-1 but then a 2 all draw yeah, against Cologne this. which you went ahead in the 92nd minute yeah. and then conceded in the 93rd from James McCarthy of all people yeah. scored the winner there or the equaliser so your Champions League group as we mentioned I think you should be fine going through Chelsea's yeah. in it but Ajax and Anderlecht I think you're a lot better should, than them cruise past that yeah yeah so the UEFA Cup probably is not an option for you this year no. uh, but the DFB Pokal your next round is against Duisburg so you should, should be go going through, there, through yeah. that although yeah. they are in the Bundesliga it's a team that you should be beating mm-hmm. okay now Lazio I played Roma in my first game of the season, uh, which was the uh, UA for Super Cup, and I defeated them. But let's have a look at the transfers before we get there. We both had a challenge and start. Uh, I let go of £28 million worth of players. I even lost Andrea Lucci, which I did not want to do, uh, but he had already signed to go to Arsenal, unfortunately. So uh, one good season with me, and then he's off. But I think I've replaced him quite well. Now, I didn't sign anybody at the end of the season or, or anything like that, so it's come on. All It's just these four here, £184 million, Lucas Ter- Herrera, uh, who is an Arsenal player, who was an Arsenal player anyway. Centre midfielder, plays in that Mazzala role quite well, comes deep to get balls, something that I really like because uh, I've changed around some of the roles and changed my tactic a little bit. Maxi Gomez from Arsenal again, £44 million. This is a very good deep line forward, uh, something that I might actually use this season. He's a non-EU player, it was a risk, <laughs> but it was a risk I was willing to take. Jafar Case, £55 million, a Dutch centre-back who is good with both feet, um, leading in the Serie A as a centre-back and has just won the Euro. So it was a good signing as well uh, to bring in Jafar. Near Jafar? No, he was only at Palermo. <laughs> They're getting worse. <laughs> <laughs> Blaise Matweedy was the last signing. I made £35 million. Oh, he's 33, but... He just listened to one of your jokes as well, the looks of it. Yeah, he's, he was unhappy. I was like, did you have to come from Jafar, uh, near Jafar? And he's just like... <laughs> so he joined from Juve. So I, I was surprised that they actually let me sign him, really. Yeah. Two players there, or well, three players actually from my league. I'm just mm. weakening the rest of the teams. So that's, oh, that deal, was, yeah. that's my plan. Uh, tactics, as I said, I changed it ever so slightly. On the right-hand side, I got rid of my right winger, uh, and now I play three up front. Now, it does put Mbappe in that centre-forward on support role. I might change it to a DLF, and then hopefully it might change it round slightly. It doesn't change it round slightly, but never mind. I was hoping it would put uh, the Maxi Gomez in there, maybe put Mbappe either side, but that's yeah. fine. These three strikers alone are deadly, oh, so we're all good. Yeah. Uh, Jonathan McHale goes in the Mazala role, which I've added in to, to kind of fill that gap now on the right-hand side. I'm still keeping the inverted wing back on defend in De Silvestri to kind of keep a three at the back, uh, an inverted wing back on support to kind of help the midfield on the left-hand side because Sané is still out there. Now, my schedule so far, I beat Roma, as I mentioned, 2-1 in that UEFA Super Cup, which is great. They're my rivals. They won the UEFA Cup last season. So it was a great, great uh, European conquest for, yeah. for Rome last yeah. year. Uh, then we've got Fiorentina, 7-0 at the start of the season. But then I go and draw to Parma, which it's not great. Mbappe had a, had a pinch and equaliser in the 90th minute. And Romini, 4-1 against them. Now, my Champions League group is a little bit harder. We've got Real Madrid, we've got Porto, and we've got Dortmund. I think Dortmund are top of the league in, in my league at the moment. Yeah. I mean, we've only played three games, I think it is. But Yeah. yeah so, so that's not an easy task. Not though, at all. No. But then yeah. you've won both trophies already. So yeah. you could do with being knocked out straight away. I am the current holders of the Champions yeah. League. Four-time winners. 
beat some chump from Munich <laughs> last year. 4-0 in the final. There we go. So I just need the league title this season. I've already dropped points, which isn't great. AC Milan haven't, and they've won four out of four, including being into Milan and Fiorentina 5 0. So I need them to carry on. It's not been great for me at the start of this season. And and I was you know, I'm, you know, I'm looking at their side. They've obviously lost Cristiano Ronaldo, but they spent £142 million on this man here, uh, who is a right winger, which basically replaces him. Yeah. So no. I'm like, oh, great. I'd rather have just kept Cristiano <laughs> Ronaldo. Uh, they also last year bought Jamal Musiala off you during the, yeah. the January, who's turned out to be quite a good 17-year-old as well. So they are like well on course to just continue to be amazing next season without skipping a beat, and I really hope that that's not the case. But anyway... Let's see what happens throughout this season. Despite so many bad results in the Bundesliga with five draws and two losses, Daz Munich side managed to stay in first place with two points ahead of Leverkusen. But the bad news came in the game we joked about as Dad conceded late against Duisburg. And somehow they failed to score in the 90 minutes, losing 1-0 in the DFB Pokal second round. My form in the lead was stinking as well and it meant I was trailing in fifth place, but surprisingly, only six points off the top spot. Carrying on into the new year, Daz's form got a lot worse and he even dropped down the table to fourth place and five points behind Leverkusen. And Daz's position at the club began to look precarious with the threat of getting the boot if things don't change. I find myself trailing my old team Valencia in the Champions League round of 16 3-0 in the first leg. But the second leg was absolutely insane as we managed to pull back an almighty comeback scoring some fantastic goals at home and even putting ourselves 4-3 up on aggregate in the 84th minute from Kylian Mbappe. Until the 93rd minute, Valencia equalised, sending the game into extra time right at the death. But it was the French striker yet again who managed to complete the comeback a second time, scoring extra time, the winner to send us through. And in the quarterfinals, we destroyed our fierce rivals Roma, as Daz by Munich was also eliminated, and we pushed through to the semi-final two, meaning yet another Champions League final, this time against Man City. But Dad had other problems as he failed to win the Bundesliga or the DFB Pokal. And that meant the board were calling him in to talk about his job, a make or break meeting. That somehow he survived another day and another season. Anyway, it's Champions League final time for me yet again. And the final was very one-sided and unfortunately, it wasn't in my favour as Manchester City scored two goals in quick succession and kept plugging away for more. Mbappe did find the net, but the day was not Lazio's to celebrate. Champions League final yet again, Dad, but this time I couldn't do it. Yeah, unusual for you to lose one like that. Yeah, I think that is the second Champions League final that I've lost, but I've already won four. Yeah. So was... <laughs> uh, but I think overall, it was actually a bad season for me because I was never really in contention no. for Serie A. No. I did, however. Win the Coppa Italia again. Coppa didn't need to win. That's two times for that one. But again, you already just love completed it. Cups, didn't you? Just very good at winning the cups. Just cannot win the league. Uh, a bit of a way off as well. Nine points behind Juventus. And I did mention, didn't I? Yeah. Juve could cause a bit yeah. of trouble. Uh, Kyle Jr. was there. Yeah, there's a couple of players that have gone to Juve. Kai Havertz being one of you them. You looked like you were like six points off top of the league most of the season didn't you yeah I was, I was teetering around third yeah. and fourth for a long period of time really uh, never even got into the first bit, place once you had a bad mid-season there about it didn't you really yeah AC Milan dropped off and that's where Juventus then took over and they dominated the rest of the season uh, AC Milan weren't as good as what they were last year even though they lost Ronaldo and replaced him with a £122 million player whatever he was but still they were still a bit of a threat uh, and the games against them weren't that weren't, well you know, it wasn't like a fantastic time for me. I lost there against Juve 2-0. Uh, AC Milan in the league 5-2 there. It was, a, it was a couple of tricky games towards the end of the season. And earlier on in the season, I actually beat them in the Super Cup. It's just annoying that that obviously meant nothing. I did win in the home fixture 3-0 in the league. And then you lost to Roma right after that. But then I lose to Roma and I lose to Messina. And it's like, okay, you can see why I struggled so much. And Milan, the game before the Super Cup was uh, a loss as well. And there was just a tricky period around February where I dropped too many points yep. and put myself out of contention for the Serie A. Never mind. At least I was safe in my job because Dad... <laughs> was not I mean Manchester City by the way have just won the quadruple yeah which is mental considering they don't have 
the financial backing that yeah. they do in real life. Yeah, They've actually right, yeah. done it uh, legitimately without breaking 115. <laughs> That's a thing for another day. Uh, you somehow, Dad, managed to keep your job. Yeah, I think I went groveling to the board and, and on my hands and knees and they gave me a job. <laughs> yeah. You're very, very lucky. Yeah, was, you've yeah. got a lot of things now. You've, I just, you've accepted oh, I reduced know. responsibilities. I mean, losing that... Well, not giving too much... But we already know in the cup. I lost that cup game and I just sat oh, around. I lost that 1-0. I just don't know. And that's what... From there on, I just I was struggling then, really. Yeah. It was, you know, a bad, bad game to lose. That's the one I really wanted to do. I, I, I set the team I fought to win the cup. You know, I, I wasn't too worried about the league, and I still come second. Even yeah, I wasn't you're too some worried. way off though. But I was a long way, you know, behind. I, I had a better end of the season to bring me, crawl me back into it. Really, I mean, Victor Osman only got 19. Yeah. So the change of tactic was maybe too defensive. Probably was, yeah. Because your goal difference was only plus 38, and usually you're slapping a high goal difference on yeah. there. Uh, so if you look at this, you only actually scored 68 goals. Yeah, and I'm usually way above that now. Yeah. Uh, you conceded the least amount, though. But Ooh. game by game, Werder Bremen did a lot better with the goals yeah. that they managed to score and not. And they actually won 23 games compared to your 19. So there's, I mean, maybe playing the, the, the two wingers and the um, attacking midfielder with one striker is probably where I went wrong. Yeah. yeah. Which is unusual because I'm usually full out straight. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They converted four more draws into wins, and that's obviously yeah. the the points difference between you you two. Well, there. At least I know where I've gone wrong, and, and hopefully I, the, the club will give me a chance to to, to correct it. So yeah, I'm changing that definitely, and then right, well. go for it. Uh, They've given me a good budget to go for it as well. If it makes you feel any better, right? Duisburg, the team that knocked you out, got relegated as bottom. I didn't see that. So that's even worse. Does that make you feel better yeah, or worse? Yeah, I'm really. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to go over in the corner and cry now. It's just dumb me in this. Just shouldn't have brought it up, Luke. Just shouldn't have brought it up. <laughs> Never mind. How uh, can you get beat by bottom of the league? <laughs> in the second round. But there we go. Uh, Victor Osman, 24 goals. Christian Ronaldo, 24 goals. It's Christian done the enough. job for me, really. That's what I, I mean, you know, 24 goals and I put him out in the wing. I'm, I'm pleased with that. And he's played 47 games. So, yeah. you know, he's done well for me, really. He can still go in for next season. And his season natural too. fitness is still 19, so he's going to be there again for me next season. Yeah. Uh, Hamas Rodriguez picked up a bit of an injury towards the end of the season, but he's been out for the last few games, but he's been okay this season. Uh, you'll sign in there from your old club. Just, I mean, yeah. when you look at that, two players in the 20s and not no one else in the team. So, no. I mean, that's what I've got. Like, yeah. So, like you say, well, Absolutely. I haven't scored enough goals. No. Okay, but next season, you've got £118 million pound to change that. Yeah. So... Let's see whether you can do that. And I've been given just 17 million, despite getting to the final of the Champions League. But I think all the right pieces are there for me. Oh, definitely. You Alex. need to put them in the right positions. Yeah. That's my trouble. Because uh, I've only got a couple of years left with some of these players, like Sir Di Silvestri. I need to find, uh, find a bit of form these next couple of years because my midfield and my right back are very old right now. Actually, my both my fullbacks are quite old. They're both 33. My midfield's 34. Mm. Yeah, whether I need to raise some money and some funds and find myself a younger centre midfield, I don't know. Uh, but I know for sure I definitely can't play this next year. It didn't work how I was intending for it to work. That's probably the tactic I should have played. Yeah, I played this <laughs> so that in the league I'd be better and I wouldn't be as good in the Cups. Yeah. And then I got to the final of both Cups, winning one of them. <laughs> and when no one near in the league, it makes no sense to me and I don't know what's going on. But anyway, I've only got £17 million next season. Goals-wise, 38 from Kylian Mbappe. Uh, he is wanted, however, from a number of clubs. I'm not going to sell him. Uh, Letaro Martin has got 31. Villa even got 27 with 19 goals. So that's very good from the young Italian. Or say young, he's 27 19 now. 19 assists. We're, yeah, with 19 assists. Yeah. Uh, 24 goals from Maxi Gomez, who came off the bench quite a lot. And 14 as well for Barbara Gallo. So, yeah, it's going forward... Lethal, yep. just cannot. I cannot afford to lose that many games again next season. Uh, losing eight in total and losing against quite a lot of the teams around me, I think, was a problem as well as you're always going to get a couple of stinkers across the season. Oh, 100. But losing both games against the the title winners, Juve, is you know if you want to be title contentions, you need to be playing a lot. I better. mean, you look at the teams all around you. I did notice you lost against Roma, you lost against Sampdoria. You lost against AC Milan, you lost yeah. against Juventus. So you lost against the teams around you, which did cost you the league. Yeah. Different than losing against Bob the league. Because the, <laughs> the rest of the, the team, I mean, Mbappe was the top scorer of the league, but he also, we also had four of the top five highest average rating. Yeah. So that's what it's cost me. So, I mean, if 
there was opportunities. There is an opportunity to go to Inter Milan, but I think I'd be silly to move. Uh, as well as Everton, that's in the Premier League. Uh, if I wanted to obviously take that up with the Premier League being the only league that I've got left to do, as well as yourself as well uh, to do. So I can't see us leaving. I mean, you've just scraped to get your job back. From, I can't, from I can't the leave jaws. The, I'm in the best team in Germany and, and I'm, I, I need one trophy, so I've got to stay there, really. Yeah. Um, and you know, with Man United, I did struggle and they weren't the best team in the country, now, and I won't get the budget. They, this buyer are giving me a budget to do it, so I'll be silly to leave. Yeah. Well, it's all to play for next season. Going into season number 15, my Glory Hunter cabinet is just three trophies away from completion, with this season's target, the Scudetto. Dad, on the other hand, still has six trophies remaining, with the DFB Pokal and the UEFA Cup being the target set. And he starts the summer bringing in Europe's number one striker target for most clubs, Dario Orlando of Torino, a 6'3 Italian 21-year-old. As well as trying to bring in some very recognisable players who have yet to lead their home nations, such as Arthur, Samuel Conga, and Darwin Nunez. Hilariously though, Conga rejected him, going to Arsenal. I had decided, however, with my very small budget this season to sell my wingers and adopt a more narrow formation. Trying to encapsulate a narrow 4-3-3 and really go for the lead title this season with all-out attack. And I have found the perfect attacking centre midfielder who I believe could help me achieve this season's goal from Finland and currently at Portsmouth. However, that player shocked us all once I offered him a contract. Turning me down, a multiple Champions League winning manager to stay at Pompey and to stay playing under Billy Davies at a relegation scrap inside in the Premier League. Have it your way, kid. My backup plan is to go through Coutinho, who is at Inter Milan, which will also weaken their team. Who, funny enough, I ended up playing against in the first game of the season and it was a very one-sided match, where they mounted just one shot on goal all game. Dad, I think you possibly found a, the bargain of the series so far, maybe. Oh, 100%. 21 years of age, 57 million pound. He looks incredible. Yeah. So, great really, striker. Really, I mean, from last season, we knew I, I, I didn't score enough goals. Yeah. So, straight out, got myself an A1 striker, I think. Definitely, yeah. Yeah, yeah. He's for that price. Not really got a weakness either. He's 6'3 no. as well, so he's good in the air with 7, 17 jump and reach. Decent with both feet, comes deep to get to the ball. He tries first time shots, so he's an all rounder. Yeah. Can't argue with that one. Fantastic sign in so far. As well, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, you didn't actually sell that many players. Only £14 million pound went out. Well, with the budget I had, I didn't have to sell players to get the money in that I needed. No. So I thought, right, don't. Don't sell a load of players like I normally do to get a load of money. Let's keep a big squad in there, strong squad. That's what yeah. I'm trying to do. So I'm just building on it more than anything. And instead, you just found loads of bargains. Yeah. I mean, Darwin Nunez hasn't moved from Uruguay yet. What a pickup. Eight million. Yeah, eight million <laughs> pound as like a backup striker for yeah. you in Barator. Arthur, again, hasn't moved from Brazil. He's 25 now. And yeah, he's fantastic. Can strengthen on midfield a bit more. Four million. Yeah. And then Chris Guito, a bit of a veteran at Juve for 19 million I know he's a bit of a veteran, but at the end of the day, if you look at what he, what he can do and, you know, how good he is, I mean, his natural fitness is still 19. Yeah. To sit next to Ramos or just be a reserve runner across the back three? Yeah. What more could I ask for, really? Not bad. Just strength of the squad again. Yeah, and that was because you did change the tactic. And I will say, I changed mine first. <laughs> because you're going to look at Dad's. He's gone for a 4-3-3 narrow formation. You've got an anchor in there, a centre midfield on attack. Uh, and those are specific because the likes of Arthur and James Rodriguez pops into this role very nicely and becomes yeah. like a fourth attacking threat, really. Yeah. Not bad. And I've got Trent Arnold on the outside just bombing down the wing as well. Yeah. And with a Victor up there as well. Yeah, Victor Austin, of course, still what there. What a strike force that is now, isn't it? So is Barata. I'm Off like, the bench, you got Cristiano that's Ronaldo. That's the thing, Cristiano Ronaldo can't even get in the team. And yeah. I, and I aimed and I'm about letting him go, uh, but he hasn't complained to me, so... No. I didn't, like I said, I didn't sell anybody, just kept all the squad there, so I got a, what I class now is probably one of my best squads I've ever had. Okay. And you got one goal. Yeah. That's to win the DFB Pokal. That's right, yeah. Uh, but let's see how you started. You had a round one, and you won it. 9 0. <laughs> Scraping through in that Played fixture. my strongest side. <laughs> yeah, you did actually. You made sure you played the strongest team in that game. Yeah. Uh, you beat Werder Bremen 2 1 at the start of the season. Of course, they're usually your title contenders. Yeah. Bochum 5 2, Leverkusen 3 2, and Dortmund 2 1. It was good results there, despite them those two being quite close. Yeah, still, uh, still winning there, so that's the main thing. And at the end of the day, you're not really worried about the league. No. 
just gonna save your job like you did last I'm year. Say, I've got to be careful because I kind of be. They, they will get rid of it because they're watching yeah. me now. And yeah. Then. If anything, you kind of need to win the league, yeah. but it's not a priority in no. your regards of the Glory Hunter. Uh, your Champions League, Dill. I can't see you dropping out of the Champions League into UEFA Cup. There. No. Barcelona, and, and Lons, if, and if I did, I'd, I'd, with them watching me, they they're not going to be wanting to be not knocked out of that. <laughs> oh, that's so the point. Yeah. Let's look at that and think. Well, I'm definitely free. I'm going, yeah. I shouldn't. Go. I mean, I'd be pushing for first to be honest with you. Yeah, yeah, I'm absolutely. Not yeah. A good side, but I've got a really good side. Yeah, yeah. And Pamwe Manuel Pellegrini's still there. The likes of Gavi started to come through the team yeah. now, so that shows how far along we actually are. He's 17 year old Gavi, and I think he's only 19 or 18, 19 <laughs> in real life. So we are very close to modern day now. Yeah. Uh, but let's have a look to see what I've done with my Lazio side so far across the window. Uh, now I was a bit disappointed not to get the midfielder that I really wanted to go for, but I ended up going for Coutinho, and in a way I weakened. A a, a team around me he's a very good center midfield and i kind of like that attack format that's the reason why i got him in i wanted to find the player that gets forward whenever possible turns out he also likes to beat the offside trap so he might be making some really deep runs from yeah. midfield and bringing him in for 51 million pounds i think is, is is a good move uh off the back of obviously last year bringing in blaze matuidi and Torreira, who are more like defensive side of uh, midfield so I think that was a good move I actually sold Jack Grealish for 31 million pound to Real Madrid didn't get into my team last year so it made sense to and then I realized I don't have any backups for my fullback so Angelino from Real Madrid 24 now uh, at left back I thought that was a bit of a bargain because he's only a backup for 19 million pound and pretty much the same price for Hector Bellerin who was at Stuttgart uh, maybe not as good on the ball because his passing is only nine but going forward yeah, he should be all right with a crossing ability of 14 uh, and some very good mental attributes on him as well. So a low price. As I said, I changed my tactic first. It looks like this. Just ever so slightly different, really. Yeah, I've got the one dropping off in the middle. You've got the one in the middle up front and these yeah. two dropping off instead. And we've got sent midfield on the left with Mazala. You've got that the other way around. Yeah. But you've got an anchor in there and I've got a deep line playmaker. Uh, so that's the tactic that I'm going to try and run this season. Blaze Matuidi fits in there quite nicely. Yeah, uh, I think my only real weakness now is my goalkeeper. I can't find a good goalkeeper for love, no money. He's 37. He's still good enough, to be yeah. fair. I mean, for age 37, he's, he's, he's still handy. But yeah, we'll take it anyway. And schedule, it looks like this. I have also won a lot of games. Inter Milan, 6-0. Missing Coutinho, are you boys? <laughs> Napoli, 6-2. They never really quite as good as the Napoli that we knew and loved. Uh, and Fiorentina, 5-1. That's a very good result too. Yeah. Uh, my Champions League group might go on and win it again. Who knows? Uh, <laughs> PSV, Porto and Shakhtar. I should definitely go through. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. <laughs> so there we go. Holders of Manchester City. I'm coming for you. And it's being played at the Camp Nou this season. So who knows? Might have to get and face Barcelona in the final after they knock you out the group stage. <laughs> but I have one task in mind, and that is to win the Serie A. I'm already en route to do that, but those pesky AC Milan boys held by Louis van Gaal are still there and still very good. And they've signed a player that I've been looking at for a while. Well, actually, they signed him uh, a while ago, but he is absolutely incredible. And they spent £80 million this season as well. They brought in James Madison, of all players. So they mean business still. Good player he is. Naming business, uh, they actually bought him from Tottenham too. So yeah. he had actually gone to Tottenham during yeah. the save, which I still find bizarre when that happens. But it's a great start to the season. Let's see if it continues. Dad's threat to his job last season was enough for his Bayern Munich side to really kick on in the Bundesliga this season. And by the new year, they were already seven points ahead after only losing one game. They had sailed through the two rounds of the DFB Pokal 2 and into the quarterfinals, where they will face a tough draw though against Bayer Leverkusen. It was in the Champions League though where it was all going wrong for Bayern Munich, because after six games, they drop out of the competition. But it's good news for Dad, because they go into the UEFA Cup. Meanwhile in Italy, my Lazio side were playing the most attractive attacking football in Europe and the strike force just seemed to gel together and feed off of each other with an obscene amount of goals between them. And although I had lost three games this season, I was six points clear of Napoli in second, 12 points ahead of champions Juventus and had a plus 56 goal difference 
after just 19 games. But once again, it's bad news for Dad for the DFB Pokal. As his Bayern Munich side crash out of the quarterfinals, losing 1-0 to Bayer Leverkusen. I also started to go on a bad run of games into the new year and even lost the Juventus, who started to mount a push for that title again. Closing the gap down to just four points with 11 games to go. Good news for Dad, though. He progresses through to the UEFA Cup quarterfinal. But he's got to face Bayer Leverkusen again, who had already knocked him out of the DFB Pokal. And after drawing the first leg at home, 1-1, there was a worry he would fail again. However, Dad's strike force of Osman and Orlando was too lethal this time round and they won the second leg 4-1. Next up, smashing Zaragoza 3-1 in the semi-final first leg. But if Bayern Munich was to reach the final, it would be an Italian side who would meet them there. The second leg was no different as he won that one 3-1 also, progressing to the final to face Sampdoria in Cardiff. The stage was set and the lineups are in and this could be make or break for the challenge. Win and Dad puts pressure on picking up the hardest trophy to achieve. Lose, and with my strong season in Italy, it could be curtains. Things took off very early when Dad's Munich side put the Sampdoria defence under immense pressure to make a mistake, and it's 1-0 already. Swiftly followed by a reply from a very well-taken Italian corner, though. Ten minutes later, and the game is turned around completely as Sampdoria managed to take the lead. Yet again, a very fast response, this time from Dad's by Munich side, and Dario leaped high to smash the ball into the net. It's 2-2. Second half and Victor Osman is played down the wing and his cross is met by Dan's Italian striker's head again and it's 3-2. However, in the 88th minute, Sampdoria carve open the Munich defence and equalise, sending us into extra time. Where one goal was scored and it was a hat-trick goal, all by the head of Dario Orlando. And it's over, Dad and his Bayern Munich side have finally conquered the UEFA Cup and can add that to his glory hunter cabinet. Well, congratulations, Dad. Well, I'm... <laughs> I've got it in one way, big surprise in another way, but I am over the moon. I mean, what a mixed emotions <laughs> oh, man, of a I season that was. It. I couldn't believe it. I mean, out of I'm... the Champions League, you're like, yeah. uh oh, I'm... out of the cup. Oh no, disaster season. When I got knocked out of the Champions League, I thought, oh, I'm, I'm, that's me gone. Yeah, yeah. Um, Especially out of the cup oh, and out of, early and as well. I just thought, well, that's my season finished really. But obviously, we've been knocked out of the Champions League. It's put me into this, and I'm thinking, could I? Will I? Oh man, it's just this is probably about the luckiest thing that could have happened to me in this challenge so far. Yeah, this is what you needed. Oh, 100 percent I mean, if get... you'd won the DFB Bacow on top of that, I'd be going, uh oh. Yeah. Because you'd only have a couple of places to go yeah, left. That's right, yeah. But luckily for me, a lifeline, mm. you've still got that place yeah, to go. It, this was the biggest one. This was gonna be my oldest one. I mean, it's proved that I've been in three finals now. Yeah. So yeah. the three or four finals, isn't it? And lost them all, so in extra oh, time as well. I mean on. Dario Orlando, we oh. mentioned a bargain pickup. And my what God, is he even, look how much of these increase in just the, in the, the season that you've what played. What a boy that was for me. But a hat trick in the final. Um, and mate, the winner in the 117. What a hat trick it was as well. Edders. What headers he, three headers. Especially the first two, I thought were absolutely amazing headers. The first one really knocked it right down as well. Oh, yeah. What a well, player. There we go. Congratulations. I'm, 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 I am over the moon, but I'm gutted that I've lost that cup again. Yeah. Early so, as well. Quarter final yeah. exit. By I mean, I should be playing my strongest sides because early on he always he always sort of drops it, your best players and plays it, and that's why you've got to get a good squad, really, isn't it? So he's playing strong players again still, but when it gets to that sort of st stage, oh, you should be playing your strongest side all the time. Yeah. Then. So um, walk the um, lead though. Yeah. I'm Eighty-six that again. points to seventy-four. Yeah. Completely no walk the lead. Again. So I should be right job wise. They shouldn't be after my yeah. after my neck this time. So. I mean, Orlando was second to goal scorer, only to Osman there, but he did have the highest average rating and the most yeah. player of the matches, so he probably kind of got like the MVP of the season, uh, that type of thing. But yeah, well, well done. You've still got to stay oh. in Germany, though, because of that DFB Pokal. Um, My favourite trophy haunting yeah. you, and I love it. Lovely stuff. Where well, it goes, isn't it? But I'm going to take this season. I am absolutely over the moon with it. Yeah. You don't really need to do anything to this team, no, to be honest. You've got a couple of retiring players, Mertesacker, Schweinsteiger, and I think uh, Chris Gito is like 35 I mean, the good, now. The good thing about it is I've already had, I've already bought in replacements for them three play players yeah. anyway, so it's not a Just sort of, fill in that squad. Yeah, up. I'm just going to strengthen the squad again. I'm You've got like, 92 million. I might have to just tweak it and make it a little bit more defensive. Was I two attacking? Two just, attacking for a, a cup. Yeah, that's what I'm worried about yeah. now. So I think it's just fill the... Make it a little bit more reserved and then just fill the spaces that I know I could sort of like strengthen but make it a little bit harder for when he does rotate the squad it's still a strong squad defensive boy yeah, I think yeah. that's what I'm looking at for really. yeah but 
What is a mystery is how I did in Italy. Did I do it? Well, yes. By nine points, I won the Syria. That's why I had a Juve. That's why I had to get out of Germany that, that season, really. AC Milan dropped off huge. Yeah, didn't they just? Down to 74. I mean, he's still there. Yeah. But. I took Christian Ronaldo with him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And there's still one game to play left, too. Yeah. And I am still the champions. We've come back right after Dad's fixture, but I've already won the league. I won it. I've got nine. I'm nine points ahead with a game I mean, look, left. Did you, did you see a goal difference? Yeah, incredible, really. Oh. 85. And then, I mean, Lukaku somehow got 25, and I'm not a top goal scorer. <laughs> uh, Martinez got 23. Villa got 21, and Mbappe got 20. The three right behind. But the average ratings. I completely dominated that. And, and Vittorio Villa is just <laughs> mustard. Absolute mustard. So, a fantastic season. Did it get any better? Yes. Coppa Italia winners too against Juve in the final. So, I will leave Lazio after completing the double and winning so a couple you of play, Champions League. You League play as a very well. attacking side, look, and you wins both. Mm. I play a very attacking side. <laughs> Knocked out of the Champions League by Sevilla, though. Yeah. My old team coming to bite me again. They don't like me, do they? 5-4, <laughs> and I could get there knocking me out. Uh, Lons, who knocked you out of the group stage, by the way. We'll have to look at my group stage. Not that by Arsenal. I mean, I'm, I'm chuffed the bits that I did get knocked out, but how the hell did I get knocked out of that? Yeah, uh, well, you finished on 10 points, but you lost to Lons at home. That's the big kicker right oh, there. I bet, you, I bet you I nearly got sacked then. Yeah, because you didn't you didn't even beat them away from home. They obviously they only lost <laughs> oh, to Barcelona. They've done me such a big favour. So they though. yeah they've uh, yeah in a way they've really helped you yeah. to be fair. Jean Pierre Papin was well, the uh, manager. So well, mate. can't argue with that. Now goals wise for my team 27, 26, 25 there was a race and Latauro Martinez managed to win that race. Uh, but it will be time for me to go. And is there any jobs in the Premier League available? Well, we are still quite early on. No jobs might not have come up just yet. As we can see, there isn't. So I will be leaving Lazio at the end of the season with one destination to go. But there's a couple Brandy. of trophies to add to our Glory Hunter cabinets. Let's have a look at them. Yes, I made sure I built a fantastic Lazio team to lift the Scudetto this season, leaving me with just two trophies to go in England. But it was still a successful season despite not completing Germany for Dad, as he picks up the hardest trophy to capture as we head to season number 16. After completing Italy, it was time for me to resign from Lazio. And with Dad still pursuing the DFP Pacal, he began making bids for new players such as Nianzu at centre-back, Paulinha in midfield, and Anderson as a number 10. It was also announced that Cristiano Ronaldo would be retiring from his playing career. Although dad did ask him to reconsider, but he never changed his mind. Don't leave me, please don't. Dad got most of his targets outside of João Polinho, who chose Spurs instead. My job at Lazio had finally been filled as David Moyes was appointed. And with the World Cup coming to an end, there were lots of international jobs popping up, just none in the Premier League. And the World Cup, by the way, was won by France, who beat Switzerland in the final on penalties. Dad had his first test in the European Super Cup as he fell 2-0 to a very good Chelsea side, who won the Champions League last season for the second time in a row. But at least he's through to the next round of the DFB Pacal, right? Dad, with the likes of Ronaldo, Schweinsteiger and Mertesacker retiring yeah. and Gundogan not signing on a new contract, you had to bring in basically three midfielders to replace them. I mean, I, like I said at the end of the last season, I've got players who are already in place to replace them, but I yeah. just wanted, I, I had money now to bring in stronger players, whether it be first team player or a reserve what I already had in. Yeah. That's what I'm looking to do now, especially making my midfield a lot stronger for if one gets injured or something like that, or for cup games, especially yeah. cup games for me. And it's, 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 I've got to, so I've really got to do that, really. So if we're resting the player, the next player that comes in is just as strong as him. And I think I've done that in this transfer window. Yeah, so 34-year-old Anderson came in, uh, £7.5 million pound from Real Madrid. Again, I that was just a bargain. Good. I've just yeah. thought, well, for £7.5 million, that's just a bargain. Yeah, million, as so. a backup for Hamas yeah. Rodriguez. Then you got Ben Tanker, 25-year-old, finally buying Spurs players. Yeah. Uh, 35 million Very good pound player. from Porto. Yeah, really good indeed. Look at the, the mental attributes on yeah. him. And he can play in multiple different that's positions. The, that's the best thing about it, yeah. So. Yeah, as a natural, which you are now doing. Yeah. Bit of a tactical change. No <laughs> surprises there. Uh, you got Garcia as well, who fills in that midfield. Yeah, I've got um, two players playing that position now who are just as good as each other now. Yeah, fantastic. Physicals on the lad. He spent a lot of money. 74 million pound from Chelsea. Uh, but 
obviously it's they won the Champions League last year. Yeah. So, you know, it's a good pickup, really. Yeah, definitely, yeah. And then finally, you got Nyanzu, who is a centre back option for forty million pound, who actually starts ahead of Sergio Ramos. Yeah, that was a surprise, wasn't it? Yeah. So, I mean, I got this when I seen this guy come up for twenty year old. I thought, well, I'm going to get him in as a replacement for Ramos, but I didn't think he'd take over from Ramos. So yeah, uh, that just goes to show how good he actually is. But maybe you're finally learning a lesson because there was no big players no. on the outs. Oh, we had enough uh, enough, enough people bids, approach though. it. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah, there was quite a few players that they wanted. Eighty three nope. million pound there for Trent. You had a, a few for Jose Gaia, yeah. Valverde as well. Morata was quite a few different offers, but no, you stayed true. I would have usually just gone and took, especially for Trent Alexander. I would have took that oh, eighty three yeah. million in gone. <laughs> that one I <laughs> yeah just never learns his lesson uh tactically then you have changed it to a positive 442 diamond narrow yeah uh, so you've got an anchor with your two defenders there you got a complete wing back in Trent who will be bombing forward the Mazala will be filling that gap there Rodriguez in behind your two strikers which mostly is going to be oh. awesome and Orlando really yeah. isn't it uh, if you pick your best 11 that is your best 11 yeah. pick right there so I mean that that's one of my favorite um tactics as well in it so yeah um, hopefully this will win it for me this time. I've, I've sort of made the defence come midfield a uh, uh, lot stronger now, so I'm hoping that I'm not going to concede goals, but with the forward line that I've got, I still can score quite a few. Yeah. That's what I'm hoping for now. Yeah. Uh, so your schedule so far this season, Dad, you've played in a couple of Super Cups in the DFL Super Cup. You won 5-2 against Hanover. Lost against Chelsea in the European Super Cup, but yeah. you were having injuries at the start of the yeah, season. Was, yeah. Like Orlando wasn't even in the lineup there. Uh, Wolfsburg, a one-all draw, yeah, though. That's a bit concerning for the first game, but... I'm not not interested in the league to be honest. No, with you. Patrick as long as, Finger scored. As long as I'm up and there and thereabouts, so my job doesn't look like it's getting threatened again. So yeah. um, I'm happy with that. I still after that still playing well though. DFB Pakal a 10-1 win away from home. Yeah, uh, but funny enough, the second leg, for the <laughs> second round is against Eintracht Frankfurt, but they that's are in away. the league below. Oh, so that should be okay. Oh, that's, that's handy for me then. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, yeah. Rostock three 0 after they've just popped up hands of Rostock there into the Bundesliga for the first time, and Bolcom seven two. Yeah, with Dario Orlando scoring four goals, he's already got two hat tricks in three games. So he started well. That he's back. He yeah. is bang on form once again. Champions League group though. This looks interesting, doesn't it? Mm. Mm. Yeah, You've got to go to hell. I've got to go to hell, yeah. <laughs> and Galatasaray. Yeah. Uh, Napoli and Real Madrid are the two teams in there that could cause you some troubles too. Yeah. I mean, I'm, last season was, last season was brilliant for me, so I haven't got to worry about it at all about mm. the European games now. As long as I don't get something stupid and get me sacked, I'm, I'm, I'm happy. Yeah, that's <laughs> it. Uh, but there we go. Speaking of getting sacked... None of the Premier League teams has decided to change managers no. this season outside of Liverpool, who, by the looks of it, their manager had retired. So it did that weird thing where you can't apply, but they had already lined one up. Yeah. Roberto Mancini took over the role. Uh, so I'm kind of just sat around waiting. I love the Liverpool way. It's brilliant. Yeah. I mean, I probably would have spat at the job application <laughs> anyway. <laughs> I don't want to take that. Um, but yeah, there's just, there, nothing came up at all. So I'm kind of looking at the start of the season and going, oh, I need something to happen, yeah. I guess. I mean, it's given me a free season. I, yeah. I've, I've got to take advantage of it. Arsenal right now are completely dominant. They still have Arsene Wenger. Like, he's been there for so long now. Uh, so he's been there for ages, and they've got a great team with the likes of Neymar as their star player. Um, they're doing very well. They won the Premier League last season. Manchester City, again, have got quite a good team um, that they've managed to bring through, and Sadio Mane is their key player. So, I mean, there's still obviously the options of Manchester United, where you were previously. Chelsea have just won the Champions League, so I very much doubt they're looking to sack Billy Davies. No. Uh, who moved from Portsmouth, if you remember. <laughs> after, after keeping that world-class player. After world-class midfielder yeah. last year, he went on uh, and took the Chelsea role last season. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, Liverpool started badly. Yeah. Maybe. They could pop Roberto up. Roberto Mancini might not be there they for very Gareth long. they got Gareth they have got Gareth Bale as their vice captain. They've got Breno as well as their key player, uh, 32 years of age. So, yeah, I mean, I'm kind of just going to keep my eyes open and see what happens, really. Definitely don't want the Spurs job. Nope, not for me. Uh, I want to take a rival's job like somebody else sat on this table. But there we go. We'll have to see what happens throughout the season and see if anything pops up. Or am I just be twiddling my thumbs while Dad 
tries to win the DFB Pokal for the fourth time. It took until November before the first Premier League job came up through Aston Villa, who had some decent players, but my eyes were set on the Liverpool job as that popped up as insecure following a bad run of form by Roberto Mancini. Dad continued to control the league in Germany, but of course his main target was the cup. And he progressed past Eintracht Frankfurt after going 2-0 down, 5-2 to win the game. With the next round being a lot easier against local rivals 18-16 Munich, winning 6-1. But this is where it gets difficult as the quarterfinal draw puts Bayern Munich against Bayer Leverkusen. Job-wise, no other managers were sacked, but the Liverpool manager Mancini was constantly under threat with his new job insecure every couple of weeks. However, legendary Arsenal manager Arsene Wenger announced his retirement at the end of the season. He's taken Arsenal to multiple trophies, including the Champions League, and kind of dominated English football, giving Arsenal 20 league titles in total. The problem is, there's nowhere to apply for it yet, and it could be done behind the scenes without it becoming available, which has happened before or when he eventually retires. Back in Germany, Dad progressed through to the semi-finals with a win away to Leverkusen. But the struggle came in that semi-final as he faced Hertha Berlin and although his Bayern Munich side took the lead, Hertha had been great this season and managed to turn it around to 2-1 very quickly. Alvaro Morata managed to equalise to make it 2-2 before half-time, but in the second half, Seiko Koita and Timo Werner bagged two Hertha goals, knocking Bayern Munich out of the DFB Pokal once again. Another heartbreaking season for Dad's glory hunter hopes. And maybe I was looking to rub salt into the wound, but the Tottenham Hotspur job became available, and I decided to apply for it after waiting around for so long. It wasn't too long after before I was in for an interview and as fast as you like, Spurs were offering me the job, my first in the Premier League. Dad, a semi-final loss against Hertha Berlin. Can't believe it. Absolutely can't believe it. I just give them an hammering about 6-1 about four weeks before this game. I know my main striker was out injured, but I still felt I had a good enough side to, to beat them as well. So, oh, I'm gutted. Absolutely gutted. A current Spurs player scored yeah. one of the goals as well. I don't like him now, neither. <laughs> Are you still a great team? I had a, I James a team. Rodriguez and Orlando was the team yeah. missing from the starting I'm, 11. Yeah, I... I'm just got it again. Mm. I absolutely have to go. I, I, I'm, I'm feeling like I'm, I'm stuck here again, like I was at Man United. Do I look for a fresh, fresh move or something like that, and just go again and try and stop you from winning the anything wherever you go? I don't know. Got it. Tough. Uh, well, you won the Bundesliga again, so you keep your job. I should do with that side. I mean, Hertha was actually it. second. Yeah, I mean, if you went over the results, I beat him six-one the game before, a couple yeah. weeks before. So, yeah, absolutely got it. Well, there we go. You dominated the player statistics as well with the goals and the average rate in the player of the matches. All Orlando, but he wasn't there yeah. when you needed him most. Uh, anyway, to the Premier League, because that's where I am right now. At Tottenham! <laughs> uh, I want to take a rival's job like somebody else sat on this table, but there we go. Gee. Just to knock me down even more, though you're even at my team now. <laughs> Come on. At Tottenham, let's see what we can do. Now, Harry Kane is there. It's the new gen version of Harry Kane, but he's still very good. Still absolutely amazing. 29 years of age. He is the main player in this Tottenham Hotspur side, the key player. They've got the likes of Lucas Hernandez, who's also there as captain. They haven't got an amazing team, that's all I'll say, but they've got uh, some really good players, including the likes of Paulinho, who rejected you at the start of the season, yeah. Dad, and went to there. And uh, Militao is another one who's uh, not too bad either. So, And Thiago Almeida is also on the left-hand side there. So they got some good players. Uh, Trans budget, £77 million, so it's not it's a good. bad trans budget. It's good when you think what I was getting at United. Yeah, so, yeah, I'm, I'm happy. We'll see what we can do with this. I mean, the trouble is... Arsenal are champions, and Arsene Wenger is retiring, which could be a good thing, but it's kind of like you can't apply for the job. Yeah. So I don't know, you know, what what to do there, because <laughs> I probably would have gone. I probably would have gone to Arsenal uh, if I know if you, you know if you if I knew that you could apply for it. If the job comes up, I could go for that. You could. I know it's Arsenal, and I'm a Spurs fan, but if the I'll job gotta... comes up, I might quit Spurs. <laughs> <laughs> I've got to try and stop you so because he is retiring in, this year if I could come in and do something in the Premier League and stop you from doing it that'd be even better yeah 
So, yeah, I don't know. I don't know whether to wait and see whether that Spurs job comes up because that would just be a... Uh, the, the Arsenal job comes up because that's just... I mean, they lost two games. Yeah. They got the best team. Uh, well, they won the Champions League not so long ago. They got the best team in the Premier League By the last two seasons. Way. Yeah, I mean, the Liverpool job came up about six or seven times as insecure. Yeah. Then Somehow he, win, he kept his job. Then he'd win one game and he'd be all right again. And yeah, he'd, he'd lose, lose three. three in a row, <laughs> go back to being insecure again. Uh, Chelsea was also rough at some points under Billy Davies, but I think that Champions League win last year managed to keep him. So, yeah, he's doing all right. But I took Tottenham back up to eighth place. They had a bad end of the season, which meant we stayed out of the European spots. But actually, that's a good thing because you don't I don't need them. Do. No. I just need the cups. They were already out of the FA Cup by the time I took them over. Uh, so it's just dependent on what I can do with them for next year. So as you can see, round of 16, they were already out of the UEFA Cup uh, and FA Cup. They were out in the third round by Everton. So it was a bad result really for them. But, Dad, yeah. I mean, you're knocked out the round of 16 by Sporting in Champions League. Yeah. The semi-final of the DFB Pagal. Next season, you've got £80 million. Should you wish to stay... Currently, there's no jobs knocking around right now. So, at the minute, you're kind of uh, left to yeah. what you have here. So, how did the other teams do in the, in the other country? And how did Spain do? That's what the other country I've got to go to, isn't it? Yeah, so, what so happened there? Real Madrid won it. Barcelona, Barcelona finished in fourth I'm, under Pellegrini. I'm surprised they don't... They, they're not usually happy with like that. They were second no, manager on that. Because they also only reached the Copa del Rey semi-final. Oh, no, they lost in the final to Valencia, uh, my old side, and they lost to Manchester City in the round of 16 in the Champions League. But their job is, I mean, it doesn't say that he is insecure or anything. No. He seems to be absolutely fine. And where did Valencia finish as well? They finished in second place. They second, were they? Yeah. So right now, there's not a lot really that you can could go for in that country. No. Either. In the two I that you do need. with them being... The Barcelona job coming up. I could do with that one, definitely. Yeah. Uh, Bilbao actually got relegated. Yeah. Which is the first time, I think, in their history. Uh, and the other Harry Kane was the second top scorer in that league. So, there we go. Right. What happens at the start of this season? Well, the next season, because who knows? That Arsene Wenger job retiring. Should that come available? What what would happen? What What could happen? Don't know. We'll have to find out. No trophies after almost a whole season on the sidelines, but I can now have a crack at the English competitions finally to complete Glory Hunter. And you might say with a season out doing nothing, this was a year wasted for Dad, who failed to gain that DFB Pacal once again. However, so soon after the season had finished, the Real Madrid manager retired also, and that left the role available for the first time in years, and Dad applied for it immediately. After being sick of Germany, Dad's applications Real Madrid led to an interview and he must have nailed it because he was offered the job and accepted immediately could be a mistake knowing full well he has to go back to germany at some point to win the cup i didn't have huge budgets but i thought i spent well at tottenham bringing in a defender and a young rodrigo from santos while dad had much larger budgets in madrid and knew he needed to bring in dario orlando as his first signing from his former club however i was then prepared to take the biggest risk i've made so far when i seen the arsenal job finally pop up as available and as soon as i replied i resigned from spurs after a few months in charge we could have been great together thankfully they still decided to bring me in for an interview and the risk paid off as they were happy to offer me the job as their new manager and all of a sudden I was at the best club in the country, with a huge budget too, might I add. And players like Neymar, who is still absolutely incredible with amazing physicals, age 31 now. I decided to go for a striker that I had also had a connection at a former club in Villa at Lazio. But for some reason, he rejected Arsenal and went to my other former club, Valencia. Maybe it's caused Dad some problems. So instead, I forked out even more cash and I went for Kylian Mbappe at Lazio. And he signed for £144 million. While Dad was also going after more of his former players. A lot more, in fact. Dad, we both changed clubs in the summer. I can't believe what you've done, though. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I mean, I was really open for, to get the Arsenal job myself. I'm chuffed to bits of what I've got. Yeah. But when the Arsenal job came up after me and you just resigned and went, oh, I thought, no, I don't believe it. I mean, great decision, because <laughs> obviously they, they are the better team of the two yeah. at the moment. Current champions of the I mean, Premier what, League. What budget did you have as well? Oh, like 300 million so it made sense to go of course you did <laughs> but I mean it was ballsy oh definitely because 
I mean, you... I resigned oh, I as believe, I applied for it. I can't it. believe you've done it, to be honest. Well, I think if I didn't resign, they never would have con no, they wouldn't considered. Have done it. No, it was a big chance you took her because they could have easily gone for someone else. Yeah, absolutely. Because they left it right to the last second, didn't they? It was on, actually on the day that he, he, he retired um, before retired. they even advertised it, yeah. which is weird. I thought they would have brought somebody in yeah. beforehand, but hey, I'll take it. I would have jumped at it. Yeah. Just because they, they, at the moment they are the best premiership in on the computer yeah not in real life yeah yeah <laughs> uh, but I had you know time on my hands I had a couple of seasons ahead obviously because I knew you were gone to Spain so yeah. it's like oh, I can risk it if I lose the uh, if I don't get the Arsenal job but I, obviously I've lost the Spurs role then I can just wait until another one pops up in a year or two so there we go uh, I joined right at the depth as well I tried to bring in a player it cancelled because I, even though I offered the player over a week in advance he just let the chance window run out before he decided to to come in so i'm just gonna have to try and get him again i guess and see if i can bring him in for uh, i mean i got 90 million now i so. mean you were trying to bring him in because you had injuries as well with your strikers yeah and then mbappe was it we mbappe got, has got an injury, injury. Yeah, yeah he's that's the second injury he's already got for me and he's out for four weeks as well uh after a 144 million pound move from Lazio. I also picked up Euro player Damara Leo Watt from Bayern Munich. Yeah. Uh, good I did try English and bring him into Real Madrid, but he said he was interested. Yeah. And <laughs> Solari, Nicolo Solari from Napoli, who can play up front or on the wing. I mainly want him for that wing, but 20 composure <laughs> and 90 anticipation. Yes, please. Yeah, very good. So some good signings that I've brought in here for this Arsenal side who already won the league. And I didn't really uh, let go of anybody too too impressive, to be honest. Lekonga has left, but I wasn't even registering him. Neither was Vlavic. Like, he wasn't even registered. So there's a couple of players in there that happy to let go. Yeah. Uh, tactically, though, we look like this. We've gone for a 4 triple 2 uh, And it's been a little bit hard, to be honest, to pick the team. And because we struggled at the start of the season... Uh, and what I think I'm actually going to do is change these two around. I think I'm going to go with this instead because I don't want Mbappe playing a deep line forward. He's He needs to be the advanced forward. He's way too good. He's going to score me too many goals uh, having him in that role. So, And it hasn't started too good, unfortunately for me. If we have a look at the start of the season, I actually drew the first two games in the Premier League against Newcastle and Middlesbrough. All right, after that, it's been okay and we've looked comfortable in a couple of games. But yeah, that was not really fantastic. Yet though, have you? No, ninety-fifth minute equaliser as well. Middlesbrough was hard one to take. I did win the Community Shield, so that was my first game winning the Community Shield against Birmingham City. But there we go. Uh, Champions League's interesting because I've got Lazio in that yeah. group, so former club, and I stole obviously their best player. Yeah. But there we go. Let's have a look to see what you've done, Dad, at Real Madrid. Interesting stuff. Now you also did exactly what I. Uh, did as well and went back to your former club. Yep. You went for Nianzu. Well, I needed a bit of strength for up in the, in the uh, centre of defence. Yeah. Really? So Orlando. Best trick, I think, for So, yeah, i got to go for that, I? And then James Rodriguez. Yeah. The triple threat. Yes. The three... Three positions right through the spine that I always say. Yeah. I've got all three of them in, so really good there. Then you brought in two backup fullbacks yep. in Ike Guerrero and Sam Carragher. Just wanted to make sure I was all right in case of any injuries. And then Marquinhos at the back for £106 million. And yeah, he doesn't even just start. No. That goes to show how good my defence is. And he was one complaining about all the money. <laughs> hey, come on. And I've hey, and I got Harry Kane on my team and he can't play up front so he's got out on the wing. Yeah. And he's scoring goals for me. He is. Number six as well. <laughs> uh, he plays naturally on three wings because he was actually a winger when he was growing up. Yeah. He played out on the wings yeah. to see uh, if he could learn the roles. And yeah, He wasn't happy when I well. bought the striker in because he said he felt like he was losing his position. Didn't he? I just yeah. said, look, mate, he said, if you want to win things, you stay here. I mean, he scored 20 goals last season. He's got yeah. four and four already yeah. with start, four man. assists. As a winger. He's a, he's a better winger. Yeah. Uh, but that is because, I mean, you're playing a 4-2-3-1 formation here. Quite standard, actually, with the two wingers. Yeah. As unlike you, usually you go for someone a little bit crazy. Yeah. But maybe you're finally learning. Who knows? <laughs> uh, and that is because he's done very well. Because the first game was a 10-0 win against Real Batiste. What a start. That's probably the best start I've ever had of yeah. the season. Isn't yeah. it? <laughs> uh, Atletico Madrid, 3-2 victory That's against them. Win. Away from where I'm Yeah, well. they got Ike Munyain as their... Uh, their best player, Malaga 5-0, Orlando with another hat-trick there, and Mallorca, Harry Kane with two, and Casper yeah. Knudsen, who is your winger, 
uh, on the left hand side and a very good one too that yeah, 19 yeah. for acceleration 20 agility 19 pace <laughs> that's ridiculous <laughs> yeah <laughs> So, you had no trance budget left. You spent all of it. Yeah. Uh, you have one main goal, and that is to complete Spain in one, one fell season. swoop. Yep, yeah, I've got to do it. Uh, but you still have to go back the good, to the Bundesliga. The good thing about it is, look at the league table, look. Where's Barcelona? Barcelona's already dropped down to seventh. Yeah. Drew two. So, that's a, that, that's really encouraging for me already. Yeah. You got Valencia though. Yeah, I know. Yeah, they're still so, very good because yeah. a player rejected me and went to Valencia. Yeah. Remember as well, and they've actually got uh, this guy in, which was the, the the player that they signed right after I left. But yeah, they got a few good players that came in, and they picked up Lazio's main striker, the one that I went for to begin with. Yeah, Via, who was very good for you, uh, good for me when I was at Lazio, won a lot of stuff with me. So. Yeah, promising. Yeah, I've, I've really built do. a very just, good team there. This could be my team. little bit of luck, like just getting this this country done in one, one and done. While I'm mucking around, I feel, around a, bit, I feel a bit better now than I did at the end of last season. <laughs> All right, well let's see what happens this season and see if Dad can catch me up real fast. Dad's Real Madrid side seemed to breeze through most of the competition, especially when Dario Orlando was on the pitch. That was until late December when they finally faced Barcelona and lost 2 0. I was struggling, however, in the shadow of Arsene Wenger's departure. Never been able to consistently pick up any wins and going on a bad run through December. Ending, however, with an 8 0 win over Middlesbrough, but it was still keeping me at the top four and behind Spurs. Daz Real Madrid side was in a much more comfortable position, leading the Spanish first division 11 points ahead of Barcelona. Probably because Orlando had 26 goals already this season in just 19 games, beating last season's total before the new year. However, Orlando couldn't stop a crucial goal for Mallorca in the Copa del Rey fourth round. My Arsenal side began to find form throughout January and smashed past both Newcastle and West Ham in the FA Cup and onto Swansea in the next round. February was another strong month as we even beat Spurs at Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. But after a great long spell, it was all for nothing as we went into a terrible period throughout April failing to win a single Premier League game, taking us completely out of the title race as well. Oh, it was a bad season for me. Great season for me. <laughs> I only just finished above Spurs. That was a Ooh. bad move. Uh, I think tactically I got this wrong completely. Yeah. I've got the players to do. I've got Neymar and Kylian Mbappe and stuff around, but yeah, I mean, Chelsea do have a good team, but I finished yeah. 20 points behind them. This is exactly the season I needed you to have. And they signed Victor Osman as well yeah. last year, which obviously didn't help me whatsoever. Although he only played 14 games. He, he signed for them during January. <laughs> he still scored 11 so goals. He still in scored 11 in 14. Yeah. But yeah, I, I struggled big time there. Even Man United finished above me. I had, I had too good of a team to finish that far down. Yeah. And I think the only reason why I managed to save my job is because I managed to reach the semi-final of the Champions League and the FA Cup, but I won the League Cup. You always win a cup, mate, don't you? Yeah, it's just the one that I didn't need to win. 6-2 in the <laughs> final you. against Birmingham. <laughs> well, there we go. Even you won that cup. <laughs> yeah. uh, but Portsmouth game, losing on penalties is very frustrating. Well, that could have been the final. Man City or, or Chelsea would yeah. have been. So. So, As but Man City finished below me in yeah. the league. Two so points. I'm surprised as well. Chelsea lost that. Yeah, so it's, di it's difficult, but yeah, I, I kind of threw that away. They also knocked me out, of course, of the Champions League uh, 5 3 on aggregate there, where you were also knocked out as well. Yep. 5 4 after being ahead in the first leg. Yeah. And then Chelsea, of course, go on to face another Champions League final, which could be three in a row. And Man City are the ones to stop them, who are the ones to win it previously. And look who, who they beat the following season. Last yeah. season, Man United saw us. Yeah. Chelsea versus the two Manchester sides two years in a row. Yeah. So, best of luck, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Billy Davies. How the hell is Billy Davies? I don't know. But there we go. So, I've got Mbappe with 40 goals. Carlos Velo, 26. He's dropped off quite a lot now. He's 35. I need to start replacing uh, him for sure. So... It looks like Adesi came in but didn't play as much, which is weird. Why didn't he play? I yeah. need him to start playing uh, next season to make a difference because, you know, six goals in four starts isn't bad. I need him to have more goals next season. Um, and next season, they've also given me £161 million. So I need to tighten some things up, change the tactic around a little bit and go for it in the second season at Arsenal and try and get that double done. But Dad... You're still in a job at Real Madrid. Yeah. And that's because you won it. 
11 points. Good I amount. Had, I had to win with that team. And Valencia right behind me yeah. in second place. You Barcelona pulled off, it. Look. Barcelona pulled it back to third as well. Yeah. So, well done. Lost three games in tow. One of them was to Barcelona. Uh, only three away games as well. So, he did really well. Orlando, 39 goals. Goodbye, that one. Yeah. <laughs> High Savage Ray and Nudson got the most man of the matches. Fair enough. Got him in, done me a job. But did you complete Spain in one go? No. Fourth round. After extra time. Do you know what makes it worse? Mallorca. Do you know what makes it worse? What? Two things that make it worse. Barcelona was already out. Barcelona were already been out for three. And Valencia. New Yorker. Oh, no, Valencia's free. New Yorker being our favourite Spanish team because we obviously we've been there, yeah. supported them. But they got relegated. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they got relegated. So they they were in that good. Oh. They had Thomas Suchek as well. How hilarious. They got Thomas Suchek. You I actually think... scored in extra time. Yeah. Uh, 101. So you went ahead in extra time and still lost it. I think that was... If I'd gone on through to that competition I think with Barcelona being out of it as well I think I'd have gone on and won it as well which is what I really needed to do yeah I could have really done with that being done and dusted chasing you in the Premier League then my two former Spanish teams battled it out in the yeah. final and Sevilla won this time round I just can't win a cup no when the cups that really count I can't win them I can no. win, win the other cups but I just can't win those cups can I Dario Orlando dad 49 goals in 47 games yeah pleased with that incredible Nudson on the, the left there 27 goals and 15 assists Harry Kane with 20 and 21. Well, so Winger's done the job as well, didn't he? Yeah. 19 goals well, there for Rodriguez. Retiring Higuain. What a career he's yeah. had. But there we go. Antonio Blanco's coming on, developed quite nicely as well. But you've got £98 million pound with a very high wage budget next season. Yeah. To try and win that Copa del Rey. Oh, I just don't know. Cups. Or would you want to move? The Cups. <laughs> Probably won't want to move. I mean, only Hamburg's available right now. Yeah. Man City is insecure, though. Ooh. <laughs> Jose Mourinho took your job, by the way. Did what he? a shock. Oh, we didn't uh, know. Really. And they are insecure because he finished in third place with but Dortmund don't. winning the league. Please All don't. on 68 points as well. Oh, bloody hell. Please don't tell me he won the cup, though. Oh, my God. Yeah, that would be hilarious. No. They did not win the cup. They were knocked out by Stuttgart very early on in the second round. So and you're this, all right there. This is what actually happens to quite a lot, don't they? They get yeah. knocked out early on. Yeah, you're all right there. You survived right. there. But they did win the UEFA Cup 2-1. So they won that two seasons in a row. Yeah. Against uh, Never Bremen. Bremen side, yeah. Yeah. But there we go. All right. You've got a trophy to add to your yeah. retro glory hunter cabinet. It's it's one. only one of them. Let's pop it in there. Third play to dad. He easy won La Liga this year. And it's another trophy to add to his retro glory hunt cabinet. He couldn't complete Spain in one season, however. And with another season of duds this year round for myself, how many more chances will I give dad to catch up to me? So we go into season number 18. Considering I joined the best team in the country last season, my finish was not good enough. And I am very close to completing Glory Hunter with three seasons left. So I began targeting some new signings in season 18, and both were from our old club, by Munich. With Dad having a similar situation in Spain, going for a by Munich player as well as a couple of other big talents from Italy. I also built a new tactical shape, trying to use my attacking powers to my advantage going through up front and Neymar in from the left wing. And while Dad also adopted a new tactic, his was a lot more conservative as he aims to go for the Copa del Rey. Because once he gets that, he could be just within one trophy behind me. So to give him an even better chance, he signed one of the best defenders in the world from Newcastle matching a release clause. Dad, we have completely ransacked by Munich. They deserve it. <laughs> All the players that you are buying for their club. It goes to show that I built such a good side. I built a good side there. Really, so I? good that yeah. you didn't win the DFB. I oh, know. I just, I just can't believe I didn't win it. Uh, but look, £448 million worth of players there. There's three that went to Arsenal, three that went to Real Madrid, and then there, um, the next season, Jose Gaia. Ben Tanker. So we, we bought eight, them again. eight players off them. Yeah. <laughs> Between us. In the last season. Oh, no, there's more. This, uh, oh, yeah, it would have been that. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah hilarious, really. They, they have, like, recruited. They spent £181 million there, £138 million there, but they profited a stupid amount of money. Yeah. Uh, I fear for Jose Mourinho. 
because he's obviously got quite a job on now to kind of try and win the uh, the Bundesliga after not winning last year yeah. because we stole all of his players. Yeah. So there we go. Uh, we are on Arsenal. This is the side that I have been building. I've still got £40 million left, but I didn't think there was any players that I could bring in that would uh, improve the lineup that I already had. So I started off with Adesi, of course, joining the January because he didn't join deadline day last season so he's already been at the club for a little bit and he's got four goals in three games didn't play that much but he was the last signing from last year then i went for trent alexander arnold straight away 56 million pound i needed a better right back yeah he's he's the one and of yeah. course because he's english it just fits signing him for the registration purposes i went for the greek cdn that you had uh who i think is really good as like an anchor role because yeah. i fancy changing around for that and then Ian Coulton from Everton, £28 million. How good is that for a backup striker? Yeah, definitely, yeah. Uh, 25 years of age, not even capped by England, which shows you how good England's team is. £28 million. They only spent £31 million on him, but uh, yeah, only 28. Eduardo for 7.75. This is just a backup centre midfielder, but my scouts rated him quite highly, so I brought him in anyway. And then Jose Gaia to fill in at left back. However, he doesn't get into my team, but he's a very good left back anyway uh, because I sold my backup one yeah, and he's right nowhere good. near as good as that. So you pinched their right back and left back. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and I've gone for a kind of 4 3 3, but I needed to incorporate Neymar still into the team. So instead of having somebody here, he is coming off the wing and playing a lot more narrower. It's a little bit strange. I just hope it works. And I was kind of like, will it work? Will it not? I guess we'll have to tell when the season started. And then I went and broke all the records and won the first <laughs> game of the season, 17-0. What are we like when we seen that come through? It was like, hey. yeah. <laughs> uh, Anthony Ford was sent off in the first minute, which obviously helped a straight red card. But then they proceeded to have zero shots all game and still obviously conceded 17 goals. It was 11-0 at half time. We uh, had to report a murder at the Emirates. <laughs> it was that bad. Uh, I'm so shocked that Russell Anderson managed to keep his job. Oh, how did he keep After it? that? Yeah. No S idea. Sacked after the first game he should have been. Yeah. Uh, very, very bizarre how he's managed to keep his job uh, from getting promotion. But after that, it's been quite nice and sail through for me as well. 5-0 against Redden. 3-1 against Portsmouth. 3-0 against Cardiff. And I've also got them next in the cup as well. So... Good start. Good start of the season. Goal average is really good. Yeah. Uh, I've also got Bayern Munich in my group stage. <laughs> Shouldn't be no problem there, so, should it? That'll be an easy group stage <laughs> with Porto as well. Uh, let's have a look at you, Dad. Your Real Madrid side with half of Bayern Munich's team in it as well. Uh, of course, you went for Hamas Rodriguez last year, so that doesn't count as this year. But you went for Monta Montor Montorsi sorry, for £96 million pound as yeah. a right back. Right back. I'm come shocked you didn't go for Trent. Well, it was right. No, I think you already got him before I did. I think. I don't know. I think I, you'd already made the bid, yeah, or he didn't want to come to me. But I just got this player because he can play centre back as well. So I yeah. thought he was really good <clears throat> in both positions. Yeah, he is quality. Right, it's a lot of money, but I, I didn't have a lot to buy really. To be honest, with you. no. A couple of positions I needed to strengthen. That was it. Yeah, uh, Ben Tanker came in. Yeah, and everyone. I just wanted it. Good definitely strengthen that centre midfield ball winning player. So I got him in. I knew he, I knew he'd be good. So yeah. went and got him straight away. Bit of an Italian thing going through your side as well yeah. because you've also got Santarelli who's joined, who's a centre attacking midfielder. He was more. He was, he was more a reserve uh, centre attacker. For Hamas Rodriguez. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, a few guys also went out, and then your final signing was seventy-one million pound for Newcastle's left-sided yeah. centre back in Christian Hermerson. So I felt now that my two or four centre backs I've got really now are really, really world class. Yes. So yeah. That's, that's really straight from my squad completely, I think. And schedule, you haven't played as many games, but you have not conceded a single goal yet. I, I did change my tactic a little bit. I, I felt that I was um, a little bit open. Yeah. So I just brought one of the wingers back into midfield. So he plays more of a supporting role and then uh, just sort of squashed up a little bit. Yeah. And only one up front this time. Only one up front, yeah. considering how many good strikers you actually have. Yeah, I did, yeah. But Orlando is that man. Yeah, of course, he's, he's been deadly for you the last couple yeah. of years. A so world-class player. With him and the winger going down through and Rodriguez sat right behind him. Yeah. My midfield is going to be just really strong and keep it. And, and it's worked so far. I haven't conceded a goal. Yeah. You so have the tactic was three working. English players. One, two, three, four, five Italians. One, two, three, four, five. Only six Spanish players. And not one of them have actually played or had a start yet. Yeah. 
Uh, and one of them, he isn't Spanish, he's Moroccan. <laughs> yeah. uh, he actually is obviously from Morocco uh, in real life. But there we go. So, okay. Good start to the season. I'm very pleased with the start. I ain't conceded a single goal, so yeah, I'm happy with that. Right. Well, that's it. You've got a Copa del Rey to win. That's right, yeah. Yeah. I've got an FA Cup and a Premier League. I don't know who was my, what group stage I was in for the Champions League. What was in for that? AC Milan, Galatasaray so and I'm, Ajax. I think I should go through with that, shouldn't I? You should. Yeah. Okay, let's see what happens in this season then. Can we cross off some more trophies in our retro glory hunter cabinet? With the Cop Del Rey not starting until January, Dad's Real Madrid side enjoyed the freedom of no pressure and went unbeaten, even getting a 95th minute equaliser against Barcelona to keep them top without losing a single game in La Liga. I unfortunately did pick up some Premier League losses, but it wasn't all bad news. Because one thing this tactic gave me was goals, and lots of them. Including big wins like this 9-0 and we sat comfortably at the top of the league still into the new year with just the three losses so far, six points ahead of my rival Spurs. It was the FA Cup where we come up against our biggest test though, beating Liverpool 1-0 in the fourth round. And Manchester United in the fifth round, with Aston Villa coming up in the quarter-final. Dab was very fortunate in the Copa del Rey as his fourth round tie with Almeria went to penalties and Real Madrid missed their first and had to wait till Almeria's fifth before Oblak saved the day, made the crucial save for them to go on and win. Before facing Barcelona in the quarterfinals in what turned out to be the Santorelli show as the Real Madrid Italian came off the bench to score the only two goals of the game. And Dad's team secured themselves a spot in the final as they defeated Deportivo 7-3 on aggregate in the semi-final across both legs. Both of us found ourselves deep in the Champions League as well, with Dad's Real Madrid side coming up against a very good Valencia team that I had built in previous years. But in the FA Cup, a tough Aston Villa side was no match in the end as my defence held them to nil as we scored two to reach the semi-final, where a Man City team awaits and an all-London final could be ahead. More penalties for Real Madrid and this time in the Champions League and once again Dab was relying on his goalkeeper Oblak who turned the score around from looking like elimination to saving two penalties in a row into the semi-finals. They would have to overcome the odds to reach the final though after they are behind his old team Benfica in the first leg. I had cleared my quarter-final opposition Lyon with a great 4-2 aggregate win after losing the first leg 2-1 in France and had already put a foot in the final beating Chelsea in leg one of the semi 4-1 with an Odessi hat-trick. In the FA Cup semi-final, which mattered more for Glory Hunter, I put myself in a similar position early in the second half with two early goals and just having to hold on to my lead. And that's when Man City woke up and from a set piece found their first goal of the game. But then it was a Man City counter-attack and Haaland became a provider and all of a sudden the scores are level. And my worst nightmare was about to unfold as Malazzo scored a third and a Man City completed the comeback. And my dreams of completing Glory Hunter this season was over. However, there was something to look forward to still because Dad's Real Madrid side overcame Benfica in the semi-final. And with me doing the same against Chelsea, the stage was set for another Champions League clash against my dad in the final. And what a match it was in Istanbul as I found myself very early on 2-0 up as Mbappe blasted in the penalty on the 11th minute. Dad's Real Madrid took that long to get into the game but were deadly when it finally happened as two minutes later they scored and before you know it, Harry Kane was putting in the equaliser. But this night then became Kylian Mbappe's as he not only scored our third and his second of the game, but created an excellent run which was found to score his hat-trick and our fourth before half-time. And finally, Odessi's late goal scored in the second half finished off a fantastic Arsenal win. We meet again in the final, <laughs> but the result always stays the same. Yeah, I, I mean, I'll be perfectly honest. You're looking at the two teams at the start of the game, I felt, I ain't going to win this game, but hey, I'm still there. I've got, you know, I've done well to get there, I think. Yeah. So I'm, I'm happy with that. I'm, I'm not happy that I've lost, but I'm happy that I got that far. Yeah, I mean, you lost Dario Orlando. That was my biggest, yeah. I've... He was out for a while, yeah. wasn't he? Like, he broke his ankle. For some reason, he's dropped a star yeah, rating yeah. down to three, which makes no that sense. Was neither, so, yeah. Uh, but yeah, he broke his ankle during the middle of uh, April, so he missed this game, unfortunately for you, which meant you only had to play Harry Kane. Yeah, only had Harry Kane. Uh, he, he did score he did in the score final. For me, yeah. Yeah. yeah, he is still very good. Two weeks, I think. 
but could not contest with Kylian Mbappe no. and his four goals in the final. What a player. We are now actually past present day as well because yeah. Kylian Mbappe is only 25 years of age uh, and he, he is 26. So we have finished the season where we would be in real life, maybe even the season after. But I have done the Champions League and the Premier League. I won it quite comfortably, 10 points ahead of my North London Derby team, yeah. Spurs. <laughs> uh, I also had two players on 26 goals. Harry Kane from Spurs had 7.82 average rate and was the only one above four of my players, Yeah, uh, which is quite impressive, really. So One of the things I did go. notice for your record as well, you did not lose a game or didn't drop a point at home. No. So the done. four games that I lost were away from home there. The four draws that I had were all away from home. I won every single game at home as well as a few away. So yeah, paid off for me big time. Wolves only just missed out on being relegated despite losing 17-0. <laughs> uh, and it well, is a get, different manager. They did get relegated. That's what I mean. Yeah, oh, they yeah. just missed out yeah. on uh, surviving. Um, they did uh, sack their manager yeah, halfway yeah, through the season. Yeah, 17-0. <laughs> what the hell was that all about? But there we go. Unfortunately though, semi-final only in the FA Cup. I am now one trophy away and it is your Jinx Cup as well. It is as well. It was the one that was annoying me the last time we did Glory Hunter. I can't believe it's this time around as well. But Man City beat me in the semi-final. Went on to beat Chelsea in that final. 3-1. I'm so annoyed with that. Because the semi-final, a 3-2, is kind of one of those. And like both, both results were 3-2. I still had a very strong team out. Yeah. Uh, but Edison went off injured, my goalkeeper, throughout the middle of the game. So that might have cost me, to be fair. Yeah. But Man City do have a great team. They, have, of course, got the likes of Sadio Mane and Verratti and Danny Olmo in there. Phil Foden's come through now. Uh, and he looks absolutely superb. So, yeah, and Erlen Haaland come off the bench and got himself an assist. <laughs> come off the bench. So, <laughs> there we go. Yeah. Uh, Dad. Unlucky. Yourself in the Spanish League, though. Yeah. Winners of that Spanish League. Yeah. That's what you needed. Yeah, definitely my goal average. Right up right now. I think yeah. I conceded, what, 15 goals? That, that's all I conceded the whole season. So Lost only two games. Yeah. But did so you I, win? I've done what I needed to do with the fence. The Copa del Rey is the big question. You did. Yes, Which yes, means yes. Spain is complete for you. Yep. In two seasons. Job done. Two Just to put them, I didn't do it last season, but this time I did, un, and I nearly lost it. Yeah. I think it was a fourth round. Did I, did I nearly lose it? Penalties, penalties. against Almeria. Oh. You always have that one dodgy result. And if you can get past that one dodgy one, you're usually all right. I mean, yourself. yeah, because you're not that Barcelona 2-0 yeah. after that. They only finished fourth in the league as well, yeah. though. Yeah, Deportivo 7-4 in the semi-final on aggregate. Uh, but if you look at Barcelona, finishing fourth, Zaragoza was actually yeah. second place. They've done really well there. They've got some quality players like this guy. We've come across him a few times. We cannot buy them off him because no. uh, he's 32 now, so he's not really worth <laughs> going for. But he's been one of the best left-backs. Uh, so far and that that manager's been around the block as well yeah Italy Benfica Lazio he was at Lazio for ages I think I might have even took his job <laughs> no I didn't I, I went somewhere before then uh, but there we go so Zaragoza has done very well uh, but it's time for you to leave Spain yeah job done yeah get out of here where will you go this next this is the thing isn't it where do I go I mean really I, I, I want to go to the Premier League and take you on and try and stop you from winning that FA yeah. that's what I'd like to do but What's available, and you know, you got what you got to look at, really, isn't it? And, mm -hmm. and, I, and I can't just take any team in the Premier League. It's got to be one of the top five or six to yeah. give me a chance. Yeah. Well, before we look at the staff available, let's have a look at the Ballon d'Or. It's been ages since we last checked. Kylian Mbappe is the current winner. Dario Orlando was the winner before yeah. that. Victor Osman was before that. We've been dominating this, Dad. Yeah. Because, I mean, I think the last time we looked, it was Higuaín might have won it after the Mohamed Salah win that I had with him at Valencia. Uh, then Giovanni Dos Santos, who has been unbelievable for Arsenal, and he's 36 and still going next season. Well, he's joining yeah. Barcelona, but he is still playing next season. Um, I haven't really used him, utilised him too much since I've joined because he's been too old. But he has been great for Arsenal. At age 30, he won the Ballon d'Or there. Kylian Mbappe won me two at Lazio. He has now won another one at Arsenal. And you'd like to think, in the November, he would probably win it again. He should do, shouldn't he? Champions League winner. Yeah. And scored, and scored four in the final. Oh, four in the final, yeah. So, so he should be. He so. probably should be winning So while you've been again. manager of him, he's won it four times? Yeah. Me and Emmy just 
stick together like glue. Yeah. Right. But Dad is on the move. Is there anywhere for him to go? Well, there is. Because Jose Mourinho was sacked. The chosen one. He's and it's not sacked. surprising because they finish in second place this season behind Werder Bremen. Yeah. And uh, yeah. And they didn't win the cup. Neither. They didn't win the cup. So unfortunately, that's two seasons in a row now without winning the league. Yeah. That is bad for Bayern Munich. And they've decided to part ways with Jose Mourinho. So would they would probably take me back then, wouldn't they, really? They probably would. They, yeah, because, because you won the league have, with them. They haven't won the league since I left. No. So I've gone away, won the league in Spain twice, won the cup and got to the Champions League final. They probably would take me back. Yep. There's a few good players there, but it's not the team that it was when no. you last left. You'll have a bit of a rebuild, but there is a lot of money there. £293 million worth of players. So what will Dad do? You'll have to find out next season. But first, we've got to put some trophies in our Glory Hunter cabinets. The Copa del Rey was something Dad needed to get done this year, and he did it, keeping the pressure on with just England to complete and the DFB Pacal to win. And that's two places he's already been. But with the Premier League won and so close to also getting that FA Cup, how long can Dad prevent me from completing my glory hunter cabinet just one trophy left to win dad began season 19 resigning from real madrid after completing spain in glory hunter immediately his thoughts were to try and stop me in england and declared interest in the chelsea job which was currently insecure but his mind was also on the big job in germany that was free at Bayern munich because that huge trans budget and with him needing to win the dfp pacal still so he made sure to cover all bases for now and applied for the Bayern Munich job as well meanwhile the dream the level of the Champions League came through and all 11 players were either mine or my dad's. What also shocked me was Arsenal's plans to build another new stadium as they have already outgrown the Emirates apparently and they need to increase the capacity. I decided that to make a big difference to my team I was going to need to sell a few players and that was my first goal for this summer. Dan had two job interviews come through at once and his old team Benfica as well as Bayern Munich came calling. News broke from London though that Chelsea were sticking with their current manager. So without another Premier League team popping up, Dad took the Bayern Munich role for the second time. Welcome back. And his first action was to bid for Jude Bellingham, who still at this point plays for Birmingham City. Taking Dad's old role at Real Madrid though was Carlo Ancelotti, who had just left AC Milan. Dad then went on a massive spending spree at Bayern Munich though, bringing in huge talents including two world-class strikers. And his final target was the young Austrian shadow striker Paul Wanner, who could transform Dad's attack. Dad, I think you had a bargain oh. picking up Paul Wanner. Yeah, definitely, yeah. 56 million is a lot of money, but, but not for a player like that. Definitely not. I mean, that was one of my weakest positions as well. I wanted a really good shadow striker attacking midfield or whichever. When this guy popped up from my scouts, I thought, bang, right on it, were we? Well, you already had a bid in yeah. for your old player who ended up, who's going to transfer to Juve Santarelli. Yeah. He was at Real Madrid, of course, with you. He was actually on the transfer list for around about 47 million. And you're going for him, he is nowhere near as good oh, no. as Paul Wanner. So that was a very good move for you in the transfer window Just after moving right to time. your new club. Yeah. Uh, but he wasn't the only one. Now, there's a couple of players who are already here from uh, like a previous deal. So Angelo on that right wing, you're not playing a right wing, but is only a free transfer anyway. And then a left back, but you've already brought in what I would say is a better left back yep. in Mikalenko from Juve. Yeah, definitely. 56 yeah. million pounds. He's a good left back. Uh, you've also brought in your Real Madrid right back, Galina. So he's made my two win backs solid now, I think. Yeah. Really good. Who I had at Lazio. Yeah. Then a couple of strikers. Well, I, I, I'm, I'm going to be silly. The, the amount of money that I got from my budget, I didn't really have to sell anybody if I didn't really want to. Mm -hmm. So these two guys for the prices they were I thought they're just so much better than the strikers I had there Yeah. but then I'm, I'm going to play two up front I've got four world class strikers I think yeah. but these two strikers are out of this world I think I mean if you look at all the attributes highlighted for an advanced forward he has at least 15 in every single one Yeah. there is a one that's below 15 <laughs> that's mental I don't rarely see that at all so. and he's only 20 as well yeah that's a world class Whoa. player Yeah. and then the other one I think it's the same scenario. Yeah. Advanced forward, the only one that's lower is a 14 on pass. I don't want him to pass to anybody. No, but <laughs> everywhere else is absolutely mustard. Yeah. And that is Luka Puda, uh, who is Serbian, and you picked him up from West Ham for just 64 million. Unbelievable, wasn't it? 
17 Premier League goals last year. Not bad at all. So, two great signings. Uh, then we've got a couple of recognisable names as well. So, you've got Jonathan Tarr that you've brought in as a centre-back option. Yep. Good with both feet. 6'5". Really good centre-back. Good signing, I think. Yep. And then, is this just a, like our, oh, my heart wanted it? <laughs> well, I actually seen it. He was still at Birmingham, wasn't he? And I, yeah. It was like 40-odd million and I thought, I've just got to get him in. Yeah. I mean, look at he's he's got two goals for you already. Yeah, from, and I'm playing him in a defensive midfield role. Yeah, as a ball so, winner. Yeah, so he's come in and doing the job for me already. Yeah, he's the Jude Bellingham that we do know. Yeah, well, I mean, he's nowhere near as good technically. No. as what we see as but Jude he's, Bellingham. He's still early at the moment, really. Yeah. So, uh, but mentals and physicals are are, are fairly close. I would yeah. say gets for whenever possible. That's, that's I mean, he's strength in the position. Like. I really needed strength in him, which was that yeah. defensive midfielder. So. That was a bargain, I think. Yeah, yeah. Uh, your tactic then, you're looking at this. Yeah. It was a 4 1 3 2 style, but. I mean, if you look at my back four, I've, I've strengthened the whole of the back four. Yep. So I'm pretty pleased with that. Jude Belling will go straight in as well. I mean, best 11 doesn't necessarily put put in no. what I would say is your two best centre backs, which is Tan Rudiger. But the but rest the thing of the thing is, one of them gets injured. I've got another good player coming in. Yeah. And I you're mean, only focusing on the Cups this yeah, year. Yeah, that's right, yeah. So. And the, the strike force I have, the two strikers already out of here were good. Yeah. And I've bought in another two. So I'm quite happy with this team. I think it's a hell of a team. All right. Good enough to win the DFP Pokal in one season? I'm hoping. I mean, they're good enough to win the league easily, I think. Yeah. So I've just got to hope I just have a little bit of luck this time with the Cups and just get through it because I, I can't afford to lose. Well, I can't afford not to win the Cup. Yeah, yeah. Well, you won the first round 8 0 away from home where Luca Puda scored. Not one hat trick, <laughs> but two. Yeah. Uh, but you did lose to Arsenal. Yeah. 6 3 at the Emirates. I'd like to say I changed my team, but I didn't. <laughs> no. Uh, and then in the league games, which were mattered 4 0, 2 1, 5 0 so far. Yeah. Uh, your Champions League group is quite funny because you've got Manchester City, who won Europa League last year. Yeah. Rangers and Fenerbahce. Let's have a look and see what I have brought in this season. So, to kick things off, I wanted to go big because I didn't have that much. I think I had like £80 million, which as a team that's just won the league is only going to really give you one good player. Yeah. And we're at the point now where world-class players are in the hundreds of millions. So I had to sell a few players, to be honest. Uh, and I brought in, well, I sold Solari for 56, Kovacic for 45, and I brought in Nianzu for £124 million from Real Madrid. I did target to beat the transfer record, did, which was you? set by me, Seth yeah. Fabregas, <laughs> when I tried to go for Matthias De Ligt. But then a player that I was trying to sell wanted a payoff of £15 million yeah. payoff, and I said no. So I went for Nianzu instead, who still is going to improve my centre-back position. I then picked up a backup option for Neymar on the left, because he is in his 30s now. So Justin Clivert comes in. Uh, he can fill that role quite well. And then Fabian, the Spanish centre-mid, for £58 million, because I sold Kovacic, uh, can play naturally in both positions. He's younger, just need him for a couple of seasons. That will do for me. So there we go. Tactics, I haven't changed it. And my best 11 is kind of the best 11 I would expect to see. Nianzu goes in alongside Watt, which I'm happy with, because Watt is the left-back, the left-sided centre-back, sorry. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty happy with this. Good I just side. need to make sure I have a bit of luck myself. In the guts. Let's hope they're not good enough to win the FA Cup. No. As I say, Manchester City won the FA Cup and UEFA Cup last season. They beat me in the Community Shield, which is the domestic version. But in the UEFA Super Cup, I beat them 6-3 at Sevilla's ground. So, big win good there. Win. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Sunderland 7-2, Liverpool 4-1. So, that's a fantastic result. Yeah, they changed yeah. their manager uh, over the summer and you didn't have a chance to join it it was a case of they had already had somebody in yeah. place to take over which was Kyle Jr he left Benfica who offered you a job interestingly enough so they've changed manager but I beat them 4-1 and 7-1 against Aston Villa and the Chelsea job just didn't come up for me did it really it no, didn't know showed a bit of interest but they, they just didn't they come kept up. their faith yeah uh, but the one move that did happen of course was Carlo Ancelotti going to the Real Madrid job then Cause a little bit of a manager merry-go-round, but you had already moved at that point, yeah. and no Premier League clubs had come up. So Carlo Ancelotti actually left AC Milan. He had only been there for a couple of seasons. The AC Milan manager is now Jurgen Klingsmann, who left Borussia Dortmund. Now, all I'm saying is that's probably give you a bit of an advantage. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Because they've been very good in yeah. the last couple of seasons. And now they have Thomas Lech, 
who came from Atalanta. Uh, and I don't think he's as good a manager as Jurgen Klingsmann. So, you might be in with a bit of a shout here of uh, having the best team in Germany and not having too many contenders. Werder Bremen's dropped off slightly in the last couple of seasons. They still got good players, but they're nowhere near as the force that they were when you were in the league and when I took over them. That's right, yeah. So. Glad, glad back's the team that I've got to beat. If I, oh, if yeah, I, they're your bogey team. If I beat them, I know I'll win the cup. Yeah, there you <laughs> go. Uh, so that's the only thing we have to do this season each is win a domestic cup. Let's see what happens. With the FA Cup not starting to the new year, it was Dad at first who had to face Hanover 96 in the DFB Pokal, and he overcame them with ease after scoring two early goals to beat them 2-1 in the second round which will now put him up against Cologne in the third round. Meanwhile, with the FA Cup looming soon, the Premier League was very tight with just three points between first and me in fifth place. But it was the third round tie against West Brom approaching that I was more focused on. And we breezed past them on the day, 3-1 at the Hawthorns to face Middlesbrough in the next round. Where the star man of the match was my Italian striker Adesi, who took home the match ball with a cracking hat-trick in a 6-1 win. But that's when things got trickier as my next opponent in the fifth round was Chelsea. Back to Dad though, who needed two extra time goals to defeat Cologne in the third round of the DFP Pokal to go through 4-3 winners. And it was Mines up next who are from the second division, which was truly men against boys as Bakoko scored within six minutes and went on to get himself four goals as Bayern Munich won 8-1, which led to a semi-final clash against Hamburg with previous winners Dortmund being eliminated. But back to the FA Cup and a worrying start for my Arsenal side as Chelsea took the lead after just three minutes. It was a good half hour later before we finally broke down their defences and Adesi found an equaliser. But after the initial struggle, it wasn't any time at all before Consina is putting in his own rebound to give us the lead. And Mbappe was around on the stroke of halftime to put us 3-1 up, and he also cemented our fifth round win with a second from the spot, which next puts us up in a tie against West Ham, which this time we cruised through with the same result in a much more dominant performance. However, the semi-final of the FA Cup puts us against Manchester United, the team who is currently above us as leaders of the Premier League. Let's get back to Dad's pursuit of the DFP Pokal though as Hamburg gave Dad a real test scoring early against his Bayern Munich team and they went in 1-1 at half time. Paul Wanner was on hand to give Dad the lead on the 83rd minute but Hamburg were real quick to respond with another equaliser. There were still two goals to be scored though as Valverde gave Munich the lead on the 87th minute and in injury time Pecorari confirmed Dad's side trip to the cup final. Pressure applied to me as Dad had also knocked out Manchester United out of the Champions League while Spurs eliminated me from the same quarter final. On the day of my semi final, though, Manchester United gifted us a penalty earlier on, which Adesi dispatched home. And just before half time, the United defence also made a crucial error for the same man to double our lead. They still managed to put on the pressure before half time and a goal from Leroy Sane. But we then passed ourselves just one game away from completing Glory Hunter with a third goal in the second half. And amazingly, in that final, we have to play Sheffield United. Dad in his cup final was facing my old team Werder Bremen and it stayed nil-nil until Yusuf Makoko scored in the 73rd minute. And that's when the floodgates then opened in the game as Werder Bremen broke through and bagged an equaliser right after. But the game in Berlin was won mainly by one man, the young Munich striker Yusuf Makoko, who scored two more goals with his hat-trick coming in stoppage time, as well as assisting a fourth and final goal for Dad to win the DFB Pokal finally. But it's my turn now to potentially finish this retro glory hunter challenge. And ready to shock the world was Sheffield United, who within just seven minutes at Wembley found themselves 1-0 up in the FA Cup final. It wasn't until a second half penalty when we managed to pull it back to 1-1, and Giorgio Odessi yet again came up this season with a clutch goal in an important match to make it 2-1. However, there was still time for late drama as Soloff got an equaliser for Sheffield United, and that took the game to extra time. And in the 107th minute, the final goal of the retro Rory Hunter series were scored as Eddie and Ketia banged in the win. Dad, Glory Hunter is finally complete. Yeah. We had a good extra time to do it against Sheffield United. I know. They, they, to they be give, fair, they, they are like eighth in the league. Yeah. They were quite good in the Premier League. They played the to give league. you a fight with old Brian Robson at, at the helm. As the manager, yeah. yeah. Uh, it was tough because I had big suspensions, big injuries as well. Bruno Fernandes was out. 
pretty much the whole season from February onwards. Uh, Trent missed the final. I had to claw it back to go 2-1 up. Yeah. They scored on the 89th. And Ketia actually come off the bench, scored on the 107th, and Mbappe got himself sent off. <laughs> so I played the last night, nine minutes with just 10 men without my captain, but we got the job done at Wembley. And Retro Glory Hunter is now complete. Just couldn't catch a good eye. For the rest of the season, though, a lot I won the League Cup, defeating Man City in the final there. But I didn't win the Premier no. League. Manchester United won that. Looking, you know, to finally come good. Yeah. That's the team that cost me then. It was, yeah. That's the reason why you're longer. not completing. Too long at United, I did. Yeah. Uh, but I was knocked out of the quarterfinal of the Champions League by Spurs. Get in. And I don't mind that whatsoever. But speaking of that Champions League, Dad, you won it this season. Yeah. Fin Fair I play? finished I finished on a high. Beat, yeah. I beat Man City on penalties. Finished you finished on a, on a treble. Yep. Yeah. In this by Munich side I finally won the cup you won the DFB Pokal beating <laughs> Werder Bremen probably the best team for you to beat in the final yeah definitely after uh, the history of this this whole series yeah but there Walked we the go the league again so come back done the job won the treble for them I was going to be going but obviously I don't need to now because you've won it well done um, but we looked at the manager's job at, at, in the um, Premier League and there was nothing there no. that was dodgy so, so if it did go to a final year you would have struggled yeah. to even find a job chances are probably I mean there, we were looking at it when we there was only two maybe three teams that could have made it difficult for you next season and that I had to get into yeah um, Man United you know, Tottenham and, and Chelsea really and possibly and Man City, City. but yeah. they've reached the Champions League final yeah. Tottenham were took me all the way in the league last year and Billy Davis has still got the Chelsea job yeah, so. so there we go yeah. Glory Hunter is now complete I hope you've really enjoyed uh, our journey and our uh, task in hand of managing to complete the Retro Glory Hunter let's add those final trophies to our glory hunter cabinets. Dad's time in England costed him in this challenge, but he finally managed to win the DFP Pokal at least, and was just two trophies off from completing glory hunter. Thankfully, with just one season left though, we lift the FA Cup and we complete our retro glory hunter cabinet. A fantastic achievement that began in Portugal, of course, at Sporting, which now seems so long ago. But 12 different trophies later, and the challenge is now complete. And the save game far will be going on my patreon and channel membership page for you to check out so once you have subscribed so you don't miss the next challenge follow this one because the next one on screen is ready for you to dive into